Kimsey, we're scrapping the plans for the oil dump. And from now on, we don't do anything environmentally unfriendly. I know it'll cost billions, but this is a debt we owe to a little girl and to a very special Marlin. Judgmental, aren't we? On the bright side, they hit you harder in Little Princess. Duckman, maybe going to the movies has lost some of its allure for you. I have to admit, even I was surprised when you ran up and urinated on the screen, screaming, swim in this, lickety. Hey, it's an interactive culture. Try and keep up. Besides, I have a right to be PO'd a plenty. You see a movie called Lickety Splits Oily Adventure, you expect a little... Well, let's just say my very special Marlin came up dry. What's gagging this Googleplex? Where's the sex and violence Bob Dole promised? Well, I'm one webbed waddler who's weary of walking away whipped. I'll get my money back or annoy everyone trying. Patrick Henry, right? Are you the manager? No, I beat him senseless with my bare hands, then dumped his cement-laden body into a nearby lake just so I could wear his name tag. You're an odd little man, but you got away with a witty retort. I'm here to demand a refund! Sorry, no refunds. Says right on the back of your ticket stub, there's still no proof that our nacho cheese topping causes genital herpes. I'm talking about your movies. If I wanted to pay good money for two hours of blather and no sex, I'd date. Sir, I don't make the movies. I just unlock the doors and make sure the ushers put sawdust in the vomit puddles. If you really want your money back, perhaps you should complain <laughs> to the president of the studio. Hey, that may be a ridiculously stupid idea, but there's no reason I have to know that. Pizza delivery? Hell no. I'm an anonymous moviegoer who's so angry at a movie I just saw, there's no telling what I'll do to the president of the studio after I sneak into his office. I mean, yes. Go on in. <laughs> like I want all the details. I'm a shark now, driven by one purpose, getting my money back. Undeterred by the distractions of a major Hollywood studio. Unwavering, unblinking in my... Ooh, Earl Hellman. And look, Lauren Tweez. Oh, no, could it be? Philip Michael Thomas! Gangway, Gramps, I got the fever. I can't believe I actually met the Black Ghostbuster. And what a lovely bunch of people this Hollywood crowd seems to be. I don't care what anybody says, they deserve all the awards they give themselves. Oh, right. <laughs> My refund for the swill we get force-fed by these no-talent panderers. Whoa, 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 you can't fire me. I'm Paradox Prexy Salmon's Kegel. Besides, if I were gonna lose my job, it'd say so here. Front page. Wasser shine rankles, Kegel ankles. Studio head rolls. Paradox drops pay Kegel idea. Do you ever listen to yourself? Actually, I have someone who does that for me, but he's out today. He's bar mitzvah or something. Kegel, you nearly broke this studio. And you know why? Because you don't love movies. They're not about deal-making. They're about magic. They're about glamour. And you have no idea what these words mean. It's 9.55. As of 10 o'clock, if you want to come back on this lot, take the tour. Hey, 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 Stan! Five minutes? That's barely enough time to come up with the storyline for the next Adam Sandler movie. How dare he talk to me like some kid from the mailroom? I haven't worked in the mailroom since January. I should give the keys to his little kingdom to a real incompetent. That'd show him. Heads up, people. Idea time. I'll give a huge production deal, creative control, final edit, ironclad to a complete idiot. He'll blow millions of washer signs money. It'll ruin the studio. I have the authority to do it till 10, which gives me two minutes to find the world's biggest moron. But where? 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 I'm Duckman, and I just saw a steaming load you dropped called Lickety Split. It should have been rated PU-13. I want my seven clams back. Not that they'll be the same seven clams, I know. They'll be different ones, and sure, my seven clams were really 675 and crackle cereal bonus bucks and a sweet tart I passed off as a quarter. But <laughs> there's a principle here, and if I knew what it was, you can be damn sure I'd be hearing about it. So if you don't do whatever it is I came in here to get you to do, I'll launch the most frivolous lawsuit you and your fancy 20 buck an hour lawyers have ever seen. Can you write? Your name, I mean? Oh, no, you don't. I make it a rule never to sign anything until my Ecuadorian business manager can look it over in his cell. 
Sign it or my foot soldiers will destroy you! Okie doke. Mr. Duckman, you are now Paradox's newest mogul. You have the power to determine trends and tastes for an entire nation, to expose your ideas to a world eager for any kind of guidance. In short, Mr. Duckman, you are a Hollywood god! <laughs> Dad, make us proud. Or at least try not to humiliate us. Yeah, that's what I meant. I want to videotape this moment. Now, which is play and which is re... Hey, you sick duck. Wipe this stuff off of me or it's an extra 50. <laughs> it uh, came with the camera. Until I send for you, pretend to listen to your Aunt Bernice, boys. And remember, thanks to these, you'll always be with me. Pictures of us? No, your savings bonds. I need them for tips in the bar car. Come on, Carney. I call the upper berth. I'll wear my rain hat. So long, boys. Bye, bye Dad. Bye, bye. Yeah, bye. Bye, bye, yes. bye, bye. I'm Paul Golden, senior VP production and third generation Hollywood hanger on. Though I didn't write, direct, edit, shoot, or perform in anything at all, I'm solely responsible for our 12 biggest movies last year. Hired the assistant who hired the reader who found the script, usual backstory. And might I add, though no one here has ever heard of you, your deal is the biggest any of us have ever seen, and therefore there's no one whose work we respect more. Here's your office. <laughs> This is an amazing office! Duckman, be careful. Hollywood's past is littered with people who got taken in by all the opulence and fawning, then were changed by it and forgot about the things that were really important in their lives. Corny, you old worrywart hog. I'll never sink so far into this world that I'll forget the things that are important to me. Like my children, Ajax, Charles, and Jumanji. Mambo. Whatever. The point is, my web celebra are firmly on a terracotta. This is one duck who isn't going Hollywood. To tell Steve and Jeffrey I'll swing by for a looky-loo, but I won't even discuss DreamWorks SKGD. I wouldn't take fourth billing on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> right there. When did they add him? Well, let's not miss the point, okay, Captain Geography? Buh buh Corn fed, D pig supreme. I have breakfast tomorrow with Oliver Stone. Make a reservation, but nothing spicy. Ollie's got a colon like a hamster. My aromatherapist needs Leno tickets. Make it happen, babe. Not too close to the stage, though. Jay tends to spit when he's on a roll. And cancel your plans tonight. There's a premiere shindig for the new Harrison Ford. I'm going? <laughs> no, you silly fool. I'm going. You'll be doing the work I won't have time for. I'm going? <laughs> That didn't even sound like me. Duckman, did you read those scripts I found? Oh, yeah, right. That's just why I got into movies, to read scripts. But these are smart, provocative screenplays. If you just read... Yawning! Come on, Corny. Scripts are words, and words are dead. If reading words was important, we'd still be teaching kids how to do it in school. Sizzle! That's what sells movies. Yep, which reminds me. Meg Ryan, please. Duckman. Thank you. Meg, hey there, who there? I gotta tell you, I'm a big, big fan. When a man loves a woman, change my life. I remember thinking, great idea. If I only date drunk chicks, I save the time and money of getting them drunk. You know? Meg? Mego? Yep. Hi. Thought I lost you there. Well, here's a skinny. I want you to star in my first picture. 340 million up front for you and a big back end, if you get my drift. No? Well, it's always been a dream of mine to see you in provocative lingerie, and I'm betting a lot of other men would pay to see it, too. Stunts are minimal, bending over to clip a toenail kind of thing, and I thought I'd call it Meg Ryan in her underpants. Huh? You like? Meg? Uma Thurman, please. Liv Tyler. Maya Angelou.
In what has to be the deal of the century, Hollywood's newest mega mogul, Doug Mann, is paying studio secretary Betty Furple $340 million to star in Betty Furple in her underpants, saying only that the unknown office temp was always my first choice. Normally, a price like that would scare the studio powers that be, but Stan Wasserschein and Paradox have three aces up their sleeves in Soapy, Soap Carbone, Billy Bruno, and Meinhard Braunbusser. With each one of them now shooting a Paradox action film overseas, the studio has three certain blockbusters whose combined box office should more than compensate for Duckman's shopping spree. Duckman spending all the studio's money, but those three stars are going to make it right back. I can't let them save the studio. I've got to stop them. But how? I've got it. I'll use Duckman to sabotage their movies. And I will regain my position on the mountaintop, finally pulled out of the hellish nightmare of squalor and misery I've been left with. Stevens, the bidet is out of Avion. Five minutes to air, Duckman. Are you sure you're ready for a televised interview? It's live, and almost every time you say anything out loud, it's ill-informed, insulting, or nonsensical. I mean, do you need that cigar lit? I've never felt more at home than I do in Hollywood, Corny. I'm listened to, respected, and people are throwing way less bottles at me. My fantasies are all coming true. Or well, will be once I make Melissa Etheridge my wife. <laughs> That's a lie! Take that back! Hi, Doug, man. I'm Julie, and we'll jump right in after the commercial. Got your Rooney news, babe. Nice griff. Care to stay after the show and sample it on my handheld mic? Three, two... Welcome back. Next up, Hollywood's newest player, Duckman. We're here in his office at Paradox Studios, and Duckman, it looks like you're adjusting quite nicely to life in the fast lane. You betcha. In fact, I just moved my family into a house in Bel Air that used to belong to Merv Griffin. Go away! Anyone can say they still live here! Well, duck man, spendthrift, visionary, or very lucky duck, the jury's still out. But one thing's certain, you're sure emptying the studio's bank account. How do you justify paying the largest star salary in history to a complete unknown? I'll tell you, cuppy cakes. This is an industry built on perception rather than fact, run by businessmen who only understand numbers and don't have a clue about what's good and what isn't. So the key is to be perceived as good by being associated with the biggest and best numbers. Meaning, if you have no talent, you can buy credibility. In essence, creating the illusion of quality by spending the most money. Wow, how'd you learn so much in only a day and a half on the job? I was looking for a strip joint and wandered into a Writers Guild meeting by mistake. Pissy little bunch, no wonder they're not allowed on the set. And speaking of sets, we have word from the sets of the new movie starring Paradox's three action megastars, and your ears must be burning. Well, anyway, apparently they don't like being replaced as the highest paid stars in the world, and they're saying you'll fail because you, quote, have stupid ideas for movies. What? The testosterone trio called me stupid? You ever talk to Carbone? Not exactly a rocket scientist. This duck maligns me, and worse, by paying a woman more than me, he's forced me to renegotiate. Despite my innate suspicion that $30 million is sufficient pay for one idea-free movie. And Bruno? <laughs> if he's such a big deal, what about the rumor I'm just now starting about he and that stripper he's married to? What's her stage name? Semi-naked? I think she pronounces it Simi. Whatever. The point is, I hear Mr. Action Star is Mr. No Action in the bedroom, if you get my drift. In other words, that popcorn comes without butter. What the f... Is he saying my bevel ain't level? My cat's paw is coleslaw? My upfront's a blunt runt? <laughs> This is just a movie set, and the plane is yours. Hey, I'm in a mood. And the other one, Meinhard, what a weenie. Take away 30 years of barbells and back oil, and all you got left's a limp rag. Except not as smart. The guy's one large muscle, and we're talking head to toe. Me, all muscle? 
This time it's personal. Not that the other times I said that weren't personal, too. They were personal, but this time it's just more personal compared to those other times which were also personal. Mr. Brombuster, you can't leave. Tant is for character actors. Bring me the Humvee. Not the Hyundai. The... Never mind. I will stick shift his... I mean, I am starting to hatch a plan to... I am trying to say I won't show economy in pulv... Okay, now I am without an effective action guy joke, and this is making me want to hurt Duckman even more! It's a glamorous, star-studded premiere for the opening of Planet Sycophant in Hollywood. We're high atop the abandoned, long-forgotten public library to give you the best view of the stars. And they're out tonight. Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley are here. Looks like they drove together this time. And here comes Johnny Depp, looking rakish with his walking stick. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's Kate Moss. There's Sharon Stone with the 25 lucky winners of MTV's Oh Boy, I'm Gonna Sleep with Sharon Stone contest. Ah, and there he is now, Hollywood's Man of the Hour. Duckman! Good career move, asking me to escort you tonight. Bottom line, at the end of the day, when the bird flies uh, up over the uh, hill or uh, something, I forget what I was going to say. Anyway, I just wish those three overhyped has-beens were here now to bow down to the new king. <laughs> Yippee ki -yay, Mother Ducker. Yike ah! ah! to Hasta la rosta, duck. Ah! I've become bellicose with each glimpse of your feculent visage. Destroy, but it doesn't mean we don't care. Don't know what that is, but I can't see for shit. There's a billboard up ahead. Hit the bricks. Stars my sewage filled butt. None of them are a match for a hunk of hunk of burning duck. <laughs> Go ahead, make, make our day. That's the best one. Works, doesn't You're telling me. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. <sighs> I'm grunting at you, pig. There's no need for revenge. This whole thing has been a plot to manipulate you all and in turn ruin the studio. A plot hatched by him. <laughs> Just ignore that crack about the handheld mic. All right, it's me. To complete my evil scheme, I posed as Julie Moran, which, by the way, I've been secretly doing for years at a club on La Brea. I knew if I got you three mad enough, you'd leave the sets, get arrested for killing Duckman, and cost Washerstein hundreds of millions of dollars. There was a flaw in your plan. We would pay Stan back. Anything for you, Stan. You believed in us when we were starving Broadway gypsies. You sure did. Till you came along, we were living in one room, sharing tights and toe shoes. Shh. Why hide? We were young. It was spring. I've got to know. How'd you figure it out? Was it the obscene amount of money for a production deal that gave a total incompetent the power to make movies? No, they do that all the time. The truth is, I knew something was wrong when you didn't touch that piece of Lush's butter pecan layer cake only offered at Planet Sycophant. Of course. Everyone knows Julie's cuckoo about that nuttily moist mouthful of sweet, savory goodness served hot with gobs of caramel and rich vanilla ice cream. Remember, Planet Sycophant, where the world revolves around us. Anywho. 
The real Julie's unharmed. I found her hanging upside down in a wardrobe closet, stripped naked. As it turns out, kidnapping the host of a syndicated entertainment news program is only a misdemeanor. But you're at a Hollywood opening without having your name on the guest list, and in this town, that's a jailable offense. Say, an indie deal run from prison has a certain novelty value? Make my assistant your one phone call. We'll talk. Duckman, your contract's no good. Go away. Well, <laughs> that's that. Uh, now that we've, uh, you know, battled to the death, maybe we can do the schmooze thing. Summer in Oxnard, hit some Clipper games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, might have gone a little overboard this time. We blew up our own restaurant. Not to worry. It was just millions of dollars spent on creating something with no intrinsic value for the sole purpose of making millions more. Hey, just like our movies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be upset. They have strict rules about spending time with anyone who can't do something for them. In fact, that's why we had to go with impersonations and caricatures, who are fictional and in no way meant to represent actual persons living or dead. So, that could be it for our careers in show business. And it humbles me, partner of mine. For in the end, who are we to even dare to aspire to such heights? An industry so bathed in greatness should be left to those whose talent is outshone only by their desire to enlighten. Wait, the world revolves around us. Gasp. Excuse my uncharacteristic near dementia level of excitement, but I seem to have solved the Fitzwalter case. I've proved that his wife is part of a sinister conspiracy involving the international arms trade, a renegade band of Cuban drug runners, and three members of the cast of Friends. Corny, what's a three-letter word meaning opposite of night? Oi. Hmm, two Ys? Mr. Duckman, the IRS called again, and in the interest of full disclosure, we've collected all your receipts for the past 15 years. We're not sure it's deductible. Should we send it anywhere? Oh, why, certainly. Being open and honest with government agencies that want to put me in prison for the rest of my life is one of my passions. Why don't you fax it to them? In person! Ah! Ah! Now, where was I? Two-letter word that's a common greeting. Prepare to die, you pus! Canker sore on the mouth of humanity? Hmm. Too many letters. Whoa! This is your son, Duckman. Please! It's depressing enough that we're related. He's deeply unhappy, and you know why. Okay, so I should have asked before selling his rabbits for testing, but damn it, mascara maker's gotta live too. Tell him. I'm unhappy because deconstructionism has lost much of its moral force as a technique in literary analysis. Also, because Dodd won't play in the father-son picnic games. Say! Well, as it happens, I've been lusting for the chance to bond with my son by passing him an orange with my neck. But Corny and I are in the middle of a very important case. Please leave. <laughs> I'll do anything. Please just go. Get out. Get out, please. <laughs> Male menopause. Good news, son. A small block of time just opened up, and I want you to know that aside from all the other things I'd rather do, there's nothing I'd rather do than spend that time with you. Look at that weaselly psychiatrist stung. He thinks he's so hot just because his son can bend his knees and breathe at the same time. I'll show him. 
Practicing for the picnic games, huh? Well, my boy Ajax is such a jack, he's already been indicted for gambling. I'm sure he's very talented. You saying Ajax is a klutz, a clod, a mud hugger, an elbow eater, a blinking, bumbling boob will make a fool out of himself, and more important, me, every time he tries to move a muscle, assuming he has one? Well, a hundred says me and my kid will clobber you and your kid in the games. Mr. Duckman. You calling me cheap? Two hundred. I have no desire to bet. That's it! Five hundred and a deed to my house. Well, not my house. It's my wife's house, only she's dead and she gave it to Bernice. But I pay rent on it. Or at least I did once or twice. Okay, once. Okay, the check bounced. Okay, forget the deed to the house. Make it five fifty. How did he do that? Damn shrinks in their mind games. Hey, Jax, son, do you have any athletic ability at all? Sometimes late at night, I can smell my intestines. Is that an event? Exhibition only this year. Damn. Excuse me, do I sit anywhere? This section is reserved for people with just one name. I'm Ajax. Coolio. Have a seat. Excuse me, Coolio, but I couldn't help noticing that you look a lot older than the other students. Are you really stupid? Actually, I'm a fabulously wealthy recording artist who sold over two million albums and had two number one singles. Oh, I'm really stupid. Didn't you go to high school? Valedictorian, but I don't have a diploma. Why not? Lost it. Moved a lot. So it's been a while since you were in high school. You know, I'm kind of an expert. It's my third year in this grade, so maybe I can give you some advice. Always remember, it's not raise your hand before going to the bathroom. It's raise your hand, walk to the area with the toilets, then go to the bathroom. Got it. When's recess? Yeah, Manny, go on fine. Look, I gotta ask you to cancel the concert tonight. I have homework. Okay, now how do I tell him? It's gotta be done delicately, with sensitivity. Son, how you drop out of the games is up to you. Crippling injury, communicable disease, whatever makes you happy. Just so you're home Sunday. Ajax! Hi. Hi! That's it! Damn, I'm good. Look out! That girl's gonna get hit! He saved her life! She could have been killed. I wonder if he's that fast in a gunny sack. Mr. Duckman, if you're here about placing your kids in an orphanage again, we can't help you. Your sister-in-law won't allow it. Oh, yes, my sister-in-law always has the boy's best interests in mind, especially when she's parading around in front of them stinking drunk with nothing on but the radio. But I digress. For today, I've come about another matter. You see, I want to adopt a child. Well, not really a child, a, a man. And to make your minimum wage job even easier, I know exactly which man I want to adopt. The mega-popular singing superstar, Coolio! Now, no, while his parents still being alive might present a few, you know, problemos, I'm not above a little snip-snip to the old break lines if you dig my lingo. <laughs> wow, they really do make it difficult to adopt these days. Well, now what am I supposed to do? Those picnic games are three days away, and I'm stuck with a son who's got the motor skills of a mummy. And to make things worse, there's that damn bet. Everywhere I go, the specter of that diabolical Dr. Stein follows me, laughing, laughing. Ha ha. My plan is working perfectly, for you are my puppet, and I the puppet master. Ha ha. No! Stop! Get out of my head, Stein! Nobody calls me a puppet except my actual puppet master, capiche? Oh, my. You can't sit out here and swat at imaginary thought balloons all day. Here, if you want to gain custody of a full-grown adult, just get him to sign this waiver. Hey, cheer up, mister. Like my grandma used to say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. She sounds like she was a wonderful woman. I almost miss her terribly. Not at all. She lives just a few blocks away. Oh, why must those we love die? Why must they leave us so alone? Wait, 
You're Ajax's father, aren't you? You're not alone. But I have so much love to share. Too much for one son. Ajax says he's got two brothers. One, three. You can't reduce this to numbers. There's no room for your famous Vulcan logic in this. This is about something you feel here. Yeah, what is this, cashmere? So much love to give. If loving fatherhood is a crime, that I'm guilty with special circumstances. Ajax is a really sweet kid. You must be a great father. If only I could find someone. Someone who needs a father like me in his life. Who needs love and companionship. But who? Who? Well, there are orphans. You? Why, that's crazy. You already have parents. Still, it might work. I mean, you're right. It would be no disrespect to them to make this humble heart of mine sing once more. To give my life new meaning by allowing me to spread just a little more love in this world. To sign this bothersome yet necessary legal form that will indemnify me from all lawsuits in the event of death or injury while in my care. Or I could use it to write my farewell note. Uh, no, 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 no. Please, please. I'll sign. Oh, bless you. Bless you. You don't know how happy... And there. How happy this... That initial here. How my life has been... Press hard. You're making three copies. Made complete. Here you go, Mr. Duckman. Please, call me Dada. <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? <gasps> it's... Before you swallow your tongue, Aunt Bernice, we'll say it for you. It's the guy from my class who's not stupid. Otherwise known as Coolio. And for reasons known only to me and the good Lord above, he's agreed to become my new son. Coolio will be living here, my be-all and end-all, my yeah, alpha and please, omega, you. a man oh, whose streetwise please. scowl hides a heart with more gold than there is in his yeah, posse's teeth. You. <laughs> Whatever you need, whether it's fast money, loose chicks, or theological discourse, you come straight to your dear old ducky dad. He's so cute. Strap on the feedback, my boy. You'll need your strength when Ajax and I start training tomorrow morning. Um... Dad, why will baby brother Coolio need his strength when you and I are training? Coolio will train with you, pushing you on to greater and greater heights by, strictly coincidentally, practicing the very same games that you'll be practicing. I think my lung just collapsed. If it's all right, I'll be lying prostrate in my room. Oh, right, your room. Uh, Coolio is taking it over. But don't worry, I moved your stuff to the biggest room of them all, God's bedroom. Better get out there, son. I think I saw a couple of chipmunks doing it inside your pillowcase. Thanks, Dom. If you'd like, you could stay in my bedroom. Eh, uh, uh, sonny boy, that way lies madness. We got us some bonding to do, and this time, I won't even use any epoxy. Hey, Dom, I can't wait for the games tomorrow. I've been practicing the sack race all morning. Watch. Ow. Ow. Ajax, I've got some bad Ow. news. Well, bad Ow. for you, good for me. Ajax, Ow. after pretending to give this a great deal of thought, Ow. I've decided to choose Coolio Ow. for my partner in the games. <laughs> now, now, before you say anything, let me just assure you. My original plan was to think of some incredible lie to let you down easy, but I decided that would be insulting to you and not worthy of our relationship, and the only thing I could come up with involved the space shuttle and an escape monkey. So, aren't you glad I told you the truth? No. Just consider it another one of life's painful lessons, son. Whoever said it doesn't matter if you win or lose must have been riding in the back of the loser bus covered in human filth. Yeah. Well, maybe we can do the Christmas thing together. Unless, of course, I'm too hungover. But I wanted to be your partner. Up and at him, Coolio! I've whipped up a high-energy breakfast of popovers for you, each pastry individually injected with my own special steroid, uh, protein supplement. Okay, joke's over. Up, two, three! Speak to me, Coolio! Speak! You're too young to die! Duckman, that's obviously just a crude dummy of Coolio. I was wondering why he had a note pinned to his head. Dear Duckman, I have enjoyed staying with you and being your adopted son, but the time has come to go. Love, Coo. Hey, it's smudged. We'll never know who wrote this. I'll go out on a limb and guess Coolio. He's run away from home. But he can't! Today's the big day! Luckily, my razor-sharp detective instincts tell me exactly where to look. Coolio! Coolio! 
I better not find out you're behind Coolio's disappearance, Stein. I bet a low life like you'd do anything to win. Yeah, not that I'm actually making a second bet there. Mr. Duckman, how can I make this clear? I never made a bet. I never intended to accept any money from you. Because you think I'm a Welsher? That's it, Stein. I'm doubling our bet. <sighs> yeah, it's like he's inside my head. Get out. Get out. Okay, to find Coolio, we're gonna have to use this doodad I just mail-ordered. It's your basic spectrumographic fluxoscope. It hones into Coolio's electromagnetic frequency and leads us straight to him. Observe. Perhaps we should use more conventional methods to find Coolio. You're right. Look, the fluxoscope burns Stein's front lawn in the shape of Ernest Hemingway having sex with a squid. Assuming Ernest Hemingway stands for Coo and squid stands for Leo, I think we've got our first lead. Duckman, your efforts are admirable. Assuming admirable stands for ludicrous, but perhaps it would be easier to just go to Coolio's mansion. It's only five minutes away. <laughs> just go to his mansion? Oh, yeah, sure. We'll just go to his mansion. <laughs> we'll walk over to where he lives because it's easier to do that than a bunch of things that'll just waste our time. <laughs> Here we go. We're walking to his mansion. Oh, this is much easier. Here we are, ringing his doorbell. Oh, great plan. I guess he'll just answer. Well, I was expecting you, Doug, man. A little sooner, though, given the detective skills you bragged about. Traffic, you know. Look, Coolio, son, I'm assuming you just came back here to pick up some magical sneakers or something, so why don't I just go wait for you in the car and you just... Duckman, I can't compete in the father-son games with you today. What? Why not? Because it's not right. I left because you have a real son who wants to be with you. And because I wasn't feeling safe anymore around Bernice. But you agreed to be my son! What about the long-term commitment we've made to each other? Damn it, I bought you a speaking spell! I said I'd be your son because I wanted to help you. You seem desperate for love. Well, at least desperate. Duckman, sporting events aren't about winning. They're about the love of competition. The bond created between people trying their hardest. The brotherhood of all who follow in one of civilization's oldest and noblest traditions. Uh -huh. What do you want, 10, 20? Come on, work with me, kid. Duckman, if you win the games with me, it's no victory at all. Man, that's whack. Sorry? Whack. You know, weak. Anyway, do the right thing, Duckman. Enter the games with Ajax. Coolio is right, Duckman. This was Ajax's chance to connect with you, and he doesn't get many chances. Maybe you're right. Maybe I do owe it to the kid. He doesn't ask for much, just directions to the kitchen every morning. He is a good boy. But you're not! You're out of my will, Coolio! And you're grounded for two weeks! Believe it or not, he's getting better. You're doing well. I think we have a chance to win today. Hello, son. Hello. I'm proud of your efforts, son. Tomorrow we are sure to win the pie-eating contest. Oh, how well, we will consume the mighty boysenberry. Ajax, I've got something serious to talk about. Me love squirrel. Ajax. Squirrely. Ajax. Squirrely. Ajax, listen. For the past few days, a, a man has been staying in our house. I, I don't know if you noticed him. Huh. I thought they flew. Anywho, what I'm trying to say is I, I failed you once again. I don't know what's wrong with me. This is like the, I don't know, third time in your life now that I've failed you. Why do I keep doing this? Maybe it's because once, long ago... Somebody's father let down his son, and that boy's never gotten over it. I never knew that happened to you. Well, it might have been a Sanford and son. The point is, Ajax, I want to enter the games with you. You and me together, for better or worse. What do you say, son? Are you in? I'm in, Dodd. That's my boy. Now, quick, we only have a few minutes before the games start. Better stretch out a little. Here, like this. Okay, we're stretched.
Father-son picnic games are officially over, and we can all be thankful for that. Am I right? Yeah. I now present this year's champions, Ben and Lionel Stein. I am ecstatic. Ditto. <laughs> the longer Stein's unconscious, the longer until I have to pay him. Let's now welcome our most improved competitor, Ajax. I don't understand. Dodd and I finished last in every game. You shot 14 people during the archery event. I'd say that's an improvement over last year's 26, wouldn't you? Yeah. And now to celebrate the Olympian spirit displayed today, and because plugging a song is the only reason pop idols appear on a show like this, let's welcome to the stage the one, the only, Cujo! Name, but they all the same, so Coolio Logo won't put you up on game. We got homies who sell straps, homies who sell out, homies who sell the bomb, asking us to fat dubs, giving the neighborhood love. Pimps play a slug that's holds 40 thieves, gangsters and thugs. Two hood rats were strapping over who knows what. The loud mouth one loped up in front of the ice cream truck and broke all of the nails while all the BGs bail. The little homie beginning not to count. This time he might get stuck. Attempted 187 and he a minor with pride. So the DA want him tried as an adult. The big homie just had a son, no joking. I think his baby mama is smoking because she's always broke. OG's joining the nation and it's all good. BGs is retaliating because the enemies done crossed out the hood. They have mama smoking whole county checks, but dealers who serve nickel pieces for sex. Be your bone or ride. Right, right. These are the ghetto highlights. Young just going to school to be a doctor. Late night sounds of gunshots and helicopters. Be your bone or ride. Right, right. These are the ghetto highlights. To all the motherfuckers who think they should be no stank, rolling no D's and in the pen for robbing banks. Be your bone or ride. These are the ghetto highlights. This is just a little something from a number that's still gonna be a leader if he don't get no bigger. Be your bone or ride. These are the ghetto highlights. That's whack.
lunch. Where do you see what I brought today, Carney? It's got everything in it I love, and they sell it right there at the gas station. Artificial cheese wipe, something that looks like meat, and two fuzzy green crackers. Do I love squeal? What kind of slop you got to force down? Just a little something I threw together as I was leaving the house this morning. Salmon in a pastry shell, sun-dried tomato and scallop salad on baby greens, and crepe Suzette. Yeah, but I bet yours doesn't come with a Surgeon General's warning. Would anyone care for a glass of freshly made lemonade? <laughs> I told you two dust mites. Juice pitcher on the left side of the fridge, specimen pitcher on the right. Mr. Duckman, that was all natural lemonade. Made exclusively from lemons that died of natural causes. We waited until these lemons were in the advanced stages of decomposition before using them. All right, cameo's over. You know, maybe this would taste better. On the rocks! Oh, yes. Ice is nice. But steam is keen. <laughs> Please, Doc! We got a complaint from the sniper's nest next door. Something about killing your pink and blue secretaries. Officer, please, kill Fluffy and Uranus? Why, I'm shocked, shocked that you'd think I'd harm a hair on their little chinny-chin-chins. <laughs> Oops. No! 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 I can't be going to prison. Where's the justice? This is America, damn it. A country where you can murder your parents, slice and dice your ex-wife, desex your husband, and still get a drawn-out six-month trial at the taxpayer's expense. Complete with a rush to video highlight state before the jury's even reached a verdict. And yet that kangaroo court didn't take ten minutes to give me ten years. This can't be happening. It can't. It can't. It... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never can resist that. Uh, here, here already? <laughs> look, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm such a mess, I, I can't go out there like this. Uh, pardon me while I slip into something more comfortable, uh, say, uh, Argentina. <laughs> Listen, punk, name's Wanda, a.k.a. God. Play by my rules and you just might live. Get cute and I'll introduce you to Bruno. Uh, Bruno? I know a Bruno. Uh, yay tall, a little fey. Works miracles with hair tinted a curling iron. <laughs> This is Bruno. Uh, look, no offense, but if I wanted to get smacked around by some tattooed sex change waiting to happen, I could have stayed home. What kind of prison is this anyway? <laughs> oh boy, hold the phone. Talk about your bureaucratic bonus. Those red tape worms accidentally sent me to a women's prison. Cut the crap, Ola, sister. It won't wash here. Duckman, huh? Strange name for a broad. No shinola, Sherlock. Open your eyes. Just take one look and you'll see I'm a... Mm -hmm. I'm a... Mm -hmm. I'm a... Mm -hmm. Amazed at how this place will reform and rehabilitate me. And wait till my fellow inmates find out I'm a hot oil masseuse and semi-professional bikini waxer. I want to play some naked volleyball? I'd rather do nude weightlifting. Naked volleyball. Nude weightlifting. Naked volleyball. Nude weightlifting. Volleyball. Weightlifting. Stop it! And that's just a little taste of what's in store for you here. The system really does work. A job like yours in a place like this must keep you so busy. If you ever need any help at all doing bed checks, body searches, or watching those endless security monitor videotapes... Listen, stool pigeon, I'm getting tired of that mouth. Time for Bruno to shut it up again. Wanda! 
You're not going to hurt the new arrivals. Hurting them is my job. Oh, Warden. <laughs> You're looking dominant today. Good Lord! You're the Warden? Can this henpen get any better? Silence! Forgive my manners. Please, come. <laughs> How does one stay so supple, so feminine? That's amazing what years of self-abuse and atrophy can do if you just put a little effort into it. No matter! You must learn that we have rules here. In this facility, bad behavior will be met with strict discipline. While good behavior will also be met with strict discipline. Have I made myself clear? Perfectly, Bert Warden. Although I am the very definition of a <laughs> hardened criminal. I promise to make you proud. Trust me, my pet. You already have. <laughs> <laughs> Wait outside. Wanda will escort you to your cell. She's perfect. Perfect? Look at her. Lithe, coquettish, seductive. And I mean that in a totally non-lesbian manner. She'll make a fine addition to our little club. Hi there, ho there. Love you. How are you doing? So great to be here at Galcatraz. I'm shacking you with one of our old timers. She'll show you the ropes. Not to worry. I'm no stranger to the old bind and boink. I trust you use velvet here. I get such a rash when hemp gets wet. Watch it. Wanda can be a real loud mouth battle axe shrew. It's okay. I've got the home version. Tough customer, eh? Name's Betty. Welcome to cell block double D. The first night's always the worst. Listen, if you're scared... Nah, I'll be fine. I'll be glad to hold you. Why, oh, why, oh, why am I in this snake pit? It ain't fair, I tell you. You'll feel better after a shower. Shower? You mean you? Me? Us? We all shower together. That way we can help each other and soap those hard-to-reach places. Shall we? <sighs> <laughs> you always faint when you hear the word shower? <laughs> Don't worry, you get used to it. We have 30 group showers a day. That's a great way to keep clean and build morale in a totally non-lesbian sort of way. This can's a powder keg. Everywhere you look, there's a mud fight or a pillow fight or nude wrestling. Yeah. I'm scared straight. Ooh. All right, Hellcats, time for another shower. Not you, Daisy. You have visitors. But, but, but... Or would you like to meet <gasps> Phil? Hi, family. Great to see you. Live in hell. Don't try to get me out. Bye. <laughs> Incoming! <laughs> What's going on? Carpet party. Carpet party! In the big house, you get tired of having cold stone under your feet. So, once in a while, someone has a big area rug smuggled in. We dance in the rug. And for one night, it's like... It's like... We're free! There's a place you got to go. The swing and a swing soiree, I know. The wildest party in the world. Even though it's only girls, it'll get you higher quicker than any bad old drug. So lose the beat. To your feet From the top to bottom It can't be beat From your head 
down to your toes From my hair to shoes, knee to nose Where well, the people who love jamming Find it's in the bag So get the girls and cram it Right there on the shag We'll have a carpet party Dancing there the faster I love her It's a good thing, it's a master. Doesn't have what it takes, huh? Have her there tomorrow night. Where do you think you're going? The showers? Change your plans, princess. This is cruel and unusual punishment. Put this on. You're going out to a little get-together where you'll be doing men, how you say, favors? Yeah, you said it right. Favors. No, Sugar Walls. Favors. Please, don't make me dance. Has it come to this? Capering in front of degenerates, humiliated, reduced to a pitiable creature, sacrificing dignity and self-respect, and for what? What? Oh, is that a Finsky? You put you down, down, thrust your pelvis, huh, thrust your pelvis, huh, thrust your pelvis, huh, thrust your pelvis, huh, thrust your pelvis, huh. Thrust your pelvis, huh. Where do you want your steam room? Second level, behind the pasta bar. <laughs> the Duckman! A conjugal visit? Is it Scooter, that dreamy console? Or that Ginchy ambassador, Chip? Ah, corn-fed pig. Ask for Chip, get chitlins. Okay, girls, take a breather, oil up, and I'll be back for our two o'clock body sandwich. <laughs> If you ever get out, Hempel's department store has two new trundle beds with our names on them. Sorry to get down to business, but you're in danger here. Danger? What kind of danger? It's suspicious if we're quiet. The only way to see you alone was a conjugal visit. We have to keep it rocking so no one comes a-knocking. I've been working to get you out. Get me out? Over my dead body stocking. In here, I'm the Grand Dam. Double Dutch Diva. Glenn, close to perfection. My investigation turned up a lot of scams in this prison. Prostitution, extortion, counterfeit Simpsons merchandise. And the money trail leads right to the warden. This place is dirty, Duck Man. And it's gonna make you dirty, too. Hey, can I help it if I haven't gotten into that damn shower yet? Besides, the warden cares about me. Don't you see that any popularity you have now is because they can profit off you? When the inevitable fall happens, you'll be as forgotten as Jesse Jackson after a Democratic presidential victory. Guards! Guards! One hug before I go? You don't know nothing! I'm Duckman, dammit! Duckman! It's never gonna end! Cause there's no one here better than me! Duckman, meet Susie. Morning, Duckman. <laughs> Look at that little sweet tart. That fake cheeriness, those obvious hair extensions, those playfully mischievous breasts. Oh, why are my hips so large? Well, she may think that she's missed all that, but I'm here to tell you, she is not. What the? But the warden only chucks me in that sensual yet non-lesbian manner. You'll feel better after a shower. Don't say that word! I'm sorry, Duckman. I know what you're going through. I was once exactly like you. 
Three kids, dangerously slanting house, a restraining order from Anna Packman? What I meant was, I was once the warden's favorite. Welcome to the former Flavor of the Month Club. Silly Betty. You probably think before I came to prison, I was rich. No. Famous. Not really. Educated at the best schools. Never occurred to me. My point is, I don't have much in life. I'm just another dime a dozen gynecology school flunky. Now, for the first time, I am somebody. I'm getting praise, respect. So what if it's because I'm a boy toy for slavering, disgusting men? They'll drag me away by my press on nails before I give up this gig. Tonight, I'll reclaim my throne. It's time to put on the dog and scoot that pooch back to the pound. you made it this seems like so much fun well well apparently halloween came early this year love those fishnet stockings oh excuse me those are your veins i'm sorry fascinating jewelry me i stay away from the home shopping stuff but it seems to work on you kind of highlights your roots i don't by the way still working on that speech impediment all the men tell me you can't say no <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny, Duck Man. <laughs> Thanks for making me laugh. I'm so nervous, this being my big debut and all. Ah! Debut! I guess you're my opening act or something. I really wish the warden would give me some advance notice on these things. Okay, just hold your bit under five minutes and don't mention Vietnam. I do a little POW thing during my tap dance routine. Sort of a tribute. Gentlemen, it's time to present the person you have all come to see. Please welcome Miss Susie. But I, I'm prettier than she ever was. Where are you going with that stuff? It's mine! I earned it! So I can't get the A-clubs anymore! So what? That crowd at the flea market loved me! Wait! You're not taking my three-speed foot soaker? And my nubs be gone electric shaver? No! 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 You can't take my remote-activated shoe tree! <laughs> my, my. Just when you thought she couldn't get more pathetic. You! This is all your fault! Believe me, it was my pleasure. Now get ready to mix your pleasure with pain. Maybe my pleasure is pain. Then I'm gonna pain your pleasure like it's, uh... uh I mean, I'm gonna pleasure your pain to you who... Uh, give me a sec, which I'll get a handle on this. Fight! 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 Wait, come back here. She sucker punched me. Look, I can still dance. Look at me. Look at me. Yo. Oh, intense pain in my lower back, buttocks and hips, especially along my sciatic nerve. Wait a second. I had lower back pain too ever since that last mud fight. Me too. Hey, all this gratuitous mud fighting has given us sciatica. Sciatica, 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 sciatica. Attention ladies, this prison is hereby being shut down. You are all free. For those of you with sciatica, chiropractors are here to treat you. You two are under arrest for price gouging on vending machine sodas. Oh, and we're pretty sure that dance ring stuff was illegal too. Blessed corny, how did you know what was going on? When I came for our little, er, visit, I planted a wire on you. Really? I thought you were just copying a feel. Before that, thanks to the wire, we overheard everything. And I mean everything. Oh. Uh, 
That Swiss bank account of undeclared agency profits, that's uh, in both our names. Go straight, go straight. Goodbye, Duck Man. Buzz off, Skank. I probably deserve that. You, I'm going to miss most of all. I'll never forget you, Duck Man. Nor are you, uh, yeah. Old pal. <laughs> yeah, always wanted my own writing craft. Mr. Duckman! Mr. Duckman! We're reconstituted again and all is forgiven! <laughs> yes, sirree! This'll come in real handy. Duckman, being free, you no longer have to keep wearing that dress. You know, you're absolutely right. Aside from your new fashion preference, I wonder what else you've learned as a result of your incarceration in a woman's prison. Corn fed, old friend. I've learned, as Henry Amadeus Thoreau said, that walls do not a prison make. That exploitation of women is wrong and hurtful, but that dancing for men is fun and profitable. That detective work is boring and passe, that the right undergarments can make you feel so alive, and that with the slightest lifestyle adjustment, you too can know the wild abandon I feel every time I look in the mirror. Let's say we go talk about it over some tiramisu and cappuccinos. My treat. Let's go to the local college and find an intern for the agency, you said. You'll really get something out of giving back to the community, you said. Well, so far, the only thing I've gotten today is a sore butt. <laughs> you know, Corny, you pulled some real boners in your day. And now it's my turn. Greetings, sir. I've come to inquire about your intriguing offer of internship. Is this some sort of fraternity hazing stunt? <laughs> I just love your voice. You're like the white Barry White, aren't you? But no, rest assured that ever since I was a young lad being strolled about town in Nanny's pram, I found that there is no greater profession than that of a gumshoe. Um, you realize we can't pay you, of course, and that putting our agency on your resume could actually cost you jobs, and that several people who have used our bathroom contracted three different strains of... Please, it matters not. To intern for your agency, I would gladly walk across the hot coals of hell in a pair of open-toed shoes. Then I guess our next step would be setting up an interview with the president of our company. And I take it he's the delightful scamp hiding underneath the table? Good news, Corn. This exquisite exchange student has agreed to become our intern. She's from Bali. I think you mean Bali. Bali? Forget it! Duckman, I'd like you to meet... Elliot, humbly applying for the position of intern slash manservant. Yeah, I don't know, Shlomo. You're not exactly what I had in mind. I.e. young, female, non-repulsive. Duckman, I think you should make your decision now. The students are protesting your presence on campus. <laughs> Do okay. You did great, kid. Nobody's ever taken a tomato from me before. I took a bullet for you once, and a knife, and a gin bottle, 
and a three-ton tractor trailer. Quit wallowing in the past, Corn. Elliot, welcome to Team Duckman. And now for our first order of business. Let's get the hell out of here! Ah, uh, to attend a public function with Duckman and leave using the door. Good morrow, Mr. C. Morning, Elliot. Um, I'm afraid you're sitting at my desk. My, a tad territorial, aren't we? Actually, since I've already set up shop here, you know, picture cubes, carbon paper, that sort of thing, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind being a flower drum song and working over there for a bit. Um, Thanks, you're a dear. Now, tell me, what time does that nice Mr. Duckman come in? Usually as soon as bail is posted. Now then, since today's your first day, I was thinking we should go over the detective manual. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Chapter 1. Um, Elliot? What are Duckman's dreams? Last I heard, a Pocono's hot tub weekend with Loretta Swit. Now then, Chapter 1. Elliot? Will Duckman ever remarry? He probably couldn't pass the blood test. Now then. Forgive me if I'm misreading you, Elliot, but you seem somewhat obsessed with... Duckman! What to do? What to do? Yesterday, I used you as a living dartboard. The day before, I tossed you in the trash compactor. Perhaps I would make one teensy-weensy bite-sized suggestion. Elliot, you're a man-child after my own heart. <laughs> they think I've tortured them before. When have they experienced the horrors of my digestive system? Enjoy the ride, kids! Since today is my first day under your rather aromatic wing, I thought I'd show my appreciation by tossing together a little smorgasbord. Woohoo! Bon appetit. Look, duck man, you promised to watch your cholesterol. Oh, I also brought in a few periodicals to spruce up your waiting area. I hope none of you are offended by the risque. Women's bear daily. Better hose and garters, 17 inches. It's a regular pornocopia. Woohoo! Check it out, Gorn. Pop ups. Blush. Well, I guess Elliot and I should carry on with our detective training. Well, actually, I think I get more out of studying under the master instead, don't you? Duck man, what do you say we knock off early and head to this go go place I know where we can have a serious, sober discussion of the intricacies of private investigation? <laughs> Lap dances on me. Last one in the car mops up the vomit. Actually, a sparkling apple cider would kind of hit the spot. Cornfed, aren't you forgetting something? It says in your appointment book that you're volunteering at some sort of geriatric hospital this morning. Hmm, you're right. I best hurry over. Well, Elliot, it was certainly nice having you here today. What did you say? It was nice having me here? Nice? What are you trying to say, that I'm cute? Some sideshow geek to dance for your amusement? Is that what you want, little pig man? A little shimmy? A little shake? Does that make you happy? Does that make you feel like a man? No, I just meant it was nice having you here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear right. Waxy buildup. <laughs> Anywho, bye-bye now, come again. This little piggy thinks he's so smart, thinks he's so funny, eh? Well, let's just see who's laughing now, shall we? <laughs> let's just see who's laughing now. <laughs> what are you people still doing here? Don't you have a little psychic friends commercial to watch or something? The night was the greatest night of my life. And you, my friend, made it all possible. What do we do again? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Well, let's see. What didn't we do? Strip clubs, table dances, uh, triple X double features, beer bongs, flaming shots, tattoos. Tattoos? <sighs> <laughs> yes, the infection that's setting in lends a nice graphic relief quality, don't you think? <laughs> you know, Duckman, I've been thinking that since we've had so much fun tonight and would hate to see said fun end, well, I have a proposition to make. 
proposition. Sorry, this duck don't spelunk in the bunk, if you know what I mean. Though, maybe after another drink. <laughs> Ooh. We don't want to wake that beast, Bert. There isn't any fire, it's just Dad. I can't decide which is worse. You mean we hose Grandma down for nothing? How many times do I have to tell you no more work release convicts to do our yard? Duckman, I didn't know you had a daughter. You must be mistaken. I'm Duckman's sister-in-law. You're Bernice? <laughs> when Duckman described you as kvetching, I, I'm sure he meant fetching. Mwah. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't worry, I've got plenty of hugs and kisses for you, too. Papa has told me so much about you. Mwah. Mwah. Oh, they're darling. Just like the Olsen twins, only much less eerie. But forgive my manners. Thy name is Elliot, a college student hyphen aspiring detective under the tutelage of your dear sweet father. In fact, we have an announcement to make. <laughs> should you tell him or should I? Well, since I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, perhaps you should. In order to focus my studies better, I was hoping to move into your humble abode and become an honorary member of the delightful Duckman family. Sure, I understand. You're happy the way you are. You remind me of my family, right before they were killed by that experimental gasoline space heater back in 87. Go ahead, toss me out into the street. I'm sure a nice religious cult will take me in, just so long as I shave my head and put on some really ugly sandals. I feel just awful. Of course you can stay with us, Mr. Elliot. That's Uncle Elliot. Come on, boys, let's fix up the guest room. We got a guest room? We do when you sleep in the car. Ha! From now on, a new era in decadence. As much fun as we had this evening, I promise 10, no, 11 times more. All the rich food your bloated belly can handle, all the bodacious babes your lazy eyes can ogle, all the pleasure one body can stand. I... I don't think anybody's ever been as nice to me, ever understood me as much as you do. Thanks, Elliot. Aw, oh, come here, you big, sour-smelling galoot. In the words of that sassy chanteuse, Ms. Dionne Warwick, that's what friends are... for. Mm -hmm. Duckman, what are you doing here this early? Don't you claim to be legally blind until at least noon? No time to sleep, Pork Barrel. There's just too much fun to be had. Why waste two to three minutes waiting for morning coffee to kick in when I can just inject it directly into the old bloodstream? I thought you'd given up caffeine since it was making you break out in those long alliterative rants about the injustices of modern-day society that we were all pretty much getting sick of. God, you'd think he was your mama or something. <laughs> You know, it's funny. When I went to the hospital yesterday, I found I wasn't supposed to volunteer until next week. That's never happened to me before. Gee, that is funny. You should go on Star Search. Duckman, you keep up with your, uh, research. I'll throw some slugs in the candy machine down the hall and come back with every gooey, glucose, sugary snack known to man. Breakfast is, after all, the most important meal of the day. Elliot, you the man! Duckman, does Elliot strike you as a little odd? Oh, come some slack, Cornfitter. You know these college kids. Always looking for someone to believe in, some sort of role model. Ah, damn ringworms. I guess you're right. Duckman detect... Yes, this is Cornfed. But that's impossible, Doctor. It says in my appointment book I don't donate my kidney until three... Oh, that's horrible. Please tell the family I'll go have these on the headstone. I'm sorry, Warden, but according to my appointment book, I don't sing to the inmates until next Thursday. How many have been taken hostage? Something very odd is going on here. Cuckoo! 
<laughs> yeah. Must be going through the change of life or something. <laughs> your candy is fly off. Ugh, can't. <sighs> no more room. Ah, but you're forgetting. That's right! Fluffy and Uranus! Can't wait to see the look on their faces. And neither can I. Duckman's agency. Uh, Cornfed? One moment, Sister Aloysius. I'll see if he's in. This is Cornfed Pig. Well, that's not right. Uh, this uh, is a Cornfed Pig. Uh, that's close. <coughs> this is Cornfed Pig. The orphans are waiting for me to read to them. Who am I, their parents? Yeah, I got a million of them. Listen, sister, I've been meaning to tell you. It's a good thing you're married to God, because no man would ever want you. Ha! What? I've offended you? Then go have a stigmata. Ha! Hello? Hello? Check? And mate. I don't even know how to play chess, but that sounds so, you know, goldfingery. Extra, extra! Pigs hate my words hurt none! Orphanage to close! Orphans to be sold to science! Fluffy Uranus, where's Duckman? Please don't eat us! Please don't eat us! Please don't eat us! My world has been turned upside down. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm changing appointments I don't remember changing. Hurling insults I don't remember hurling. How can this... Look, Piggy, or Oink Oink, or whatever the hell you call yourself, if you're gonna have some kind of Manson-esque Ooga Booga breakdown, do it on your own time. We're trying to work here. I may be losing my mind, but I'm sane enough to know that you're trouble. Get away from him, Duckman. He waits on you hand and foot, gives you everything you want. Oh, and that makes me trouble. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Duh, I'm cornfed. I'm a detective. Duh, look at me, everybody. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you gotta admit, the kid's got you down. I'll have you know that Duckman and Elliot go together like peanut butter and jelly. Spaghetti and meatballs. Air show and disaster. You take that back right now! Anybody got a hanky? Preferably a Puffs Plus. I chafe so easily. Well, looky looky loo, what do we have here? Cornfed! How could you? Duckman, it's obviously a forgery. First, I would never wrest control of your agency away from you. Second, I spell my name with a C. I don't want to hear your excuses! I don't care if you screwed up your charity work. I don't care if you make the kid weep like a woman. I don't even care if you make prank phone calls to nuns, which, by the way, is my domain. But when you tried taking away my business, something I worked so hard to form as a tax write-off those many years ago, that's where I draw the line. Pack your trough, corny. You're through. I'll have a real friend show you to the door. Get him out of here, Elliot. He makes me sick. No sooner said than done, Your Eminence. Uh, yep. Duckman, please. Yep. Nope. Go. You. I'm still your friend. I need your help. Please. And thus my fall from grace was complete. For reasons I still can't explain. I've broken appointments and promises, hurt a lot of people, and in turn betrayed an entire city. It's not me, I swear. It's... it's... <laughs> Elliot. All this started as soon as he joined the agency. He could have forged that letter, changed my appointments, captured my dulcet yet virile tones when that nun called. But why? Why, why, why would Elliot be behind this? Sadly, not even the urbane insights of Marmaduke can bring a smile to this face. Gasp. Woo! What a fantabulous celebration of our new partnership. <laughs> More chocolate covered pork jerky, Duckman? I wonder where that waitress is with those grain alcohol enemas I ordered. Elliot, I'm never one to poop on a party unless, of course, it's one of those parties. But I haven't slept since I met you. Maybe we should, you know, go home. Come on, Duckman. One more lap dance. 
It's not gonna kill you. yourself a new hat. Duckman, come back. I'm afraid your little experiment is over, Elliot. Or should I say Dr. Remus Elliot? You, I, me, her. How did you find out? By being the only person in the world who will actually read a college newspaper. You're no student, nor were you ever interested in becoming a detective. You were merely using Duckman as a pawn in your sick research experiment to see if you could kill a man with pleasure. Okay, Mannix, you nailed me. The second I saw him on intern day, I knew Duckman would be the perfect specimen for this project. His total lack of restraint, self-control, willpower, class. Let's face it, the guy's a friggin' mess. <laughs> but why discredit me? Try to ruin my life. Oh, I could say you represent the yin to Duckman's yang. That your stable influence is the only thing that's kept him from getting to this state years ago. But the real reason I tried destroying you, corn fed, was that I just never cared for you. I don't know. There was like a wall or something between us. We never really connected. You've done enough harm for one lifetime, Doctor. The next paper you'll be writing will be your resignation letter to the college. Dream on, Pinky. When I finish my experiment, I'll get my thesis published, thus accomplishing my greatest achievement ever. Tenure! Come on, Duckman. We're going home. Oh, no, he's not. The Duckman belongs to me now. Duckman, come here. Here, Ducky. Duck, duck, ducky, ducky. <laughs> Duckman, it's me, Cornfed. You know, Cornpone, Cornhusker, Cornicles. <laughs> Cornfed doesn't know how to have a good time, Duckman. You said so yourself. <laughs> Duckman, no. You've got to be strong. Do it for your family. Charles, Mambo, Ajax, Burn. Gecko. <laughs> Looks like it's time to break out the big guns, so to speak. I'm sorry, did I forget to mention that our sultry, seductive sex pot was also a sex tuplet? Come to me, Duckman. You know you want it. You're better than that, Duckman. He's trying to kill you. Please, you're my friend. I need you. I love you. <laughs> Damn you, damn you, damn you. I win, I win, but more importantly, you lose, you lose. Say, E Man, how's about we blow this testicle stand and head to another place I know? Tell Gala Go Go, them bad two broads sure know how to shimmy. What? You're back? You're alive? You're... you're... indestructible! Guess all I needed was a little catnap slash coma back there to flip over the circuit breakers, and now I'm ready for more, more, more! No! 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 <laughs> Good going, Duckman. Pretending you wanted more of his self-destructive, decadent lifestyle was the only way to get Elliot out of your life forever. Congratulations on a brilliant plan. Plan? Let's go home, Doug, man. Uh, Corny, what happened back there? Uh, it, uh, I, I tried. Uh, thanks, Corny. That's what friends are for, Doug, man. That's what friends are for.
them ringworms. And in conclusion, since we live in an insane world, maybe it's time we give insane solutions a chance. I'm Duckman, and that's One Duck's View. Uh, yes, well, uh, please remember that the views of Duckman in no way reflect the views of, uh, anyone. Eh? Eh? Pretty good, huh? I think I got my message across. That you're a broccoli brain mulch monkey? Yeah, I think that, Red. I've never actually heard someone encourage kids to drop out of school. Test scores drop every year. Let's face it, American kids are stupid. Get them off the fast track and on the fast food track while we genetically engineer a master race of better kids. I'm tempted to die just so I can get a head start on spinning in my grave. Okay, go ahead. Eat my kishkas out. When public reaction crystallizes, my words will be remembered as... Ahem. Public reaction is already starting to crystallize around your car. <laughs> Looks like a vexed populi. Well, no problem. When we're ready, Ajax will distract them with one of his famous fake epileptic seizures. Doc, man, those aren't fake. <laughs> Semantics. Anyway, Ajax, if I know the average Joe, while you're doing the loco motion, they'll steal your wallet and shoes, letting us escape. <laughs> what do you say, son? I'll go find a strobe light. Doc, man, don't you think it's odd that the station would write to you out of the clear blue sky and ask you to do a commentary? Not at all. I'm a well-known local businessman, a leader in my community, and I write over 600 crank letters a year to the local paper. Yes, my favorites were English-only laws, let's make them international, and Cub Scouts, the enemy within. Yeah, but the classic was African-American, black or Negro, they'll never make another Sammy. Ajax, hey, why are you crying? Because my lacrimal ducts are full. But we can talk about that later. I just saw something sod in the lobby. This homeless guy, he had lost his beloved dog Sparkle. And someone had told him Sparkle was here. But it wasn't true. He was so disappointed. <laughs> of course he was. With these bums, today's pet is tomorrow's brisket. Hey, it ain't my fault this gutter geezer lacks a shack. Oh, I'm homeless. Help me. <laughs> these dumpster-dwelling ragbags better learn there's no such thing as a free lunch. No one just scares a bum free room and board for life. Unless the bum marries my sister and I'm fresh out of those. What about your other sister? Oh, right. Dorothy's house landed on her. Look, there he is. Oh, no! It can't be! I know him! Uh, I mean, it's a <laughs> total stranger. <laughs> Definitely not someone corny and I knew in high school. From high school? Let me see. Gone now! Wasn't him. Never mind. And even if it was, I wouldn't remember him. Or what happened. Talk about a bummer. Okay, Legionnaire's disease. Get it? <laughs> Carney, you are Chico and the man. <laughs> anyway, Dinkler's on the warpath. He's been looking for me. Lucky for me, he didn't look in Hasim's cut-rate candy and pong parlor where I was blowing all my grit money on candy cigarettes. <laughs> Perrier, they sell water. It's crazy. I can't believe all these stupid products they're trying. Light beer, low-tar cigarettes personal computers, while my letters telling Coca-Cola to change its formula go unanswered. What about you? Anything happening? Dinkler? He was here? Twice. The second time, the veins in his neck were all bulgy. What's his problem? What did I do? Well, you sutured Mr. Crump's lips, smeared liquid heat in the pep squad's muffs, painted blue oyster cult rules on Coach Marcus's car, and thanks to you, Miss Finch went to live with the nuns for a while. Huh. <laughs> Yesterday? But what did I do today? Oh, Brad's looking for you, too. You know, he really likes you. What are you saying? That he's Junior Minty? A pile driver? He flies the red eye? He likes the center square to block? No, he looks up to you, that's all. Brad sees you as a role model. Though for what role, I don't know. Huh. Seems the kid's got more snap in his cap than I realized. I should take him under my high karate-soaked wing and let him drink deeply of the stagnant waters of my 16-year-old pool of experience. And speaking of pools, it's time for the girls' swim team practice. <laughs> I found my thrill. Boop, jibu, boop, jibu. I'm Blueberry Hill. I'll become his partner the day the U.S. gives back the Panama Canal. <laughs> Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. 
Oh, sorry, Duck Man. Color me Snoopy, but what were you doing? Listening to a tape I recorded of a romantic night with a special lady, now living with the nuns. Enjoying magnetic memories of a night when desire's aroma mingled, intoxicated, and left us spent but grateful, entwined on wings of light. Gee, I thought you were masturbating. <coughs> oh, sorry. They're delivering the new drums for the marching band. Hey, be careful! Duckman is trying to masturbate up here, and he can't concentrate with all this ruckus. Uh, Brad, I really wasn't... I suppose now he'll probably have to start all over again. Happy? Brad, it's not necessary. Really. Oh. Never mind, he's done. I took care of it, DM. Thanks, but I wasn't masturbating, I swear. I was just oiling my mitt, and I mean that non-euphemistically. I believe something as beautiful as masturbation should wait till you find someone you love enough to marry. And then, when she never lets you touch her again, that's when sex for one becomes so magical. And I think that's worth waiting for. Wow. Will I ever find someone who loves me enough to never let me touch her again? Oh, you will. And when you find her, you'll be together forever. Like Sally and Bert, Cher and Greg, Rod and Britt, or Claudine and Spider. For always. Mr. Tinkler! I... we... I... Shut up, Gilliland. Duckman, is that the school's quadraphonic tape deck? Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, commemorated the, uh, full armor levels against the Targum Mixing specs. I know what you are listening to. That air vent leads right to my office. It was disgusting smut! Anyway... Today, I'm being photographed for the Santa Rosita Star Sunday Supplement. Now, I'm not pointing any fingers, but... If you disrupt this, I will not only expel you, it'll go in your permanent record. You'll be blackballed! Ah! It's a figure of speech, Gilliland. Oh. Duckman, you're worthless. You're flushing your life away. One more prank, and your future is history! Someone get this drum equipment out of the hall. I'm gonna get that Dinkler. I'll fix his wagon once and for all. Ah! I remember now. I, I got back a Dinkler in a major way. But Brad took the rap because he liked me and then he got expelled for it and disappeared. That must have begun his downhill spiral that made him end up a broken and homeless man. I've got to confess. Clear his name. Wait, then I'd get in trouble. <laughs> Okay, now I've got it. I'll help him get back on his feet. Help him turn things around. I've got to help him. Hey, I told you I'm not done. Brad Gilliland. I still can't get over it. My God, Corny. How do we let Americans sink into this kind of poverty and misery? Many socioeconomic factors contribute. Uh, hello? Not real reasons. I want a gross oversimplification I can slap on my car bumper so I can delude myself into thinking that I'm doing something. Oh, okay. A flag-burning amendment will fix everything. Thank you. Are you sure Brad's here? I checked with the TV station. He lives in a refrigerator box. Something about it having a big W. A big W. You know, we were all surprised at how selfless you're being with Brad. Look, I just have a... You know, hunch that he got a raw deal back in high school, taking the heat for that infamous Dinkler incident. I'll take him home, feed him, clean him up, make it up to him for what I think someone else did to him. <laughs> and I'll start investigating. Of course. Investive, eh? The Dinkler incident. If we can find out who really did it, we can clear Brad's record. Huh? Uh, right. Yeah. This filthy pit makes you appreciate how lucky we are to have homes. You remember that, boys? Westinghouse. This is it. I don't know how he'll react to me. I, I mean, uh, to us. Being from his past, you know. This may be traumatic. Oh my god! Duckman! And Cornfed! Wow! What a reunion! Hey, come on, who remembers the Santa Rosita High Fight song? Come on, who remembers it? I sure don't. But if I wrote it today, it'd go like this. Santa Rosita, march on high. Honor and love and milk and pie. Cornfed and Duckman are back, so nothing I lack except Cracker Jacks. So don't be shy, dancing wise, cause we're Santa Rosita High, guys! Hi, guys! What a day! First Sparkle comes back, now this. Oh, here's Sparkle. Good well, dog, Sparkle, Sparkle, what a yes, big doggy you dog. are. You know Sparkle's not a dog, right? <laughs> he likes you.
It's true. Sewer water tastes different in every city. Like in Phoenix, it's a mocha, lemony kind of taste. In Portland, it's more peanutty with a, with a sewage quality. Bernice, this soup is delicious. What did you say it was called? Uh, soy sauce. Sounds fancy, but it's good eating. Any left? Gee, in movies, homeless guys turn out to be piano prodigies or great surgeons. Well, their homespun brand of wisdom brings troubled families together. But Brad's none of those. I didn't think it was possible to talk for an hour about sewage. And what's in the package? He never lets it out of his sight. Can we go to Portland? Hey, Corny, I understand if you didn't find anything with your little uh, investigation. Well, you gave it your best shot, so why don't you take a few weeks off, maybe try uh, Cabo or... Uh... Actually, Duckman, I found something that can tell us once and for all who did it. <laughs> I mean, great. I snuck into Dinkler's old office and found this behind the credenza. A faded Polaroid, no image at all. But the date on the back matches the date of the incident. Dinkler was having his picture taken that day, and somehow one of the photographer's cameras went off, photographing the perpetrator. Must have missed one. Uh, I said, uh, cram, unjust, math, piston. Uh-huh. Are you having a stroke? I haven't decided yet. So what now? Silver iode methanil will partially restore the image. I can then use my computer to redefine the missing pixels. It could take a while. Well, no rush. Take your time. A job half done has never begun. <laughs> See ya. Huh? Okay, gotta get Brad out of my house and on the door. But to impress him down at social services, I need the ugly Bradling to click into swan mode. And before Corny peeps that pick. Come on, Brad! It's makeover time! Like a million bucks. You'll have an apartment, a job, and staggering consumer debt by the end of the day. Duck man, except for Sparkle, you're the best friend I ever had. Other people may say they have a heart as big as all outdoors, but yours is actually that big. I'm amazed it even fits in your chest without it being freakishly large. Enough already, don't you see? I'm the reason you're back on my own two feet. Now, let's go, buddy. We've got a future to build. With you by my side, nothing can go wrong. Yeah! You're under arrest for the theft of the credit card of Jose e. Bear, hairdresser to the stars. He did it! Moses came to Egypt land, said, let my people go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Fred. man! Then up spoke the Pharaoh man. Red. No, there, Moses, I said no. Red. Thank you. All right, now look. When the social services joker gets here, let me do all the talking. If words were cherry stems, my tongue would be in Cheryl and Fenn's mouth. <laughs> Name's Tyler Fitzgerald, but you can call me the social services joker. I am so sorry, Mr. Fendevin Seven Seven. It's an enzyme thing, hard to control. I'm Duckman, and this is Brad Gilliland. Charmed. I need your help. Well, actually, my homeless friend needs it. I, I just want to write an old rug, and I'm under a lot of pressure, and there's this picture on my friend's computer that... I'm sorry, are we sharing? Mr. Duckman, there is no reason to be nervous. I will do everything in my power to see that your friend is set on the resituation track ASAP. Okie dokie. Now, 
I have spoken to Mr. Hebert, the hairdresser to the stars, and he will drop the charges if you will arrange for his expertise, skilled staff, and international reputation to be favorably mentioned on television. Done. Good. Now, let's get out of here and go see your homeless friend. We're here. I mean, he's here. I mean, this is him. Brad. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This man in the Armani suit is homeless? What kind of a scam are you running here? Sc -c -c scam Look, you just can't waltz in with an obvious e-bear feather cut and expect mother government to flop out her boob and yell, drink up. Please, he really is homeless. Hell, he's been living in a vacant lot. Really? Well, that would be trespassing. Oh, no, no, it's not private property. It's under the interstate. So, federal land equals felony trespassing. You're gonna come down on a guy who lives in a refrigerator box? Unauthorized storage and disposal on federal land equals big felony per Waste Disposal Act of 1991. I think we've taken up enough of... Please! He was there 15 years before that law was passed. Excellent. Over 15 years of walking across that lot to access his refrigerator box, Mr. Gilliland created an easement. What does that mean? No, it really doesn't matter. Property taxes and federal land use maintenance fees. Oodles of them. But he's broke! Mr. Gilliland, you have green card? Green card? Of course not! Duckman, stop! Es muy malo para usted, señor? Su casa nueva es la casa gigante. Están palabras de un idiota! Idiota! Usted es el idiota! Usted es el doble idiota! No estoy, si no es, estoy. Si es. <laughs> Please, both of you! I didn't want trouble. I just wanted a chance. My whole life I've been told, you can't, you can't go to school anymore. You can't stay in town anymore. You can't get a job without a diploma. It was bad enough when I thought they were talking about someone named Hugh, but it turns out they meant me. Everywhere my parents lived, someone would eventually find out about the Dinkler incident and we'd have to move. So I ran away from home to give them a chance to live without the trouble. All I had to hold on to was my project, my invention my million dollar idea see sometimes I feel like somebody just shook the whole country like a box they just picked up and shook hard and the pieces that rattled out of place are the homeless and working on my project made me feel grounded and safe and all these years I've just wanted a chance to show it to someone who could help me I'm not out to scam anyone so if you think I deserve help give it to me but I'd rather go back to living on the street than to take charity and that's all I wanted to say I hope it was no trouble Gilliland, wasn't your leisure suit a blueprint? Yeah, why? Cause it's green now. <laughs> well, sure, it's a mood suit. And according to your suit, you're telling the truth. Let's get you out of here. Thanks for springing us, Tyler. See you next Thursday? Must see TV party? Wouldn't miss it. Oh, and Brad, good news. I called my cousin, who's filthy rich in the rag trade, and he loves the mood suit, digs the 70s retro feel, and he'll give you a million dollars for it and a job. Wow, thanks. You deserve it. I only wish all homeless people were as nice as you. And then everyone would want to be homeless. So I guess this is goodbye, Duckman. Thanks for everything. This makes me sad, you know. I know, I can see it in your suit. Brad, before you go, I, I have to tell you something, and it's not easy. You see, well... Oh. Duckman. 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 Duckman, wake up. Dinkler? Dinkler did this? That's right. Dinkler. <laughs> I'm dizzy. Look, Dinkler, there's something you ought to know, and I'm glad Brad and Corny will hear this, too. It was me. I was the one who played the prank on you that day. The one you expelled Brad for. I snuck in here through the vent and rigged the whole office. It was me. Brad, that's why I took you in. To try to make it up to you. I was trying to make the whole thing go away before Corny figured out who was in the picture. Uh, yeah. Duckman, I have a confession to make. The reason I wanted to investigate. The reason I set the picture enhancement on super slow. I stalled. I wanted to make sure the truth was never discovered, because I was involved, too. I saw you come in, and after you left, I broke in through the vent. After taking some coquettish snapshots of myself, I went over the office, undoing every booby trap, slacking the fish lines, recaging the mongoose, wetting the coals. 
I knew Dinkler would expel you. All he needed was an excuse. I wanted to protect your future. I guess I always knew I'd be a part of it. But my office was booby-trapped. I have a confession to make. Huh? Huh? I saw Duckman go in, and then I saw Cornfed go in and undo what Duckman did. I knew why you did what you did, Corny, but I couldn't let Dinkler get away with the things he said to Duckman. He called him worthless. Nobody's worthless. So I painstakingly redid everything you undid. The bear trap, the pillowcase full of snapping turtles, the crazy glue, everything. Oh, and I also took some playful Polaroids of myself. It's official. I'm lost. What it means is that Gilliland really did do it. But I wanted you all to suffer. So I manipulated you, pulling your strings and making you dance. Pretty marionettes, <laughs> dance! <laughs> it was my television station that invited you both and arranged for you to bump into each other. Wait, you own that station? Can you do something about the way they cut up the Odd Couple reruns? Silence! And now, after all these years, my revenge! I want you to stay in these chairs for one hour after I leave. Don't remove the tape, or I'll add another hour. Do you understand? Okay. okay. And remember, you're on your honor. Swell, and we're all taped up. It's cellophane tape. It peels right off. Oh. Well, peel it off. Nuh-uh, you heard Dinkler. I'm not peeling it off. Corny? And risk having to sit here another hour? Nuh-uh. Pretty marionettes! <laughs> Every living creature on Earth needs to mate, even this little fellow. Not much to look at, is he? But even he is driven to seek sexual contact. But this sad specimen has neither the prowess nor beauty to attract a mate. So he must go where females gather to perform his desperate mating ritual. He tries even harder to attract her. Then, the moment of truth. Uh-oh! Looks like our over-eager friend is destined for failure. After failure. After failure. Till the sad little bottom feeder, unable to reproduce, is extinct. And that's what happened to the Gramet Grub ten million years ago. He just couldn't keep up with nature's rich parade! All right, children, class dismissed. Please stop learning now. Mambo, that film got me thinking. Charles, it's another one of those factory irregular films the district picks up cheap because the facts are wrong. Oh, yeah. I knew the capital of France wasn't France Town. Uh, no, I mean the whole time I watched the film, I was thinking about Dad. I've noticed it's been a long time since he, you know... Bob for squab, got his Brosnan pierced, took a mulligan at the 19th hole. Yeah, plus he can't get laid. <laughs> Let's face it, when it comes to women, Dad's no Larry King. 
but he used to be able to find someone, like a woman getting even with a boyfriend, or a nymphomaniac with low standards. Or that blind, obsessed Seinfeld groupie who thought he was Jason Alexander in a duck suit. But that was two years ago. I guess I didn't realize how long it'd been. That's probably why lately he's been so... Mm, what's the word for it? Cranky. You want me to squat and pinch out a red friggin' carpet? Get in! How was Can we stop all the chatter? You know, a lot of fathers wouldn't take time out from work to drive you two to your stupid soccer practice. But, Dad, soccer season ended three months ago. And we've never played soccer. Don't you give me your spot, Alec. Back talk. <laughs> Poor Dad. He's wound tighter than Phil Graham's sphincter. I want to help, but there's no way. Maybe there is a way. What? You can hear our thoughts? Yes. I seldom use my psychic gifts, though, because of one mind I beheld, filled with grisly, revolting evil. Wow, Willard Scott, I'm a big fan. <laughs> anyway, I have an idea how we can help your dad, but it violates every principle decent people hold dear. Damn, stupid oxygen! We'll, uh, keep open minds. An aphrodisiac? You want us to pervert our love of chemistry and whip up a love potion for Dad to use on unsuspecting women? I've never heard such a depraved, twisted, reprehensible idea. You've never seen the 700 Club. I know it's an extreme measure, but it's the only way to give Duckman a chance to meet someone. If we combine my knowledge of human nature with your chemistry expertise, we can make a tiny smidge, a drop of sex appeal. Just enough so that for one evening, women won't run away when he approaches. He could even find someone who appreciates him like your mom did. So, really, we'd just be leveling the playing field, right? Well, that seems fair. Okay, we'll do it. Oh. I must say I'm surprised at how readily you boys bastardized your code of ethics in order to justify a morally dubious decision. That was very grown up of you. So, let's start. As for Duckman, MTV's running a House of Style marathon, so he'll be, ahem, busy for hours. Don't worry, I'm taping it. Come on, musketeers. Hey, Jax, how'd you get here? Glorioski, I have no idea. Still, I would do anything for Dodd, even without a biscuit after each trick. But, uh, you know, he doesn't need to know that part. So what? An aphrodisiac. Yeah. I don't know. I had my hair like that back in the 70s. Too much hassle from the man. No, Dad. It's a love potion. You splash it on like cologne, and any woman who smells it will be attracted to you. You're yanking me. And it works? Then why am I here with you instead of knee-deep in Jamie Lee Curtis? If this stuff makes me irresistible... No, Doug, man. Not irresistible. There's just enough to intrigue one woman. The rest is up to you. Given your proven record of mind-bogglingly destructive excess, we felt that giving you any more than that would be like giving Michael Jackson a drum of peanut oil and some Cub Scouts. Allegedly. So, this is all there is? No more? It must have been difficult to make. Nice try, Dad. We're not telling you what's in it, and we won't make more. This is it, so use it wisely. You're so right, of course. Thank you, beautiful children. Dear friend, for your caring devotion, your 
Ah, oh, come on, what are we waiting for? Group hug right now! Come here! Dad, did you hear the door? Dad? <gasps> He's gone! You don't think he'd find some way to circumvent our wishes and turn our well-intentioned deed into a hedonistic fiasco? We shouldn't let him out of our sight for one sec. Next up on the House of Style Marathon, the swimsuit special. Wow. Good old House of Style swimsuit special. They'll be hip mode -tized. That gives me a half hour to figure out how to whip up enough of this jungle juice to get my nail hammered for life. Fortunately, with Stein and his brood out of town, his private lab and library are mine, oh, mine. Per tea. But no time to stop and smell the rosewood. I gotta put the Bunsen's on afterburners. Excellent. I've used my newfound expertise in biochemistry to synthesize the aphrodisiac. Oh, Duckman, look what you can achieve if you're motivated. If you would just put this much energy into improving your mind. There's a lot of guys smarter than me, but I get all the ginch I want and then some. Good point. And now, I begin a sordid, well-lubed flesh fest that won't end till I've toasted every marshmallow in town. Zowie! I'll have to play this one close to the Vestal. I'll enjoy more cupcakes if I start with tiny bites. Just a wee nibble at a time until my posse drops its guard, and then, whoa, Nelly! And Nelly's roommate. Now, if I don't change my usual routine, no one will be the wiser. Bernice, I know why you're upset. You misplaced a bug or stick in your head, but I'm sure a proctologist could help you find them. Well, gotta go! Got a big date! A big date? You? <laughs> Ajax, honey, I, I don't blame you. You're not smart enough to come up with a plan this stupid. And Charles and Mambo, while I expect more from you, you can't be blamed for the poor example set by your so-called adult supervision. Bernice, it's only fair that I take some of the blame. Wrong! You get all the blame. You turn my house into an episode of weird science. Yeah! And as for you... <laughs> If what they tell me is true, they only gave you a tiny little bit. <coughs> so how'd you hook every woman in the Southland and still smell like an explosion at the old spice plant? And why is Benjamin Franklin taking my stove apart? The jig is up. Run, wastebasket, run! Bernice, let's cut to the chase. I freely admit I made more of the formula. I just wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't come clean and surrender the rest of it to you. Here you go. This is all of it. The whole thingy. I'm tapped out now. No more. Hmm. I have no choice but to trust you. <laughs> That's right. Trust me. Overestimate my character. I'll keep the formula hidden, lay low till they forget all about it. And then it's back to better living through chemistry. I'll know when the time is right. I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> the time is right! Duckman. Duckman, you ready to go to work? Uh, what do you mean, work? Tuesday, the Saperstein Stakeout. All oh, right, the Saperstein Stakeout. Last one in the car has to deal with the Greek. Running into the 
Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Papandreou. Son of a biscuit! Shove it up your Macedonia, Mr. Papandreou, you Greek. What's his problem this time? I don't know. Who gives a couscous? Stop the presses! You see what I see? Holy exclamation of surprise, Duck Man. It's Courtney Thorne Smith. Courtney who, huh? From Melrose Place. She was so sexy in summer school, so smart and sassy on day by day. Plus, she's got a pair of huskies that go to the Yukon and back. Woofa! Ha <laughs> ha! What a quail. I gotta talk to her. Damn, no liquid loving. Boy, in the one time I really need it. After all, the only way I ever get to broil a snapper like that is if she comes up to me and says, Excuse me, I couldn't help noticing you across the street. <laughs> no more formula, eh? Ha! I smell a rat! A big, sit commie rat! Hi, I'm... Yeah, no need to tell me who you are. Uh, Miss Jessica? Parker? Lewis? Mm -hmm. Or may I simply call you Jody? <laughs> My really close friends call me Courtney. Well, Courtney, I'm a Duckman. Duckman. I hope I'm not being too forward. Trust me, it's your best angle. Thank you. I never do this, but I noticed you out here and I felt like I had to talk to you. Wait a sec, you noticed me? How can that be? I'm a private detective on a stakeout. I I'm supposed to blend in, disappear, keep my profile low. Oh, oh, please, don't be upset. It, it was low, very, very low, just really low. Yeah, right. No, really, other than that, you were Mr. Low Profile Honest. Well, I am a professional. So, Duckman, make a fool out of me, eh? I'll turn that house upside down until I find your hidden stash of formula. And who a duck man, my twitty. <laughs> and that is why in Togo, biscuits are called duckmen. But here I'm yakking about me. What I want to hear about is you. Me? Well, my hometown was founded in sex, sex, fondle, lick, lick, sex, breath, sex, lick, sex, sex, restraints, oils, sex, velour, sex, sex. But all kids get picked on, you know? Yeah, sure, that, uh, thing you said. I think your friend is waving at you. Friend? Nope, nope, I'm here alone. Duck man. He's not a friend of yours? Nope, never met the gentleman. I need you to cover for me. I have to go to the bathroom. He sure seems like a friend of yours. If we were friends, would I shriek at him in a piercing, deranged voice? Go away! Go away! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Just go! Um... Let me ask you something. Would you like to have dinner? Dinner? I'd love to. Wait, didn't you just have dinner? Me? No. I haven't eaten yet. Uh, Miss Thorne Smith, you left your purse when you had dinner. Go away! Go away! Leave me alone! Fun, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so, this is your room, huh? It's interesting. Yeah. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry the place is so uh, sloppy. I, I, I hope you're not offended by all the adult magazines I uh, research. Um... Duck man, don't worry. I don't see anything wrong with a man having a healthy interest in magazines like Asian pregnant amputees shaving each other monthly. It's, a, it's, it's good to have a hobby. I have other interests, too. Yeah, I'll just bet you do. Name one hobby that has nothing to do with sex. Uh, ah, are you sure there are some? No, oh, no, wait, I do. Ah, you're gonna think this is stupid. Try me. Well, okay, I, I'm nuts about black exploitation films. No way, you're kidding! I love black exploitation films. Really? Oh yeah, all the classics. Die, you black mother. Scream, Blackenstein, scream. And the biggest, baddest black detective of them all. Jim Slate, Big Black Dick!
Who's the bad black detective man who gets things done any way he can? Jim Slate? Big black dick. He's a clean loving mother who'll sacrifice for a brother. Jim Slate? Big black dick. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> That was the best sex I have ever had. I don't know how you managed to be so needy and selfish at the same time. Wow, I am only just getting feeling back in my fingers and toes. Told you that anesthetic would wear off. Hey, uh, I don't know why, but I, I think my family was acting weird this morning. You gotta understand, they're not as sophisticated as I am. Plus, I don't often get celebrity have a job. No, they were fine. Though your son Ajax has quite a firm grip. Ajax, let go of Courtney's hand. Okay, Dot. Can I call you Ma? Will he be all right? Four steel plates. He's a trooper. Courtney, uh, I have to wonder, you know, what a successful, intelligent bit of honey like you sees in a schmoorama like me. You know how smart women make foolish choices? Well, I'm very smart. I hope that doesn't offend you. Nah, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that, I wouldn't have had to steal your diamond earrings. Thanks to you, I've learned the difference between the right kind of love and the wrong kind of love. The kind I've been chasing for the last few days. Hell, for most of my life. But that's over now. So, wanna have lunch today? Sure! I will take you to Gary's Deli for the actual Courtney Thorne Smith sandwich. Ham and cream cheese on white bread. No tongue? Har har. Tell me, what's the perfect Duckman sandwich? Well, it involves you and Daphne Zuniga, but we'll talk about that as we get closer to my birthday. <laughs> Guys, I have to tell you something! What? What happened? Oh, what a coincidence. That's where... Nice try, you drip dripping Drake! You lied to us! And Courtney, this isn't some blind Seinfeld sicko, but a sweet, caring woman who deserves better than to be fooled into loving you by some potion! You're wrong! I didn't use it last night! Courtney loves me for me! Some people never experience this, but I've been blessed enough to find it twice. And instead of being happy for me, you accuse me and insult me. And when you say that I'm some loser who used a love potion to trick Courtney into sleeping with me, well, then you're insulting Courtney, and I will not let you do that. Wait here. You think I care about this formula? Here, take it. Throw it away. I don't need it. I'm in love with her, and she's in love with me for who we are. Doc Man, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, Doc Man. Courtney. What are you? I came back just to see you again. I missed you that much. I heard what you said, Duckman, and it was beautiful. Turns out you're not a foolish choice after all. You're, you're actually a pretty great choice. So I have to break up with you. What? I only make foolish choices, remember? I think you are the most caring, supportive, sensitive man I've ever met. And I've been to the Primetime Emmy Awards. Clearly, I would be happy with you forever. That's why I have to leave you. But... Couldn't you make an exception? I'd like to, but I'm a celebrity. I make foolish choices all the time. To change now would be disastrous. I'm sorry, Duckman. Maybe someday I'll make the right choice after all. Next on Melrose Place, Allison finds out the man in her life is... Coming up next, Seinfeld! Yeah, uh, hi, Irma. Uh, you know who this is? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Well, I, I haven't seen you in a long time. I, I thought maybe we'd get together. Really? Well, I happen to know for a fact you're not who you say you are. I'm on to you, sicko. I swear I've never met you before. I, I tell you what, let me go and, and we'll forget the whole thing, okay, uh, Irma? Tonight... I'm not Irma. Tonight, call me Vandalay. I wish you'd brought that duck suit.
<laughs> for a brother. Sacrifice for, for a, a brother. brother. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh. I, I get it now. He's a clean, clean loving, loving mother. mother. Sacrifice, sacrifice for, for a brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Big, Big black, black dude. dude. Okay. I think I'm okay. Two, three, and who's the bad black detective? Already. That's okay. Who's the bad black detective man? Well, this is so oh, first. I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs>
What? They like when you steal. They're a very giving people. That's how we get the phrase Indian giver. See, you're learning already. Hello, I'm Thomas. I'll be your server. Let me tell you about our special tonight. You begin with an appetizer of grilled leeks with saffron. Yeah, get me a tumbler of wild turkey and keep them coming. As for dinner, let's make this simple. Country fried steak and fish sticks for everybody. And make the french fries crinkle cut, okay? Holds the ketchup better. Hey, walks with a swish. Chop, chop on the fire water, capiche? <sighs> I almost made it. Through the giggling and the peekaboo and the patty cake, through interminable readings from Deepak Chopra and Life's Little Instruction Book. But then, during the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat medley, I just snapped. Glove compartment? Tailpipe. I gave the valet ten bucks to wait a while before he prized them out. Shrewd. Duckman, why is that woman staring at us and taking notes? Guilty. <laughs> Please forgive me, I don't mean to intrude, but I have been watching you. I'm Dr. Susan Fox. The renowned family therapist and best-selling author? Uh, yes. Forgive me if I'm being presumptuous, but presumption is just, well, something I do, not your problem. Based on the behaviors I've observed over the last two days, I believe that unless you let me help you, this family will self-destruct in a heartbreakingly tragic and violent way. Ooh, I'm picking duck. Tragic? Violent? What do you mean, Dr. Fox? You see, in my landmark book, The Ties That Divide, now available wherever quality paperbacks are sold, I devised the Fox Scale of Dysfunctional Crisis. This group scores an 87. Is that bad? Well, the Jacksons only scored 61. <gasps> the good news is it's not too late. I came here for some peace and quiet to write my new book, which will finally offer hope to agoraphobics. But you people offer a much more exciting opportunity. With your permission, I'd like to work with you and make that my book. What about the agoraphobics? They're not going anywhere. <laughs> well then, what do you say? I could save your family. Hold your horses, Dr. Fox, medicine woman. What makes you think we're dysfunctional? Look, Dodd, I'm eating more french fries than ever. Love me, Dodd. Love me. Call it a hunch. Well, get some other rats for your snake pit, Doc. Case closed. <laughs> ah! Waiter, powwow now! This steak is raw. It's got more pink than showgirls. Wrangle this slab back to the flame, okay, babe? Come on, move! hey yup. They're such children. Bon appetit. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, now we're talking. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow. It's like a thousand tiny taste sensations. <laughs> See? It takes an American to get things done. Well, I really have to go now. But I'll reserve the mezzanine conference room in case you change your mind. I'll be there tomorrow at 10. I hope you'll all be there, too. This may be your last hope to survive the hideous doom to come. Been a pleasure. Good night. Mm. Ah. Please, Dad. We learn a lot about ourselves. And avoid the disaster and tragedy the doctor spoke of. There is nothing wrong with this family that some old-fashioned belt beatings wouldn't solve. No more. No shrinks! It shrinks that made this country touchy-feely. It shrinks that blab and blab on Sally Jesse so the teenage nymphomaniacs can't get a word in edgewise. It was shrinks that made me and Mom stop bathing together when I was 15, just when I needed her love the most. No shrinks and that's final. There's nothing wrong with this family. Hey, uh, waiter! Uno mas! This family will self-destruct in a tragic help. and violent Please, way. Dad. Love me, Dad. Begin with an appetizer of grilled leeks with saffron. You should have taken us to therapy. <laughs> Yikes! That's less than ideal. Why didn't any of you tell me that tragedy and violence could happen to me? We're gonna see Doc Fox tomorrow and do whatever it takes to pull out of Dysfunction Junction and save this family. <laughs> I'm sure Duckman will be here soon. Juan and Betty's doing something to further embarrass and humiliate us. Mambo, you can't be sure. Hey, that fountain out there is full of change. There are dimes in here. 
Duckman, let me start by saying... No, let me tell you, Madam DA, exactly what's on the table. I give you the shooter, you bleed me down a man one. I get eight plus time served and I'm out in three. Do we have a deal or not? Oh, uh, Dr. Fox, I'm sorry, I thought this was my four o'clock. <laughs> Forget I said anything. I am very proud of all of you for coming. What we're going to do won't be easy for any of you. In order for this to work, you must all be completely 100% honest. You've got a blue ribbon pair of musk melons, and Duckman's hungry! Perhaps we should shoot for 90% honesty. Yeah, the duck. Let me sum up your situation in terms you'll understand. We have a father figure who is too self-obsessed to be a real father. Ding, ding, ding! Who is me? Duckman, this isn't a game. <laughs> Jip. We have a domineering mother figure who delights in cruelly emasculating the men in her life. Not just the men! A boy with an eating disorder totally disconnected from the world. And two hyper-intelligent boys who feel disenfranchised from the family. We're like minor, underwritten characters in our own lives. Cornfed, the de facto uncle, is a codependent with low self-esteem. I think she's right, but what do I know? And you two are... What are you two again? We're Mr. Duckman's, Duckman's assistants! <laughs> They're just here so Duckman can take phony baloney tax write-offs! So? Dad, it's illegal. Used to be, Mambo, but thanks to right-wing religious nutballs, it's now a sacred duty to God and America to disobey whatever laws you don't agree with. Uh, which reminds me, if any G-men come sniffing around, we don't have any automatic weapons stockpiled in the basement, okay? But we don't! Right. Charles, how does your dad make you feel when he says things like that? Well, ashamed, repulsed, scornful. Just like me and my dad. Mambo, what would be your vision of the ideal family? One where intelligence was rewarded. And where sensitive souls are cultivated instead of squashed. Shut up, or you'll end up like those poets I cold cocked last week. Ajax, what about you? What's your vision of the perfect family? Oh, wow. We finally have the proof that Joe and I have been looking for. You're our long-lost brother. Ajax Hackett. <laughs> uh, uh, Ajax, you're hurting me. Mm. <sighs> Uh-oh. He's in Nantucket again. Perhaps we should come back to him. Well, are we running the session now, Mr. Psychology? Duckman, I sense you harbor some resentment toward Cornfed. It's not true. You resent his competence, don't you? No. Open up. I got Karen Black off cough syrup. I can get you to admit you resent Cornfed. Yes! It's true! It's true! <laughs> wow, Mr. Duckman, a breakthrough! Thanks to Dr. Fox. And let's not forget the soul-enriching Native American atmosphere. Let us salute our Indian brothers! Okay, I'll start with my tribute to Ed Ames! <laughs> no, please! Hostility here could reverse the healing process! Nice one, you pan fried pony pellet! I got a hatchet with your name on it, too, Stay Puff Marshmallow Butt. I can't listen to them fight anymore! People, please calm down. Oh, you want a piece of me? You haven't got the huevos. It's go time, baby! Your emotional systems are very raw right now. Count to ten before you. What are you, you... to ten? I want out of this family! Me too. I've had it up to here. Point at my chin, Charles. I'm busy shaking my fist. Point at your own chin! Fine. From now on, I want nothing to do with any of you. I have no friends. I have no sister-in-law. I... Doc, quick, let me a jacket. I have no sons! Don't give in to rage! Ha! You're complaining! I'm the one who sacrificed my life cleaning your post-binge filth, vacuuming up dandruff the size of chickpeas, putting up with visits at all hours from Captain Moron here! Don't take this the wrong way, but get bent, you lard-bottomed freak. People, please! I, I want, want out! Me, me too! too. Fine. Fine. Fine! Fine! Goodbye forever! Helen. Keep Joe busy while Brian and I sneak Antonio's goat on the plane. Okay. Okay. This is not good. We must solve this or your family will be destroyed. Now, a good start, Duckman, would be for you to come out from under those chairs. They're not chairs, they're a fort. I call it Fort Duckman and only Duckman's allowed in it and nobody's allowed in it who doesn't like Duckman or says bad things about Duckman or treats Duckman bad. What are you changing your name to? Uh, did somebody hear a voice? Cornfed, I sense you have issues. Oh, I have issues. Like the time he had a big date, so he made me miss my mother's funeral to cauterize his lucky goiter. 
and the time he got drunk and gave my phone number to Karen Black, and the time he sold everything I owned to raise money to buy three truckloads of Who's the Boss commemorative plates. They were supposed to triple in value. Damn you to hell, Tony Danza! Damn you to hell! Duckman, how does that list of, uh, atrocities honestly make you feel? Like firing up the charcoal and popping a jug of open pit. You and what United Nations peacekeeping force? Somewhere there's gotta be therapy you'll respond to. Uh, like, like foam bats. <clears throat> Mm. Oh, or, uh, role-playing. Yes. All right, then. Role-playing it is. Now, the idea behind the, uh... Cornfed, what are you doing? I'll be playing the role of Hal Holbrook in an excerpt from my popular one-man show, Cornfed Pig is Hal Holbrook, is James Whitmore, is Mark Twain tonight. The L.A. Weekly called it a foot-stomping, rollicking peek at America's dark underbelly. Let's just stick to people in the room. Perhaps if you assume each other's roles, you'll gain insight into each other's problems. Duckman, you start. Why don't you play the role of Cornfed? Oh, yeah. Now you're gonna get it. Take your best shot. Stay focused. Cornfed, tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Cornfed. I think I'm so smart because I know everything and I've had a lot of jobs, so I'm really cool and my slop don't stink. Good start. Now, Cornfed, why don't you give it a try? You be Duck Man. Well, I'll try. <clears throat> Stuff it up, your spinach spout, you ham handling hee haw! I've only got five minutes till the pep squad practice is over, and with any luck, I'll be boom buying sis before it lights out! I'm gonna shine the old shanks, scrim the old jaw, black the old lab, and I said it. Color me horny, corny my pump is prime. <laughs> no, let's not make this all about Duck Man! Yeah. Oh, wait, I got one, I got one. Mm. Well, I'm off to my favorite hooker, myself. <laughs> Let's face it, I'm always available, always willing, and I really save money with that five-finger discount. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to find common ground. We found it! We all think Duckman's the problem! Yeah, but... but... Snappy comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Duckman, do you want to say anything? Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Duckman, I've never met anyone like you, and I don't know you well, but this much I do know about you. You'll fight to have your steak just right. You'll fight not to have to wear a jacket, and you've fought like hell over a hundred times today to get a peek down my blouse. Now you have to fight for yourself. Because if everyone thinks you're bad, the only way to convince them otherwise is to share how you feel from the heart. You mean like OJ did on that video? Um, okay. If you like. You got it, Doc. <laughs> Wait. You're all so good at playing me. But what role should I play, huh? I could be Bernice. That's right, Doc Man. Then I can undercut your authority, constantly humiliate you in public, teach your children to have no respect for you, and devalue your memories of your wife. Or I could be Charles and Mambo. Flaunting the fact that I'm smarter than you, treating you like an idiot because you don't know anything about quantum splits, cyclomates, whatever. Why should you act like a father when I never act like sons? I could be fluffy in Uranus and force my views on you, never respect your right to have your own beliefs. Or I could be cornfed, always reminding you who's the expert. I'd rather keep subtly blowing my own horn than teaching you to be a better detective or a better friend. Well, you know what? I don't want to be any of you. Dodd, if I keep being Ajax, will you please keep being my Dodd? You bet I will. I think Ajax has taught us something here today. For better or worse, you're the only family you've got, so make the most of it. You're right, Doctor. Actually, this experience has been... Cleansing. I feel like you do after a long, hot shower. Well, I'll take your word for that part, but I do feel better. Thanks, Doc. This is why I got into psychology. To find complex answers to people's real problems. Of course, then I found out where the big money was. Making up problems and giving people easy answers to them. So I'm gonna forget this whole thing happened. I already have. Let's go, gang! Yeah! A medicine man I met said don't get yourself in a sweat when things look gray just shrug and say it must have been something i had so don't get yourself in a snetty set tuck your tantrums into your kitty set it's deserving to be charming close the, the medicine, medicine man, man whom all agree it's 
It's plain to see nobody could be wiser than. So if your temper's getting a top end, all you have to do is just stop and pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet like, like a Choctaw, Chickasaw, Chattahoochee, Chippewa, do. Yeah, if you're feeling mad as a wet hen, mad as you can possibly get, then pass that peace pipe and bury the tomahawk like, like those Chichimex, Cherokees, or Poltabags do. When you're cranky, try to use a little restraint. Fold that hanky and wipe off all that war paint. If you wanna be an alright guy, not a long face blues in the night guy, pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet. So if you wanna power with duck men, stop your seams from coming unstuck men, pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet. Right there. It's grand to patch it. Take a chill pill down the hatchet. Bet your thought be glad to match it. Pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet like the Chumash, Chickasaws, Chattahoochee, Chippewas, and those Chichimex, Cherokee, Chipotle Bates, and those Jacutamines, Chippewa Chats, and Chickabees, Jones, Chos, Chango, Chattanooga, Chicharos, Doo! Duck Man, remove your hand. <laughs> Sorry. So if you wanna power with duck men, stop your seams from coming unstuck men, pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet. Write that apology and dispatch it. When you part, it's grand to patch it. Take a chill pill down the hatchet. Bet your thought be glad to match it. Pass that peace pipe and bury that hatchet like a chew wash, chicken sauce, chattahoochee, chippewas, and those chichimex, cherokee, chipotle bags, and those jacunta meats, chicken chats, and chicken beans, chonchos, chango, chattanooga, ginger rolls, do. Blessed oxygen. Ow! I just had a thought. Good lord, I'm glad that doesn't happen very often. Now, what was it again? Ow! Oh, a question. A question which needs answering. Brother Brethren, I have a question. Sorry, Ajax, we're too busy to interface. Using VRML enhanced software, we've constructed a virtual reality simulation of this very environment. Incredible! It's as if I'm actually walking inside our room. Yes, yes, I see our Einstein poster. Now it's like we're standing right in front of it. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Well, I can always count on Dodd to answer my questions. Actually, I can never count on Dodd to answer my questions. But luckily, I always forget that. No, 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 I'm late. Your money's on the dresser plus a quarter for bus fare. And don't go dipping into my penny jar, senora. I counted those. There's 14, including the counterfeit ones. <laughs> Hey, are you conscious? Hello, Dodd. Ah! Ajax, what happened to that bell I told you to wear around your neck? I swallowed it. Any good? Fruitier than the others. I told you never to mention my high school nickname. Listen, uh, anything you just saw, don't worry about it, or remember it, or ever mention it to a living soul. <laughs> no one got hurt in there. I mean, uh, not emotionally. Dodd, I have a question. Good, then all you need is an answer. Unfortunately, this slap happy pappy's late for work. But, Dodd, you don't work weekends. In fact, mounting evidence suggests you don't work weekdays. No time, big case, talk later, maybe June. Ajax, were you just talking to your father? Uh, yes? Did he ignore you or insult you or cruelly dismiss you? Uh, yes? Well, that certainly was inappropriate of him. Aunt Bernice? Since you're avoiding insulting Dodd because we agreed to be more sensitive to each other's feelings, did you really want to say that Dodd is a walking advertisement for decapitation? Yes! Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! Now, did you want to ask me something? I'm afraid it's something only a man can tell me. It's about squirrels.
Perhaps like so much in life, I can find an answer in the good book. Hello? May I please speak to Maestro Griffin? Yes, it's Ajax again. How long will the meeting be? Another three years? No problem, I'll hold. Okay, so where's the strontium smoking my IQ's over 50 led a myonic bond with my butt science geek we're supposed to meet this morning? Ahem. Duckman, this is Dr. William Blay, the eminent neuropharmacologist. Oh, Dr. Blah. Let me get right to business. I want to hire you. Cha-ching! <laughs> what? I was only saying what we were all thinking. Mr. Duckman, I run a top-secret research laboratory. My associates and I are currently conducting experiments on the transience of intelligence. Oh, you think transients are intelligent? Living on the streets, stealing sour mesh bottles from your garbage, trying to stiff you when you sell them your sister-in-law's underwear? Hmm. I believe that one of my colleagues is stealing data. So, I want you to set up surveillance at the lab and tell me if you see anything suspicious. Surveillance? Yeah. Well, me and Dick Jr. will buy one of those and set it up right away. So, let's talk drachmas, Doc. I uh, trust you're aware we're no longer accepting magic beans in lieu of cash. I'm sorry, but that's strict office policy. Oh, don't worry, Doc Man. You'll be well compensated because for this job, you're the best detective in the world. <laughs> 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 you know, Duckman, I have a funny feeling that Blay isn't telling us the whole truth. Duckman? Would you shut up? Your talking distracts me from my new high tops. Duckman, I wouldn't be forced to use this comically antiquated equipment if you didn't always spend our fee on shiny trinkets and baubles. And your point is? Perhaps it's time to set up the surveillance equipment. Surveillance? Let's look around for evidence. Evidence? Huh, 290 Kelvin. Is that high? You probably shouldn't touch anything. Oh, now you tell me! My God, do you know how many years I've I been... I meant anything in the lab. Oh. <laughs> uh, got any business cards? Just to reiterate, you prop. Hey! That was surprisingly easy. Why, I'd bet a kid, thinking I was a role model and wanting to imitate my behavior, could easily steal sodas from a vending machine, too. Do it! Do it now, kids! Stick it to the man! <laughs> But, of course, that would be wrong. Look at this. A get smart potion and a get dumb potion. Yeah, sounds good. Duckman, no! Can you imagine what would have happened if you had drunk that? Well, you deserve a drink for that, partner. Hmm. Oh, my God! No! What? Uh, nothing. Did you just hand me the Get Dumb Potion? No way! In fact, that's the opposite of what happened. I drank the Get Smart Potion. 
Okay, maybe not opposite. Maybe exactly. It's ridiculous. Such a chemical compound is completely imposterous. I impoundable. Impiniculabudrinculabrum. Hey, there's a word I know. Quick, ask me the square root of 38,000. 194.93581. 194.93588. Ask me how the pyramids were constructed. Who invented language? Ruth Bader Ginsburg's home phone number. Ask me! How about Jenny McCarthy's number? Or how her pyramids were constructed? Of course, it's highly improbable that a simple elixir could reduce me to an addled brain drooling knucklehead dum dum. <gasps> dum dum. I haven't said dum dum since preschool. Next, I'll be saying pee pee and caca. <gasps> I said pee pee and caca. <laughs> I no smart no more. I not right in head. I a or god do. Well, you sound fine to me. That's why he's worried. You're probably wondering why I did this. Huh? Ah, oh, no, I was uh, still on Jenny McCarthy. You wish. You see, since giving my untested Get Smart formula to a human would be morally reprehensible, I hired an irresponsible imbecile who I assumed would drink it accidentally. So where do I come in? Luckily, a brilliant mind like Cornfed's being subjected to the Get Dumb formula will serve just as well, especially since he's proven it works. Don't you see what this means, Duckman? I'll be rich beyond dreams of avarice, beyond limits of good and evil, beyond the boundaries of human imagination. <laughs> you know, something about that guy doesn't sit quite right with me. Mm. Oh. And then Corny drank some weird thingy, and this guy came and said some stuff, but it had lots of syllables, so we left. Let's see. You left your best friend and partner knowing he might have been poisoned, because otherwise you might have been forced to listen to syllables? <laughs> Ajax, why is your head like that? I was on hold for Murr for eight hours before getting disconnected. In retrospect, it might have been nice to have someone to suffer this serious nerve injury with. Uncle Cornfed, are you okay? We heard you drank something strange. How do you feel? Usually with my fingers, though sometimes toes are fun, especially with jello. Whoa. Synchronicity. What's that mean? It's got a T in it. Maybe it's about drinking. drinking. Whoa. Whoa. Cornfed, it's almost as if you and I, um... Yeah, it's like we, uh... Think alike? No, think alike. <laughs> this is horrible! Drinking some evil scientist's formula has made Cornfed stupid! Say, this amusing development could be just what my relationship with the old Cornbone needed. Now he'll know what it's like to be with someone of superior intellect. Cornfed, my man. Pass the linguine. It is delicious, especially when eaten in a perambulator. <laughs> He's got no idea what I'm talking about. Neither do we. Uh-oh, maybe it's contagious. Well, this has been funsies, but it's time for me to go home and wake up. Hmm, interesting variation on the old exit into the closet gag. This is terrible! Cornfed can't function on his own! Perhaps Uncle Corny could stay with us! Uncle Corny! Uncle Corny! Come on out! Come on out! out. Yep, yeah, now come on out, partner. You're gonna stay right here with us until you're better. Hey, just a peep show minute here. Where's the corn seed gonna sleep? There's extra space in the doghouse, but I'm not sure Gecko's really over his bowel trouble. Welcome to Casa Ajax. Whoa. Walls and a ceiling and... You have a floor. Just got it. Over here, I keep my Merv Griffin scrapbooks, my Merv Griffin photos, my Merv Griffin calypso records, and my collection of exotic meats. It's beautiful, like a sunset. And over here is where I keep the bunk bed. <laughs> Wee, this is fun. It's cool finally having a friend, someone who thinks just like I do. Cornfed? Do you know what you should give a pet squirrel to eat? Barbecue grills? 
That's what I thought. Do you have a pet squirrel? No. But maybe I have a friend. <coughs> this one looks just like Dodd's car. <coughs> 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 Get out of my way, you stupid people! You think you own the sidewalk? Rant, rant, rant! <laughs> <laughs> Go on, me. Time for work. Um, Duckman, Ajax and I were talking, and, well, we wondered if maybe I could go to school with him today. Sorry, fella, but I planned a full day going to everyone we know and showing them how much smarter I am than you. Thank you. Velcro can be tricky. On the other hand, maybe a little second grade would be good for you. <laughs> Will you kids knock it off? <laughs> Don't think I won't pull off! <laughs> Get out of my way, you stupid people! You think you're on a sidewalk? Rant, rant, rant! Gravity isn't just a law, it's also a good idea. Everyone sells reversible screwdrivers, but nobody sells reversible screws. I only mind the voices in my head when they don't speak English. I went to an arcade and won a free game, so I took a pinball machine. The Indianapolis Speedway doesn't have any crosswalks. You always just have to run across. <sighs> I bet it feels just like this when you're rich. All right, you just earned yourselves a timeout. Ajax, go stand in that corner. Cornfed, over there. Charles and Mambo, go to your room. What did we do? Nothing. God, the power is so invigorating. Uh, lucky guess. I still prefer Velcro, the fabric of a thousand uses. Observe. Yeah, Velcro's, uh, bitching. Do you know where I put my other sneakers? Um, no. Would you like to wear mine? Sure. Um, they're attached. That's okay. I'll go barefoot. We're so alike. Under these sneakers, I'm barefoot. Who can finish this phrase, to be or Ajax? Um, from Venus? <laughs> Close. Corn fed? To be or not to be? Excellent, corn fed. Who else? That is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. Where the hell's Cornfed and the other kid? Ajax and Cornfed went to the playground. Cornfed and the other kid! Wow! Everyone, guess what Cornfed got on his book report today? Bird droppings? And an A. Not bad, Corn Toad. As a reward, I am raising your weekly allowance by 25 cents. So since I'm no longer paying your salary at work, it's pretty much a wash. Maybe the formula's wearing off. According to a recent study in the American Journal of Evil Scientists, the effect of get dumb formulas is often transitory. Ajax, you're so quiet. He's upset because he never got a call back from Marv Albert. It's Merv Griffin. Doesn't anybody listen? <laughs> Sorry, did I miss something? Ajax. I'm going to lose you, aren't I, Mr. Shoelace Tying Able To Guy? Yes. The one friend I ever had. 
I'll still be your friend. But it won't be the same. No. I wish I had a squirrel. Ajax, is there something you've always wanted to do with a friend? Something special? Yes. Can you guess what it is? Yes. Mr. Griffin, there are two people outside to see you. I think it's one of those make-a-wish things. One guy told me the other one doesn't have long. How unfair is this world that some must perish while others prosper? Of course, I'll send them in right away. Ah. Ooh. It's so sad. He's going fast. He's in shock. It's been his dream to meet you. I must say I'm surprised. Oh, that tacky stuff outside is just for the tourists. I uh, love beautiful old furniture. Or just old. It's okay. Still usable. Can you speak, son? Are you all right? Uh, yesterday I got up on the wrong side of the bed. The inside. You're the kid who calls me every day. Ajax, right? Ooh, well, I'm gonna miss not talking to you. I only pray that you die quickly. I mean that in the good way, of course. But, Lord Griffin, it's not me. It's my friend whose time is up. Everyone likes the smell of syrup, but no one wears it as a cologne. This is so touching. It's a magical, magical moment. So, uh, you're not dying. I'm gonna keep getting those hourly phone calls? Well, you know, just to make sure there's always a working line between us. Gotcha. Uh, gosh, I'm sorry, but our time is up. It's been super meeting you, uh, and you, and if you ever are dying, uh, this can count as our special time, okay? Okay, your Merv ship. Ajax, what's wrong? What you said back there? About the cologne? Did you mean it? You're smart again, aren't you? What does being smart really mean? If I knew that, I would be. I can tell you. It doesn't mean anything. What's important is being sweet and kind and loving. What you are, Ajax. What anyone would be proud of in a friend. And I hope you know I'll always be your friend. By the way, remember you were asking about what a pet squirrel would eat? Well, why don't we find out? It's a squirrel. Oh, thank you, Uncle Corny. I think I'll call it a squirrel. Here you go, a squirrel. A yummy barbecue grill. Isn't that cute? It's breaking its teeth. I have a question for the Monsignor. In all of your ecumenical studies, have you ever wondered about Howard Stern and Bababooey? Bababooey! Bababooey! 
God, I need a vacation. Here at last! Here at last! Good God Almighty, it's here at last! Happy birthday, Duckman. Thanks, Carney. You call the bomb squad? Actually, this one's from me. Go ahead, open it. Well, geez, big million. Don't you think I better wait for my surprise party tonight? <laughs> I've just had the horribly sickening feeling that you're not joking. <laughs> Tracy Lords better watch her back with award-winning performances like that. <laughs> Now you can deep six the Thesping, Brother Cornelius. All week long, Bernice and the boys have been whispering about something that can only mean one thing. Party! Duckman, every year you convince yourself you'll have a surprise birthday party, and every year you spend the rest of the week tortured, bedridden, and suffering bouts of hysterical blindness. <sighs> Fine, go back to your acting, Sir Lawrence O'Piggie. Mm. Oh, Fluffy! And here's a her longtime companion! Uh, yes. Uh, at my surprise party tonight, will all the Mandrell sisters be there? We've just had the horribly sickening feeling that you're not joking. <laughs> ah, heck. Why wait for the party for the games to begin? Bombing for apples, anyone? Duckman, by all that is holy, please tell me those apples were broken hypodermic needle free. Some questions are better left unanswered, Corn Muffin. Now then, where were we? Ah, yes, the celebration of all that is Duckman. Um, maybe we should just open my present instead. Hmm. Okay, but this better be good. For Duckman's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. It's a hologram. I made it myself. Original construction began during my eighth grade summer, when all of the other boys were out playing. Corny, I'll treasure it always. Really, I will. Scooby Papa! Zara Papa! Yahamba! Well, I'm home, ready for a quiet evening of warm milk and Bible study. Surprise, fun, we. Can I go home now? Where is it? Uh... Oh, I get it! A surprise on a surprise! Come on, come on, wherever you are! Where is everybody? They've all been stricken with mad cow disease! Attention viewers, this joke was written in spring 1996. Ah! There never was a surprise party, Duckman. I ran around town buying food and party favors and inviting all your friends. When threatened with litigation, if I actually referred to any of them as your friends, I spent the rest of the day making balloon animals. Wanna see a wildebeest? How could this have happened? In short, your cynical, self-serving, contemptuous, nihilistic, diabolical, miserly, spineless, phlegmatic, cold-blooded, weak-willed, avaricious, smelly... I thought you said, in short. Sorry, that's the most fun I've had all evening. It's okay, Cornfed. You can always judge a man by his friends, and since I have none, I am nothing. <sighs> Duckman. I know that underneath your terminally abrasive exterior lies a good side, but perhaps the reason you don't have many friends is because sometimes... You forget how to be one yourself. Can this be true? Could I, Duckman, have squandered an entire lifetime by being self-centered, selfish, self-serving, and self-something else? Good heavens, this must change. From now on, I vow, as the world is my witness, a clean slate, a fresh start, I will summon all my strengths, channel all my energies, and become the very best friend humanly possible! So help me, God! Oh, Duckman. Uh, uh, no offense, Cornbelt, but if it really is going to be a fresh start, it'll have to be with people who have no idea how scummy I am. Toodles!
I've tried everywhere, solicited everyone, and I still can't find a friend. I'm afraid there's only one thing left to do. Get my IQ and blood alcohol to the same level. Barkeep, give me the strongest thing you've got. I haven't heard screaming like that since my cousin Moisha told Aunt Sophie he hated her kreplach. Will you jam your jive, John, before I go upside your head? We gotta help this poor, poor man. A uh, man? He looks more like a duck to me. He's gonna be a dead duck if we don't do something. Come on, gang. First I can't make any friends, then I scorch the inside of my esophagus. Vengeful God, why must you mock me so? Maybe it's too late to do anything about your internal injuries, but we can always help with the friendship part. <laughs> yeah, it's the least us hot-looking but non-threatening 20-somethings can do. You mean? That's right, Mr. Duck, er, man. Welcome to the gang! <laughs> Sunshine whenever there's no hope. If you get stuck, we're told you we'll leave it by the road. Life can be so pretty if you try. And with your gang to be there, you know that we'll get by. Oh, we'll be friends to the end, to the end, to the end. We'll be good friends just like friends. friends. up to me on the subway and asked if I was a model. I wanted him to like me, so I told him I was. And now we've got this date tomorrow, and I'm afraid to admit that I'm just some waitress at a coffee house. Oh, you guys, I don't know what to do. Uh, same thing happened to me once. Really? What did you do? Uh, what? <laughs> Come on, you guys, this is serious. Listen, Ditsy, all you gotta do is apologize for lying, then tell this dude the truth. And be proud of it, too, because you're not just some waitress at a coffee house. You happen to be our friend. Oh, oh Duck Man, these past few days with you have been so great. I, I don't know what I'd do without you. And I don't know what I'd do without you, Ditsy. In fact, I can't imagine life without any of you colorful composites. Sassy, your lust for life and willingness to tell it like it is. You go, Duck. Bobby, your engaging simplicity. Always good for a few laughs. Uh, what? <laughs> Pete Miser, with that neurotic, Semitic wit and that lovable hangdog expression. Hang dog? Well, my Rin Tin Tin? Next thing you know, you'll be getting me neutered. And finally, Marion, our unofficial leader. Who'd have thought androgyny could be so, so middle American? Um, I mean, I mean, really, you know, you know uncomfortable to, uh, talking about, you know, what, what some people call my uh, sex, uh, se sexuality. Uh, ch cheese ball? <laughs> Ah, yeah, I gotta say, you people are the best friends I've ever, ever, ever had. Sorry. What's that, Jean-Claude? A karate chopping free-for-all in Brussels? Gee, I don't know. Hundreds of other friends want me to do neat things with them, too. I... Um, that was just another one of my friends calling. Nothing to get jealous about. Uh, corn-fed, right? Yes. Haven't seen much of you lately. Hey, hanging out with the gang's a full-time job. Oh, those guys. 
But looky what I've got. Ringside seats for tonight's Foxy Boxing title bout. If we're lucky, we may be sweated upon. Maybe even catch a tooth. Female fisticuffs? Confed, I happen to have friends who are women. I... I'm sorry, Duckman. It's just that you haven't been around lately, and, well, to be honest, you really mean a lot to me, and I miss you. <laughs> I, I almost forgot to tell you. We were sitting around the other day discussing relationships, Natch, and uh, Pete came out with the funniest thing. He's dating this fashion model who doesn't know he's Jewish. So he says to her, he says, Do you want a boyfriend or a goyfriend? You got it? A goyfriend! <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's some kind of funny, all right. Well, I wish I could stay and entertain you longer, but it's time for us to meet at the coffee house to make obscure pop culture references. Pop culture references? I make those all the time. Fabio, The Clapper, Mr. Pibb, Eddie Vedder, Urkel. Well, gang, here I... M. Hot Pockets, Fanny Farmer, MTV's House of Style, Spray on Hair. It's not the same! Where could the gang have gone? I know. They're probably at Marion's spacious bohemian loft. Need some company? Well, actually, there's something I wanted to talk to you about, Corndog. You know, I... I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. I, I mean, you're really a nice guy, you know. It's just that... Well, I think we should stop seeing each other for a while. Excuse me? Oh, don't make this any harder than it already is. Let's face it, I've changed, you've changed. I haven't changed. The point is, I want to move on. This is all about them, isn't it? Your precious gang. Don't be ridic- Wait, no, you're right, it is all about them. <laughs> but so what? They're young, attractive, popular? You? You don't even have a haircut named after you. Actually, there's a tribe in the Aleutians that sport the Corn Fed. It's a slicked back number with little mucklucks where the ears would be. Shut up! <laughs> Goodbye, Duckman, and good luck with your new life. But don't you find it a bit odd that the gang's disappeared? What are you talking about? Not to alarm you, but you do have a tendency to scare people off. This time it's different. This time I've tried really hard to become a great, caring friend, just like you said I should. This time I've changed. Marion! Nancy! Gang! Open up! Please! They've deserted me. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be the first time a group of people faked their own deaths and moved to Tibet to escape you. God, I miss Menudo. Surprise! Oi. Ha! So what are you waiting for, belated birthday boy? Uh, what? <laughs> you people are so very precious. I don't believe it. Duckman really does have... friends. Okay, D-Man, your desperately tight grip is severely cutting off our circulation. Yeah, Sugar. You, uh, can't let us go now. I'll never let you guys go. In fact, I'm gonna have us all surgically grafted together at the pelvis. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I, I know this doctor in Uruguay. <laughs> I cannot express to you with mere words how grateful I am. Thank you. Uh, uh. Oh, dear. I guess being kissed by a man was too much for the poor little thing. God, I hate being so virile. Uh, more likely, you just sucked all the blood out of her head. Bobby, you don't have to make excuses about Marion's questionable sexuality. You're a studly guy who never fools around with any of the girls in the gang, and we've never made fun of your homosexuality. Uh, I'm not gay. Bobby, Bobby, hey, come on, it's me, Duckman, remember? Heck, I've experimented a few times myself, eh? In scouts, in college, during my six-year stint in the Greek Navy. I'm not gay! I'm not! I'm not! What did you say to get him all crazy?
Ah, we were just, you know, relating, like good friends often do. Speaking of which, Shalom Aleichem, sweet soul sister Sassy. My home girl, my home style, my home depot. What's up with your bad, bad, bad Leroy Brown style G-spot? Oh, hell no. I cannot believe ah. that you just said what you said That's to it. me. The hell with all y'all. Go fight the power, mama. Say, what are my two compadres talking about? Wait, let me guess. Relationships. Yeah, there's no greater feeling than falling in love. Except maybe when an infection clears up or a canker sore finally heals. Eh? <gasps> <sighs> ah, it feels so good to share. Jeez, duck guy, you're not exactly secretary general of the decorum department. <laughs> oh, you're such a Jew! God, I love trading witticisms with you, Petey Boy. You know, thinking I lost you guys was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. So first thing tomorrow morning, I'm a moving in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me? That's right. From now on, I'll be right here, hugging you, trading quips with you, sharing my each and every thought and feeling, no matter how insignificant or trivial. Yes, I'll be there for you. And I'll never, ever, ever let you go. Whenever there's no sunshine, don't da da ja ja ba ba do I, I don't know about you guys, but this duck man isn't working out as well as I had hoped. We could ask him, no, beg him to leave. But I don't think we'd ever really get him out of our lives. Uh, so what are we gonna do? Ooh, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> Let's kill him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how come nobody's laughing? Whenever there's no sunshine, whenever there's no hope If you get stuck, we're told you we'll leave them by the road Life can be so pretty if you try And with your gang to be there, you know that we'll get <laughs> that wasn't funny or friendly. All I did was try to be your friend, try to be like you. You went too far, Meshugana. We thought we could quip with anyone. Relate to anyone. Look hot with anyone. Anyone except for you. <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, I knew I never really fit in with you. When people look at you, they see the way they want to be. When they look at me, they see the way they really are. Well, what are you waiting for? Finish me off so there'll be room for more of you. And since we're the gang, let's dismember him together. together! But before your bloodbath begins, have you considered features? Oh my gosh! It's Super Agent Extraordinaire Skip Spike Birkenstock! Sign with me and not only will I have your professionally chiseled profiles plastered on every calendar and coffee mug this side of Alpha Centauri, but I'll release you from this small screen trinitronic purgatory and take you to the glamorous world of motion pictures. Can you really get us into the movies? Absolutely, but you gotta decide who gets top billing. Uh, that would be me. You? Well, I've been carrying your collagen stuff butt for years. My TV Q test is better than all of you You carry a movie? Corny, what are you doing here? Cornfed, that was your greatest discovery since Yahoo Sirius. Let's talk finder's fee. Saving Duckman's life is reward enough, but three points of the ancillary rights would really hit the spot. Duckman, you have your choice. I can either rush you to a burn unit or ringside at Foxy Boxing. Alas, you know me too well, old friend. But before we go, there's one thing I don't understand. I abandon you, hurt you, treat you like a bus station toilet. Yet you're always by my side, bailing me out, saving my skin. Why? When I graduated college with a degree in sidekick sciences, I could have made a lifetime commitment to either you or Matt Houston. And frankly, Lee Horsley always gave me the creeps. Yeah, he, he was like the poor man's Tom Selleck. Isn't that redundant?
<laughs> Connie, you're the greatest. No offense, Duckman, but haven't you had enough hugging for one day? Oh, uh, yeah, right, sure. Quitter, we're going to San Francisco to DickCon 97, the annual detectives convention, because I, Duckman, have been chosen to receive my industry's Lifetime Achievement Award. All right, point made. We'll go back to guessing. That's true, I swear. Allow me to quote the letter from the Academy. <clears throat> This long overdue honor is in recognition of Duckman's many outstanding achievements and invaluable contributions to his field of expertise. What a lot of horse haggis! The only achievement in your career has been your total lack of achievement! You have never, ever, ever solved a case, not once! Ah, Bernice, my dear small-minded Lodge Butter, the ESPN Morning Workout Show hostess wannabe. Being a good detective is more than just solving cases. It's also, uh, uh, other stuff. Well, despite my nagging suspicions that this is another one of your cock and bull stories, I'm still involuntarily feeling pride. Hey, me too. So this is what pride feels like. I'm scared. Hold me. Uh, Dodd, what do you call that sound a siren makes? Why? Damn unleaded plus. Hold on, folks! How's that? Straight? Straightest thing in this city. Hey, I heard that. Ah. <sighs> DickCon 97, where my coronation will come to a head. Where I shall finally take my place among the legendary detectives, like uh, the famous guy, and the guy who solved those cases, and old Miss What's-Her-Name. No doubt you've been awaiting me. Duckman's the name, as in guest of honor, Duckman. Tell you what, uh, just back this baby into the lifetime achiever space. Use those rags you're wearing to give it a shine. Then look between the seat cushions for a little something for yourself. Brochure, sir? Must be French for autograph. There you go, babe. My uh, phone number's on there, too. Give me a call anytime you want to ride the D-Tray. Oh, and congratulations on your breasts. Look, Cornfed, it makes it look like I'm wearing glasses. You always wear glasses. Different glasses. This thing is genius. Observe. Groucho, not Groucho. Groucho, not Groucho. Groucho, not Groucho. Groucho? <sighs> that woman, I recognize her. Is she a former victim or are you a former client? Amazingly, neither. Her name's Lauren Simone. We went to Don Galloway's famous detective school together. We were bitter rivals. She hated to see me succeed. I was hungry for knowledge, doing groundbreaking research on chastity belt metallurgy, lingerie tensile strength, and the legal difference between search and seizure, and just plain fondling. 
Lauren ridiculed my theories, but I told her to just wait. One day I'd be a famous detective. And now, Cornfed, that day has finally come. <coughs> Sergeant Caesar, it's legal! Put up with a hell of a bad experience. Ooh. Well, well, as I live and breathe, it's Lauren Simone. How are you, my dear? I hope that life has treated you better than time has. <laughs> but enough pleasantries. For we have come to the moment when I watch your leathery face fall further as I tell you that I, Duckman, am here to pick up my Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> we will now pause for jealousy to put its head up your ugly rear. Hello, Duckman. Actually, I already knew about your honor. You see, I'm chairperson of the convention. Uh, oh, well, I, uh, uh... It's nice seeing you again, Duckman. Can't we just bury the hatchet? Uh, oh, okay, sure. Well, I, I must say she exhibited a magnanimous amount of grace and self controlitude I guess people really do change. Perhaps. While my Weathertron Storm Simulator has no practical application, it is really cool. Look at all these men in tuxedos. Arr, I feel like a kid in a candy store. Bernice, usually a setup like that one would demand I launch some zinger about you being no kid and that store ending up with no candy. But that would violate our family's new policy of sweetness and glasnost. Besides, we're here tonight not to bury you, but to praise me. I hope this doesn't sound grandiose, but tonight, I begin my preordained ascent toward the global adulation I so richly deserve. For what is greatness? And now, here's legendary P.I. Morton Tannenbaum to help present our final award of the evening, our Lifetime Recognition Award. First, Mr. Tannenbaum, after 60 years as a detective, do you have any inspirational words you can share? I once did Herbert Hoover's wife while he watched. Yes, well, we all know who this year's recipient is. Let's welcome him up. Duckman! Boys, you'll always remember the night the legend was born. Ah, uh, Duckman, I've got one of my patented near-psychic bad feelings about this. With Hagen screen time, Cornish, I'm about to meet my destiny. Wow, this is so incredible. I mean, wow, I never expected this. Oh, well, there's, there's so many people to thank. My agent, my manager, uh, let's see, uh, my accountant, lawyer, personal trainer, nutritionist, voice coach. We did it, Eli! My florist, my mailman, the Dalai Lama. Oh, my family, my, my sister-in-law, Bernice, and my sons, Charles, Gumble, Mambo, whatever. And of course, Ajax. <laughs> but ultimately this this is my night i uh i don't get too many honors okay i don't get any that's why this means so much to me you know you you work kind of hard you sort of do your best and sometimes it seems like you don't know why you do it why you keep going out there every day getting slapped down by life well it helps to get something like this and know that your peers think you're doing a good job You folks may not believe this, but I... Well, I actually haven't solved that many cases. No, no, it's true. I, I guess I'm just choosy about the cases I take on. Jeez, I'm killing it. I haven't even gotten to my blue material yet. Lifetime underachievement award? But... but... My invite said I was getting the Achievement Award! Whoops! Must have been a typo. Yes, I distinctly remember nominating you for the Under Achievement Award. You! No! No! Ladies and gentlemen, our honoree for a lifetime of pathetic failure, Duckman. <laughs> Oh, 
She humiliated me again. I'm the laughing stock of my profession. That was the worst experience of my life. I'm sorry, Duckman. You didn't deserve what happened back there. You're a decent person whom we all admire for our own reasons, and you should know we all still respect and care for you. I stopped believing you somewhere around I'm. My nostrils flared, didn't they? Look, Duckman, you'll wake up tomorrow and you probably won't even remember this. Okay, maybe not tomorrow, but the next day. Well, someday. Okay, one day you won't even wake up and this'll all be over. Of course, odds are people will defile your grave. Uncle Cornfed! Sorry, I was swept away by the moment. Dad, we're still glad we could share this trip with you. That's the worst part, being humiliated in front of my sons. I've worked hard to prepare you boys for a lifetime of broken promises and dashed expectations, but this is different. I just hope this doesn't affect you permanently, that you can gather yourselves together and somehow get past this trauma. <laughs> wow, there's a tiny sink in here just for washing your hair. It even makes a soothing little whirlpool when you pull a lever. Duckman, it says here in the convention itinerary that there'll be a best detective contest tomorrow morning. The winner gets a grand prize of $10,000. Wee hee. Our business could really use that money, plus we'd be able to add award winning to our business card. We have business cards? You designed them yourself. <laughs> Must have been during my Sudafed period. This may be a last chance for redemption, Duckman. A chance to prove yourself to those detectives. Yeah, sure. To further prove how pathetic I am. I'll just take the old Pasadena on that. It's time to cut my losses and leave this bass Ackwardsburg. Boys, pack my shoes. I'll get the linens and towels. The winner will also get this winsome trophy inscribed Best Dick 97. <gasps> it's so shiny and gleaming and phallic. Okay, I'll do it, Corny. I'll show them all. Look out, Redemption. Here come the duck. One minute until the test begins. <sighs> By the power of Grayskull, I have... Ice front. You may begin the test. You have one hour. <laughs> Must be some sort of trick. <laughs> Clever fiends. Cornfed! Cornfed! What the f- Okay, skip that one. Number two. If a man, knife, 40 miles an hour, leaves the station at 230 foot- ah, Try number three. Yaha! Go to the fourth. Surveillance... Confession? Oh, wait, I get it. <laughs> ah! What's the English version? Oh, we can't solve any of these! Corvette! Hey, buddy. Uh, how you been? Great. Uh, hypothetically speaking, just shooting the breeze, let's say you are in a windowless room, a corpse with multiple con con contusions, and a bray... a bray... Duckman, I can't help you cheat. You have to do this yourself. Otherwise, you'd never be able to respect yourself. That would be bad. Oh. But I can't! I'm not going to help you. One minute left on the test. Go on, Fred. Time's running out. Please, 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 please. Do it for the agency. I'll go distract Lauren. Groucho, not Groucho. 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 Return to your seat. Time's up, detectives. Pencils down. Pencils, dicks.
Well, Duckman, since the only thing your booklet is good for is recycling, what say we just go ahead and throw this away now? Great it, baby! <gasps> A p -p -p perfect score? Yeah! Yeah! But, but that's impossible! That can't be! You're an idiot! You had to have gotten help from someone. Underachiever, my tough de tuchus. I got a perfect score. I'm a friggin' genius. You put you down, down, and thrust your pelvis. Oh, oh thrust your pelvis. Oh, thrust your pelvis. Congratulations, oh, Duckman. Here's your best dick 97 trophy. Thank you, everyone. While I did this all by myself, I'd like to give an extremely small passing mention to my best friend. <laughs> Cornfed, you're gone. There's only one logical explanation. You're invisible. You've invented an invisibility ray that can be... No, Duckman, look! Oh, no. The process doesn't work on hats, belts, or coins. It's completely useless. Duckman, will you put your pinhead on pause? Cornfed's been kidnapped! That's worse. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that we have a devious kidnapping on our hands. In times like this, we need the greatest crime-solving mind of our age. So tell us, Duckman, where is Cornfed? I can easily solve Cornfed's kidnapping through the careful examination of these clues. Clues. Whatever. First, this belt. Eh, uh, hmm, belt. Cornfed like to belt out show tunes. That's it. He's been kidnapped by the ghost of Liberace. Uh, this duck man doesn't seem to be such a hot detective after all. I'm frightened and disoriented. <laughs> hey, hey, easy with the trophy envy. Attention, everyone. Duckman's bungling investigation has shown us he's unworthy of the title of best dick. <laughs> Hey, wait, come on, I was just getting warmed up. Here we go. Exhibit A, Cornfed's belt. Removed as if he had to go to the bathroom. Ooh. Exhibit B, these dimes. The sort of dimes one might need to use a pay toilet. Ah. There's four of these dimes, indicating the fourth stall of... Hmm? Lavender with a hint of Lysol. Cornfed is being held hostage in the ladies' bathroom. Follow me. Hey, this is the first time I've been in a ladies' room legally. By legally, of course, I mean ever. And now, direct from Kidnapville, a man for all sausage, Cornfed! Ta-da! <gasps> Hold your horses, Sonny. I should be done in an hour. My God, Cornfed! What have they done to you? Corny, 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 13 hours of investigation, and 10 of those were spent trying to find my way out of the ladies' room. Lauren's right. I'm a lousy detective. And now I'm a lousy detective who lost his best friend. There's something charming about her. Maybe it's her alluring lack of consciousness. And I could use the sympathetic gear of a person that can't possibly bore me back. Bonjour. Ah! Oh, great. I found the only company misery doesn't love. Ah, shut up, you mush-headed thickwit. I'm in no mood for your antics tonight. In fact, the sight of you makes me feel worse. Well, then I'll be happy to join you. You won. You got what you wanted. You're successful, famous, respected, and you've completely humiliated me. I've dreamt for so long of the day when I'd make you look like a fool, when I'd ruin you. And today, when I kidnapped Cornfed to humiliate you, knowing you could never solve the case. Wait, you kidnapped Cornfed? Is he okay? Ah, uh, don't worry, he's all right. Ooh. So my plan was working fine. I thought it would be the happiest day of my life. But it's not. Not nearly. 
Yeah, goals never work out. That's why I don't bother. Wait a minute. You're not happy? Can you believe it? I mean, that ladies' room scene was perfect. You were a complete moron, wearing your stupidity like a badge of honor, flaunting your idiocy, begging for a fall. Yeah, it's this thing that I do. Some people can cook, some can sing. So there you were, putting both feet in your mouth, and when I looked at you, all I felt was... was sympathy. I felt sorry for you, you big jerk. You looked like a little puppy. Wow. And this time I wasn't even licking myself inappropriately. I looked at you and, and realized, realized, I realized I like you a lot. You know, like in, like. Excuse me? I think back at Galloway's I had a little crush on you. But you were so repugnant, so disgusting, so grossly unsavory. A relationship with you was not part of the plan I had for myself. So I must have overcompensated, turned it to hate. But when I saw you in that bathroom, looking so lost and hurt, I knew it wasn't hate. So that's why you always tried to embarrass me. Stealing my homework, changing my grades, sending me those fake notes from our teacher saying, You suck! Get out of my class! I never sent any notes. Oh. Anyway, all this time you were in love with me? Keep it in your down, Chester. I said I was sublimating, not insane. I just have a decades-old crush that needs closure. Did you, um, ever have any romantic feelings for me? More than likely. But for me to be interested in a woman, my only requirement is that she have legs and a pulse. And I even waved those in New Orleans last year. Yeah. I think a few dates with you should finally rid me of any unresolved romantic feelings. What do you say? I say we've got a moonlit night, one of the most beautiful cities on Earth, and a pocket full of stolen credit cards. Yeah, but forget about that last part. Let's swing, baby! <laughs> you know, Duckman, I feel great. I, I really do. But I still can't help feeling I'm forgetting something. Hello? Hello? Anybody out there? Stop man, is this you? Come on, this is the tunnel. Lauren, is it you? Just say something. Somebody talk to me. Hello? Hello? Anybody out there? Hello? Come on, this is the tunnel. Somebody talk to me. I don't listen to the world, and I can't even say anything about the myself anymore. We did it, Eli! Welcome to O. McManahan's Old Fashioned Pub Incorporated. May I tell you about our fun, fun specials? Like our all you can eat shuffle off to buffalo wings, our baby o baby back ribs, or our leaning tower of pizza. <laughs> Get it? Pizza! Save your CO2, Pee Wee, because nothing could be more special to me than your finest malt liquor. Uh, by the way, it just so happens to be all our birthdays tonight, so keep bringing the complimentary chilled monkey brains, or uh, whatever it is you people do. And I'll have a Shirley Temple. <laughs> I suppose you want to see some ID. Only if you're applying for the senior citizen's discount. <laughs> Fess up, Dad. Why'd you take it?
take us out to dinner tonight? To swipe a few tips off the tables? To steal bottles from the dumpster for the recycling money? To fall face first into the urinal just so you could sue the restaurant? Face first? You're in no. Well, they're all pretty good suggestions. The real honest to Godfrey reason we're here is to spend more quality time as a family unit. Uh, and so that I, uh, could pick up desperate, emotionally damaged middle aged women by pretending to be a devoted single dad! <laughs> You remind me of my fourth husband, right before he blew his brains out. <coughs> Buy me a drink. Be careful, Duckman. A cursory olfactory analysis of this woman's sweat glands indicates that decades of alcohol ingestion have permeated her cellular structure and made her a prime candidate for spontaneous combustion. Say what? Oh, my dear sweet lord! Joe, who wants potato skins? Um, perhaps the best way to take our minds off the smell of burning flesh is to begin tonight's karaoke contest. Hot steaming diggity. I'd like to sing some Beethoven. Hey, Jax, you can't karaoke to Beethoven. You need something with lyrics. <laughs> I'm to think I've been practicing my whole life. What do you say, corn syrup? Blow their minds with our patented Sonny and Cher medley? I'd love to, except my sequin squaw outfit's still at the cleaners. Well, then let's focus all our energies into making sure you know who doesn't head up there and... Evening, folks. How you doing tonight? <laughs> I'd like to start off with a song by one of our country's greatest natural resources, Mr. Marvin Hamlish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lady. We don't have any Hamlish. Then, uh, perhaps something by, um, oh, I don't know, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber? <laughs> no Webber! No Webber! Maybe you should tell me what songs you do have. Since we put all our profits into buying more umbrellas for our fun, fun drinks, the only karaoke song we have is Pop Goes the Weasel. Maybe we should slow things down a bit. All around the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the the monkey thought it was all in fun. Pop goes the weasel. Karaoke, Japan's cruelest invention since Harry Carey. Duck man, please. But I want to tell you, Greenpeace ought to ban whaling like that. Duck man, I am warning you. Man, I've heard sweeter sounding death rattles. Yeah, you got a trained voice, and it derailed. <laughs> Polyps want a cracker? That is it! For years, you mocked me! Well, I don't have to take your crap, those put-downs and insults! Well, I don't have to take your crap, you craven oaf, you witless dope! I don't have to take your crap! Hey there, I'm Rube Richter, president of Deaf Mute Records. Never before have I heard anyone so passionately articulate the anger of today's modern-day woman. You're like Alanis Morissette, only much less weird-looking. Why exactly are you telling me this? First thing tomorrow, I want you in the studio so we can get these rants on record. Baby, I'm gonna make you a star. Me? A star? <laughs> Me, a star. Knock it off! Bernice, this here's your producer engineer, Street Daddy Crip. Word up. Just lay down what you did last night and we'll be on top of the charts number one with a bullet. Do people still use those archaic expressions? 
Take the chill pill, daddy O. Something's wrong here. Something's missing. I've heard more passion from a narcoleptic Quaker. I still can't believe that never sold. This recipe for success is missing one very pungent ingredient. For years, you've mocked me. Well, I don't have to take your crap. Yeah. Oh, Bernice, that was you. I thought I stumbled into some sort of sonic slaughterhouse. Those put down. Wonderful, Bernice. Just wonderful. Shed a few hundred pounds, you'll be the next Mama Cass. You crave it, Al! You witless dog! I don't have to take you back! Huh. Congratulations! According to the latest sound scan survey, you just recorded the number one song in the country. Now get ready for Bernice, the Hear Her Roar Tour. 32 cities plus Fresno. A tour? Well, I guess this is it. Wish I could have gotten to know you better, but between your constant put-downs and my unusual bathroom habits, well, sometimes these things work out, sometimes they don't. Arrivederci, Rama. It's time we say... Actually, Duckman, we'd like you to join the tour as, uh, Director of, um, Motivational Services. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me make sure the chronic caterwauling hasn't burst my eardrums. Did you just say you want me to accompany her on... Hmm, Franklin discovered electricity, but what if I need a stove, too? And an almanac. What exactly are my duties? You'll earn a weekly salary by tapping into Bernice's psyche, channeling her pain and... Just keep cheesing her off, okay? Well, Lord knows I'll give it a try. Now, if you'd kindly point me toward the powder room, I got me a mic stand to pass. I hate to spoil the party, but I never agreed to any tour. Recording the song was fun, but abandoning my role as surrogate mom for a full-time ride on the sweaty underbelly of rock and roll? I'm sorry, Rue, but I'll have to say no. But Aunt Bernice, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Good point. You can reach people through the power of music, change their very lives. What he said. And the kiddies can tag along and see the country. Oh, yes! Honey, right. to do. Praise the Lord. Just know that any time you feel you've had enough, say the word and we'll go straight home. Deal? Deal! Uh, 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 put the hugs on hold, Bernice. It's makeover time. Blood-splattered tiara? Mud-stained combat boots? Dirty, sweaty wedding dress? <laughs> I, I don't know, Rube. Do you really think this is me? Bernice, from the moment I first saw your face, I knew you were more special than special could possibly be. If you'll just place yourself under my tutelage, well, I'll make you the shiniest star on this whirly-twirly teacup ride we call life. Oh, do you really mean that, Rube? It's not just some shameless, self-serving lie? Baby, I'm a record company executive. I'm Kurt Loder, and this is MTV News. Deaf Mute's unlikely new recording artist Bernice is causing quite a stir on the club scene lately. Female audiences everywhere can't seem to get enough of the snarling chanteuses, mess with me guys, and I'll mess with you lyrics.
Bernice's popularity continues to grow. Legions of female fans, or Bernicians as they prefer to be called, are emulating their outspoken spokesperson. She, like, totally understands our anger against guys. And I love her lyrics, especially the hate part. I don't know, like, how she does it, like what her secret is. Well, it's official. The country's come down with a serious case of Bernice fever. It's hard to pick up a magazine lately and not see the dynamic diva's face on the cover. Will this tour ever end? Seems like we were born on this bus. But, look on the bright side. I've been able to moon people in 28 states. Make that 29! As Bernice continues to climb the charts, she transcends the boundaries of pop music to become a bona fide social phenomenon. Nancy from Secaucus, New Jersey writes, Dear Casey, after all these years, I finally realized that my husband is a lying, cheating sack of filth. I'd like nothing more than to flambe his nads and serve them to all my guests. So, Casey, for that special person I hate so much, please play Burn in Hell, My Baby, the latest song by that vociferous voice of my generation, Bernice. And stay tuned for tonight's MTV Music Awards, featuring performances by Soundgarden, Smithereens, the liver of David Crosby, and the long-awaited television debut of Bernice. Bernice, since you have a few hours before the awards, we were hoping to do a little sightseeing. I burned out, dudes. We hardly see you anymore. Even Courtney Love says you're a reckless and irresponsible parent. And that you wear too much makeup. Hey, boy, it's tough on top. You try being responsible for this tour and this record and having that damn Annie Leibovitz follow you everywhere you go. And another thing, I don't know quite how to say this, but you've been partying an awful lot lately. When was the last time you worked out? Well, things got pretty sweaty between me and Cypress Hill last night. And Bernice, let's go home. We want things to be the way they were before. Please? Well, we finally made it, Con. The MTV Awards. Can't wait until Bush performs. I didn't know Bush was your favorite band. It's a band. Hey, Ice-T, did you see that one coming, too? All the way down Sunset, man. We've got trouble. It's Aunt Bernice. Okay, what'd she do this time? Belittle her befuddled assistants? Punch out more paparazzi? Throw up in Kennedy's hair? That was all you, Dad. I threw up on Kennedy? Really? And Bernice is starting to lose herself. She's being seduced by the decadence and narcissism of rock and roll. We want to go home. Wait, whoa, stop, huh? Are you saying you've sopped up enough of the Bernice gravy train? Gidulous, this is the very best thing that's ever happened to us. Hey, we're hanging out with Tommy Lee. But none of it's worth anything if Aunt Bernice has to pay the price. Uh, no offense, Tommy. <laughs> Dad, we're afraid if Aunt Bernice keeps this up, we may lose her forever! Woohoo! Duckman, if anything should happen to Bernice, you'll be left with her familial and domestic duties. You'll be in charge of all the cooking and cleaning, feeding Grandmama, raising Ajax, Charles, and Mambo. Bilbo. Whatever. You'll be the sole parent, Duckman, responsible for them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, every single day, for the rest of your life. Life. life, life, life. Bernice, don't fear the Reaper! I'm a coming to save you! Hey, lay some sugar on me, Ruby, baby. Uh, yeah, I'd like that. I really would. But I've got to conduct some uh, important music mogul thingies. Bernice don't need you! Bernice don't need anybody, Bernice! Number one in southeastern Denmark! Well, 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 if it isn't the 
Daddy, Daddy, Matt. Bernice, I know I've said this every day since we first met, but you look horrible. How could you be so selfish? Throwing your life away on booze, ignoring your family? But have you once ever thought about me? I want to go out, have a few drinks, get away from the family, and I can't do that if you're not there. Have you no shame? Now, come on! We're taking you home, hosing you down, and you're making us fish cakes! How can I be so selfish? Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Shell Crow, the Black Crows, Counting Crows, and the winner for the least annoying crow music is... Ah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bernice! I guess it means more to her than we do. You're the one who ignores your children! You're the one who puts your needs first! All you think about is me, me, me! Stop the music. Stop the music! What's happening to me? My God, what have I been doing? Keep pounding him, Bernice. Show him who's boss. Bernice! 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 No! Bernice! Bernice! There's another song I want to sing, and I want to dedicate it to my nephews. A child is like a flower. Before your eyes As the seasons pass Children grow so fast Soon they're reaching for the skies And you realize It's been home and hard all along Home and heart that make a family strong It's been home and hard all along after. Bernice, you sang about love, commitment, compassion. Are you insane? People aren't looking for tenderness in their angry girl rockers. They want blood. Y'all finished, Bernice. Wiped out. Through. In that case, let this be my swan song. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Stan has lost the janitor, tired from the crazy rock star, with the crazy rock star vomit. Jerzhnovu Mira Rosterpovich, Mirotsveniki Ebegra Ravel Ivaminski. Wait, that's brilliant. Never before have I heard anyone so passionately articulate the anger of today's modern day Eastern European janitors. Come with me, Stanislaus. I'm gonna make you a star. I want to apologize to you, kids. We're a family, and the truth is, I need you to take care of me as much as I need to take care of you. Now, what do you say we go home and return to our old, wonderfully boring lives? Yeah! Yeah! Excuse me. I'm the governor of our great state, and I have some very bad news. Congressman Kevick has had a fatal and incredibly ironic heart attack while engaging in an act of necrophilia. <laughs> the only guy I ever voted for. Democracy sucks. Bernice, while I've always been aware of your pain in the ass civic activism, you have now also become the embodiment of, quote, family values, unquote, period. Thank you for the kind words, but why are you telling me this? Bernice, I hereby appoint you Congresswoman. Me? A Congresswoman? It wasn't me that time. I swear.
being an orphan changes you. You're always alone. Yet you always know, deep down, that there's someone out there that you're connected to, you know? Hey, I mean, I got a life, a career, plans, one of those little satellite dishes, I'm doing fine. But even so, a failed marriage and some really crummy relationships left me wanting that bond, that, that sense of belonging only a family can give you. So I hired you. And now you tell me I not only have a family, but I'm a triplet? Hmm. I'm walking into the lives of a bunch of strangers. It's a very scary thing. Here's the address in L.A., but uh, there isn't much more. Now, uh, about my payment. Maybe we could grab some dinner and find a way to uh, reduce your fee? You know, whatever fate's got in store for me, I'm glad this is the last time I'll have to deal with a brainless, sleazy detective. gonna miss you, Aunt Bernice. You mean Aunt Congresswoman Bernice. Now, boys, even though I'll be in Washington a lot, I'll fly home as often as I can. But being a Congresswoman, five-hour plane flights, taking care of us, when are you gonna sleep? I'll do what Strom Thurmond does and catnap on the bathroom floor. Ordinarily, I'd never leave you boys, but this is a chance to do something for America, to make a difference. And I would never, ever abandon you for too long a time to the slimy clutches of... Duckman! I haven't even left yet, and you've already turned Ajax into your personal slave. Bernice, I am... Well, appalled is the only word for it. How dare you imply that I would treat my own son like chattel? You can expect a collect call from my attorneys. Slave. Ha! <laughs> That will be all, Kunta. Free at last. <laughs> Kids and their melodrama. And since I have my own office now, I'll be sure to take a reminder of each of my loved ones with me. The boys, corn-fed, Grandmama, Tony Little, Beatrice. Oh, this was just before I tried to choke you with my garter, remember? Yeah, you never forget your wedding day. Except the part when I got faced and started swinging that nine iron and broke the flower girl's nose. Oh, Beatrice, I miss you so much. <gasps> Look, it's her! It's really her! Who? Beatrice! What? Duckman, how could you desecrate my sister's memory for a tasteless major look gag? I swear I saw her! Their mother, your sister, my wife! There's only one logical explanation. The dead have come back to life, and she is their leader! I hope she doesn't eat flesh. I'm still using mine. Duckman, you sad sack of spore splash! You probably just saw my reflection in the window! Nuh-uh. You may have been twins, but Beatrice had a lovely, angelic glow. Well, you've got more of that whole, uh, evil Satan spawn elephant man kind of thing going. This time, that wasn't me venting my pancreas. Your taxi is here. Oh, my babies. Study hard, clean your rooms, and stay at least 20 feet from your father at all times. I'll see you in a couple of days. Give him hell, Aunt Bernice! Good luck in Congress! Until Newt, government has no place in my bedroom. Sadly, the speaker is Mr. Bad Touch. I can't even enjoy watching Bernice leave. I don't care what anyone says, I saw her! Beatrice is alive! She's alive! She's alive! Duckman, didn't you say the same thing about Cleopatra and Martha Washington? And Vicky Lawrence. But Vicky Lawrence isn't dead. He knows, my queen. He knows nothing. He is a fool. No one can stop us now. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, I told you to stop doing that! I'm telling you, Beatrice is back. And she's surprisingly spry, what with having been dead and all. Duckman, I know how happy she made you. But now she's gone. I miss her so much, I guess I made myself believe she was back. Goodbye, Beatrice. What's wrong? Versus bus. Always bet on the bus. Okay, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Alonzo, you just pretended to lift. Don't think I didn't notice. Oh my god! He looks really familiar. Oh well. Pupils fixed and dilated, trauma, concussions, theatrea, shock, abrasions, pressure. I've been under a lot since the change. Thanks for asking. The patient! Oh, 90 over 60. Bag him. Iffy neurals, known of to severe modeling. Start him on Osborne clamps, Lovenberg traction. CBC Chem 7, apply mesh compression watch for build up till ortho comes. Reno peptides protocol. Synovial drip, 10 cc's, dioxavilus, bolon, 5 peak glucose. Check for Evans Highland syndrome and Markowitzian occlusion. Start gastric lavage and spike that decidua capsularis. Stop! Is he gonna be all right? Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a fortune teller. Ma'am, please wait outside. The doctor may need to start slamming his fist on the patient's chest and yelling, Live, damn you, live. And that can be hard to watch. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Well, hello. I'm ecstatic to see you. Uh, hi. It's been, uh, uh too long? <laughs> Since this morning? I suppose that is a long time, if you're a soap bubble. Why are you here? Oh, my God, it's Duck Man. Dr. Ehrlich, this man is my friend and neighbor. I'll take over. Damn it, then. You're too close. It's not supposed to be personal. You're wrong, Craig. It's always supposed to be personal. As director of medical services, I'm ordering you to step aside. We must stem the pyloric stenosis or risk brain damage. Time is... crucial. Uh-oh. Paddles. Stat. And... Clear. Again. Will you come on already? Ma'am, I ask you to leave. Live, damn you. Live. Happy? I knew you could do it, you magnificent bastard. Damn it, Ben, your methods may be unorthodox, but you're a hell of a doctor. I think we all learned a little something about dedication today. I don't like him. No one does. He's pompous, arrogant, egotistical. And I wish we had a dozen just like him. Will he be all right? There's no telling when or if he'll regain consciousness, but we'll do everything we can. This way to your husband's room. Well, uh, thank you. I, I nurse. Uh, that's not his wife. His wife passed away. <gasps> then she'll have to leave. Family members only, you know. It's all right. She's his sister-in-law. I'll take her. Bernice, are you all right? My sister's dead. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm Bernice. Uh. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm all right. Yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> Bernice, 
There's something different about you. It's just so hard seeing my sweet brother-in-law so weak, so frail. How could I live without his sweet voice, his sunny smile, his kindness, or his shoulder to cry on? Bernice, perhaps you should check in for a few days, get a full workup. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm all right, but, uh, <coughs> I could use a little water. Be right back. Oh, what have I gotten myself into? I better leave before I screw up your life even more. Beatrice? <gasps> Beatrice. You're back. Beatrice. Is it possible that his belief that you're the reincarnation of his dead wife is what's keeping him alive? No, oh, that's preposterous. Must stay alive. Be with Beatrice. It's all that keeps me going. Uh, interesting theory. Even this partial awakening is a very hopeful sign. If he can stay alert through the night, he could recover fully. To help him, you must pretend to be Beatrice. It may sound like a weird sitcom plot contrivance, but it's the only way to save his life. But I can't. I, I... I'll arrange for you to stay round the clock. Beatrice, are you there? Yes, uh, yes, I, I am, uh, sweetie. Uh, uh, sweetie. Never called that before. Well, what did I used to call you? You know, my first name. No one knows it but you, and no one ever will. I hate it. Everyone made fun of it when I was a kid. Eric. Eric. Icky Eric. Eric Duckman is a nice, uh... So, uh, what does Bernice call you? Uh, tufted, turd-toned, tomain-tainted, tally-tugging. But I know she likes me. Well, what makes you so sure? Because you love me. Too much of you and Bernice for her not to love me, too. What do you remember most about me? Where your hair smells when I spill beer in it. Where you hold my head when I spew. Where you plug your ears with your fingers when I scream, Shake it, baby! It passes by. Oh, you never forget your honeymoon. <laughs> I could always make you laugh. I'm very lucky to have found a husband who loves me as much as you do. I love you, Beatrice. Beatrice loves you, too. No! No, no, I don't want to kiss Colonel Clink. Kiss LeBeau instead. Hey, shh, 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 it's okay. You're dreaming. I'm here. It's Bevertris. <sighs> Bevertris. I just heard Aunt Bernice. Dodd's room must be this way. Ajax, we just talked to Aunt Bernice in Washington. She can't be here. <clears throat> Boys, this is Dr. Stein. I can't permit you to come in. I... Oh, hi! <laughs> hi. Would you mind telling me who you are? <laughs> uh, long story. <laughs> This is so exciting! Coming home with a new aunt. And a sick father. Ajax, be careful carrying him. Dr. Stein said that he's still disoriented and semi-conscious. Okay, unconscious. Well, that's unusual, having a compost heap indoors. It's Dodd's bedroom. Ah. Well, since Bernice is out of town, would her room be a little less, oh, maggoty? And Beverly, how long do we have to pretend your mom? Dr. Stein said your father's full recovery depends on my doing whatever your mother would have done. Beatrice, my angel, could you... Oh, my God! Well, actually, that sounds, uh... No, 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 I couldn't. Uh, I, I mean, of course I will. But, dear, you should rest first. I can't, schnooky lumps. At least not till I see you strapped in. Thank God Bernice isn't here to see this. Oh, Aunt Bernice just arrived. We can introduce her to Beverly. Hey, we were going to the bathroom. This is more important. No, it isn't. I gotta go. So who's stopping you? Uh, 
Ajax, just the person I need. Yoix? I hear that less often than one might think. Look, your father asked me to, uh, do something your mother used to, uh, do. Play training the poodle? Well, yeah, but, uh, before becoming intimate with a man, I like to, uh, you know, not be his sister-in-law. Look, I I'm sure I'll fall asleep soon. I'll, I'll put on one of Bernice's nightgowns and act like I'll be with him, but you keep coming by and saying you need me for different things, okay? A-OK, -okay, Aunt Beverly. She's not here! Can I go now? Kitchen! Charles? Mambo? Ajax? Did you call my name? No. Did you see Aunt Bernice? No. <laughs> Duck man, in your delirium, you must have been packing to leave. Vicious. Do you still remember how you'd start off a night of passion by hitting me with a suitcase? I can't believe I'm getting in bed with a man and no Rianiti has changed hands. Hi. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm, uh, on fire. No, oh, yeah, honey, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, here, let me put you out. Sorority scream fest. Ooh, we haven't done that since Live Aid. Duck man, you turd tone tomate tainted tally tugger. What in the name of all that's unholy are you doing in my bed? Samsonite. Aunt Bernice. No, this is merely our new Aunt Beverly in our old Aunt Bernice's clothes, pretending to be our dead mom Beatrice. If I can keep it straight, you can. But I saw Aunt Bernice come in the house. Hallucination happens all the time. Let's go to the bathroom. Bernice might be here. Let's spread out and find her. No! Wait. I'm still trying to spread out. Um, radioactive mice? What? Uh, an evil scientist just turned all our mice into monsters that, um, can only be defeated by, uh... Someone in a nightgown. Whew. I am on today. Ajax, what are you talking about? <gasps> Come and show me. Nice hit, but it's better with luggage. Look at that. He is literally crawling on his hands and knees to have perverted sex with his dead wife. I'm deeply moved, yet sickened. Duckman, are you all right? Buttercup, Ilsa. You've come home! No, Duckman, no, I can't do this. I'm... Shy? Out of condoms? Conscious? Not Beatrice. Lammy poo have you lost your mind? Because I want you to know, even if I have you committed, I'll be willing to boink you on visiting days. It's a hallmark moment. But, Duckman, I have something to tell you, and uh, it could be a bit of a shock. I'm not your wife. She died a long time ago. Don't talk crazy. Of course you're alive. See? There you are. Huh? <sighs> who are you? She's Beatrice. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. She knows who she is, you moron. I'm your sister. No, you're not. There she is. Can you at least tell her quickly? Aunt Beverly is your other sister who got misplaced in the hospital, so she hired a detective to find you, but she accidentally injured dad, so she had to pretend to be mom. Thanks, can we please go? I buy the stuff about the sister in the hospital and the accident. But how would a detective be able to find people? Other sister? But if that's true, do you know what it means? Threesome? Triplets! <laughs> oh, after all these years, I can't believe I found you. After all these years, I can't believe you exist. But there's so much to tell. Do you know about Beatrice? Yes, uh, it's horrible. I know. And then after marrying Duckman, she died. Mudslide! It's okay now, Ajax. You've met the children? Oh, they're wonderful. Where are you staying? No, don't answer that. Right here. In fact, now that I'm a congresswoman and obligated to a $10,000 a plate prayer breakfast every morning, maybe you could help look after the kids till you get settled. Oh, Bernice, could I? You wouldn't mind? Oh, that'd be great. Oh, stop jumping. Um, meteorite. A meteorite just fell on me. 
Ajax, you don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Never mind. Oh. Uh, hi. Getting a snack? Uh, look, I, uh, I've been thinking about what you did. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, really. Sorry? You didn't even know me, and you stayed with me, talked with me, helped me recover. You saved my life. No, but I, but I felt so bad pretending to be Beatrice. It was wonderful. It was like she was alive again. I wish I could have seen you two together. Yeah, we were something. Uh, Beverly, I don't remember exactly what I talked about when I thought you were Beatrice. Did I say anything, you know, uh, private? No, not really. I, even if you did say something intimate or private, I, I've long since forgotten it. Whew. Well, good night, Beverly. Good night, Eric. <laughs> Clear. Buttercup, Ilse. Sorry, Corny, I thought you were Bernice. Hey, completely dry. I am in control. That's a good omen for tonight's big poker game. Did you bring the stuff? New clothes, aftershave, a comb, the hair doodad with the spikes. Oh. Duckman, was your calling and asking me to sneak these things in through the window part of a sleazy scheme? Yowza! Come here, I'll show you. Corny, if we're gonna have the game here tonight, this duck's gotta put on the dog to impress a lady. You're trying to impress Bernice? No, not Bernice. That girl. <laughs> Another identical sister? To suddenly discover the existence of a twin sibling. Can you imagine how Bernice feels? Probably like old cheese, but let's stay focused, okay? Now that Bernice is off being a congresswoman in our nation's capital, uh... Congressville, I've got a chance I haven't had since the seventh grade. To date fifth grade girls? Good guess, but no. I'm in perfect position for the lie to the substitute teacher gambit, which I mastered under the nom de sub, Michael Hunt. You were the best. But what does this have to do with Beverly? Ever since Bernice crawled out of her tar pit and into my life, I've been persona non testes. Now that she's gone, I will rise from the ashes like a Tucson. But first, I gotta lay down a heavy dusting of snow job on Mount Beverly. I'll just dazzle her with the famous Duckman charm. And that charm is famous where? You know, frankly, it's that attitude that's kept you from getting a spin-off. Now watch and learn. Ah, good morrow, gentle Vic. I think it was the poet Yeats who said, Morning has broken the first blackbird in the dead of night. Talk about blank verse. It's from the big book of psychotic nonsense. Ow. You I like. Hi, I'm Bev. I'm corn-fed. You wear it well. Hey, what's with William F. Duckley? William F. Duckley? Oh, oh, oh my, you are a treasure. <laughs> no, 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 my dear, this is how I always dress in the A of M. All just part of being the lord of the manor. Allowed to do whatever I want, whenever I want, anytime I want, all the time, always. <laughs> oh, by the way, tonight I'm having a few chums over for poker. But let's not mention it to Bernice. It would just break her heart if she couldn't be here to make Rice crispy Squares. <laughs> Funny thing. This is a note from Bernice saying you might try to con me into breaking her list of house rules. She calls it her Duckman Don'ts and Don'ts. 
<laughs> all right, all right. You can have your poker game here, okay? Duckman charm. Guess I'm every time. Well, said charm notwithstanding. Bernice's rules do seem a tad fascist, so let's just put the rules aside and I'll treat you like a responsible adult. I get treated like an adult. I get treated like an adult. I, <clears throat> I mean, uh, <clears throat> very well. All right, so who's playing in this big game? Only the coolest guy in the world, Mr. Bob Guccione. I guess he couldn't resist my relentless fawning and harassment because he's coming here tonight. So in addition to inviting all my friends, a.k.a. Corny, I've also got some big stars coming, so he'll see the kind of hoy I polloy with. This is the first time I've ever had company over the house, and I'm going to make it the best night of my life. Well, I hope it's Guccio-tastic. Yeah. Say... You're not going to start spewing anti-penthouse, anti-fun, feminerd yamma jamma, are you? No, no, not at all. If I make you give up penthouse, then to be consistent, I got to give up Playgirl, and uh, I am not doing that. No way. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. You know, I, I think I'll just go back to my room and um, unpack. Yeah, uh, do, do some unpacking. <laughs> hmm, for a second that looked like... Nah, can't be. See, I told you, there is something scary about that door. Trust me, pure evil is out there and we gotta hide! Corny and the boys, grab canned food and bottled water and get in the basement! Bev, get some candles and flashlights! And batteries, all we've got! Speaking of which, bring those playgirls, too. We may be forced to rely on you for crude amusement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. What the hell took you moron so long? You're all in here chatting? I'm out here playing with my yoga. Evil is only mild exaggeration. This is Mo Dorkin, Duckman's uncle and only living relative. Will someone please tell Babe here that I'm not deaf? Oh, I'm very sorry. We have been rude. I'm Bev, and as it happens, I'm the long-lost Oh, please, sister. go slower. I want to make this a whole chapter in my diary. I cannot believe you're here. I mean, you got big stones, Mo. I'll give you that. I hate you, and you hate me. And that system's been working out just fine. So don't take this the wrong way, you puck it up old hamster hole. But get lost! Still got away with words, huh? Well, I got a news flash, yutz. I'm here, and I ain't leaving. And what's more, you can't throw me out. Ah! You're crazy! Maybe, but I'm also dying. Yes, that's right, dying. And soon, Dog says my heart could go any time. And until then, you've got a sacred duty to take me in. Why? Because I'm family! Well, I'd love to stand around talking with you, but these last few minutes have reminded me why I never stand around talking with you. So goodbye, have a good death, and don't let the big red door hit you on your way into hell. Well, okay, if that's the way you want it, I understand. I'll just go somewhere else. Good. Nothing brightens a room like your absence. Perhaps in the afterlife I'll be reunited with Cousin George. Well, bye now. Uh, Mo, wait a sec. We're, uh... We're gonna have a little family conference in the kitchen. Cornfed here will keep you company until we get back. Reading the paper? No, I'm landing the space shuttle. Buckle up. Look at this. I'm talking to Trafe. Shh. We just redid our genealogy website thanks to Aunt Beverly. How many more surprise relatives do we have? I'm not so much let down as I am disappointed. He's always been a miserable old jerk, but now he's got me by the short and yellows and he knows it. Why? And who's Cousin George? He and my Uncle Ted never got along. When Ted was dying, he asked George to take him in, but George said no. So before he died, Ted put a curse on George and said George would meet certain doom. And? And he invested in the Go-Go's reunion tour. <sighs> and as if that wasn't bad enough, he got run over by the Go-Go's tour bus and killed! Dead! And since that fateful day, no one in my family dares to turn away a dying relative for fear of the curse of Ted. I'm stuck with Sir Kvetch a lot until he's safely six feet under. 
he is still your uncle, and you should view this as an opportunity to forge a bond between your past and your future. But what about the game? Oh, come on, what is he, 70, 80 years old? He'll be fast asleep by the time your game gets going. Actually, I do go to sleep early. Hey, were you eavesdropping? Don't kid yourself, these walls aren't exactly made of titanium. Boys, to your rooms. Whether I kill them or just cry like a woman, I don't want you to see it. So, what's your decision? Maybe if you pamper me, I'll fall asleep before it starts. So you gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do ya, Eric? <laughs> All right, you can stay. But you better fall asleep before that game. I'm yawning already. Now let's get down to the business at hand and foot. Waiting on me. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! This is a nightmare! No human body could produce a stench like this! You got that right. Before I put on my shoes, I soak my feet in pureed herring and manure just for you. Hurry! I feel my cuticles wilting. Lower. Lower! Ow! Ah! Ah! Ooh! Ah! That, that stupid brush is too rough for my most sensitive skin. We need something as soft as your hair. Well, this is the only brush we have. Maybe you didn't hear me. We need something as soft as your hair. No, you can't. I don't understand. What's not to understand? I would like you to rub soap in your hair and then use your head to scrub my tuchus. I'm still awake. Ah, Ajax, Mambo, Chance. Charles. Whatever. I'll dry off, then I'll be back for your rubdown. Maybe that'll put you to sleep. Oh, please, please, God, go to sleep. Hurry up, you moron. I'm stuck here with Tweedledum, Tweedledumber, and Tweedle what a friggin' moron. Huh? Now get lost, will ya? And take Stimpy with you. Going to sleep? You could give me a rub down, an enema, a Taiwanese tongue job. I'll still humiliate you tonight. No, no! Yes, yes, you are screwed. And these tums are expired. Ah! Ow! You're still in the john? Come on already! Ah! A dime. This stranger gave me a dime. This stranger gave me a dime. Sleepy yet? The runway is cleared for the arrival of Air Guccione. <laughs> My mother of all poker games is saved. Let the games begin. I'll get it. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. <laughs> Hello, Dopey, Snoozy, and Blobby. You didn't think I'd sleep through the big night, did you? How did you get out of the sack and the chains and the trunk and the... I ticked off a lot of people in my life. You know how many times I've been bagged, chained, and locked in a steamer trunk? At this point, I can escape blindfolded. Oh, you forgot to blindfold me. I'll get it. I hope that's Guccione. I have a lot to say to him. No! Hello, Rube. Hey, MC Cornee and Rapmaster D. I hope you brought plenty of cash, for the kitty must be fed. Duckman, what gives? You assured me that the great Joe Walsh would be in attendance and that I'd get a clear shot at signing him to Deaf Mute Records. 
No, don't worry, Joe will be here. I should hope so. Bernice, hello. You have suddenly dolled up since last we met. Oh, um, um, I'm Bernice's sister, Beverly. Oh, Rubricta Deaf Mute Records. Please forgive my confusion, Beverly. Your sister is a lovely girl. She has uh, very strong teeth and fetlocks. And who have we here? He's Uncle Moe's fine. Hey, Ruben, <laughs> let me fix you a drink. I'll take a drink. Hey, you know how to make a fruit cordial? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Joe! Ah, come in. Thanks for coming. Hey, my pleasure, my pleasure. Man, Duckman, you got to do something about your driveway. It's completely grown over with grass. Uh, Joe, that's not the driveway. You parked on Ben Stein's lawn. Oh, that must have been the guy who was yelling and jumping up and down. I, I, I get it now. He was yelling, you're on my lawn, you're on my lawn. I thought he was asking me to play all night long. Joe, I'm Mo Dorkin, Duckman's uncle. No, no, Mel, let someone else talk to Joe for a change. Joe, Rubricta, Deaf Mute Records. Oh, good. Joe, we'd love to have you join our family of artists. Because at Deaf Mute, we don't see you as numbers on a balance sheet. Rather, we see you as product to be merchandised. Must be Guccione. I'll get it. No, that's okay. I got it. Bless you, you vicious old blood clot. One insult, one ethnic slur, one clammy off-putting remark and I'll... And you'll what? Joe, let me get that. No, no, I got it. Twenty dollars for you. No, make it thirty. Here's thirty bucks. There you go. Wow, thanks, Mr. Geffen. Hey, is it my fault he's careless with his wallet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that must be Bob. Wow! Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Bob, welcome to my house. Uh, thanks, thanks. Say, who's that woman? My sister-in-law, Beverly. Beverly? Of course, Beverly. October 1989. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for inviting me. I don't ordinarily go to the homes of total strangers whom I know to be deranged or obsessive. But what can I say? I love poker. Bob Guccione, this is Rube Richter of Deaf Mute Records. Yo! This is my Uncle Mo. And Corn Fed, my partner. And this is Joe Walsh, the man with the magic fingers. Gentlemen, this is Bob Guccione, the man who helped make my fingers magic. Now that's an image I won't easily shake. <laughs> easily shake? <laughs> oh, God, that's marvelous. Woohoo! My! Well, enough talk. Let's play. This is gonna be a great night. What do I mean, gonna be? It's already a great night. Right, Bob? You having fun? It's great, right? Sure, great. Duckman, calm down. Hey, Mo, aren't you gonna play? No! No room! No room! Of course there's room. Here, Mo, you sit next to me. Why, thank you. Hey, how do you make a fruit cordial? Well, Hey, you're... I know. Let's forget about cards. We'll light up some cigars that we can put on our mouths so we can't talk, and we'll watch Triple X videos, huh? To be honest, the last thing I want to do after a hard day at the office is look at beautiful naked women. No, trust me, it'll be fun, much better than talking. You'll see. Hey, I don't want to be rude, but are we going to play cards or not? Duck man, Bob wants to play cards. Oh, oh, okay. I'll, 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 I'll deal. This is certainly awkward. Mo, how could you? Me? You did it yourself. Every time I think you can't get stupider, you always surprise me. I'm going to love staying here and torturing you. I only wish I didn't have to get cancer to do it. Hey, when you first got here, you said it was your heart. Now it's cancer? You've been lying this whole time? Oh, no, I am dying. I can explain. Uh-oh. Correction. This is awkward. Hurts. Must tell you. Come closer. 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 Ah! What a putz. Now I know what kind of man reads Playboy. Oh, 
Ajax, don't touch that. Dearly beloved, family, friends, paid mourners, we are here to bury my uncle, Mo Dorkin, who was taken from us by heart cancer, a disease that, I gotta admit, I had never heard of until I caused him to die from it. I will know better next time. Mo is not famous, or gifted, or smart, or decent, or kind. We are not here because we loved him. Mostly we are here because Bernice made us come. Also, we want to see with our own eyes that he is really dead. And will not jump out of the coffin or stick his hand up out of the ground like in Carrie when Amy Irving... Get on with it! Right. Usually, when a loved one cacks, we try to hold him here, in our hearts. Or, if you're from the Southern Hemisphere, here. But who's gonna miss Mo? Not me. Let's face it, he was an irritating, obnoxious, arrogant, selfish. Hey, wait. That's what it said under my high school yearbook photo. I'm... I'm just like Mo. And if I don't clean up my act, I'll end up just like Mo. Lying in a cheap balsa wood casket, unmissed and... and unloved. Duckman, you're forgetting something. You have a family and friends who will always love you. No matter how big a jerk you are. So, bottom line me, Bev. I don't have to try to be nicer? Well, I mean, you don't have to, but it's certainly... Fantastic. All right, let's uh, wrap this up and plant this bastard. And what better way than with a song I wrote in Mo's honor? Sung by Mr. Joe Walsh. Give it up! Darling, thank you so much for coming. I wouldn't miss tonight for the world. It should be an unforgettable evening. Oh, I do hope you're right. I would be mortified if anything went awry. 
Dear Auntie, I'm here, your loyal Hans is here, the wealthiest people in the city are here. What could possibly go wrong? We're plumbers, we're plumbers, we're plumber rummer rummers, we're plumber rummer rummers, and a plumbing we will go. We're plumbers. We're well, you gotta admit, Cornelicious, we landed on our feet. Getting thrown out of our office for non-payment of rent, phone, and utilities was pretty humiliating. Whereas now we've got a job where we spend hours each day with our hands in human feces. And more. Thanks to my clever ruse putting us first in the phone book, someone actually called. Couldn't we have been first with only one A? Scusi, the careful driver always signals. <laughs> Humana, humana, ha, wah. If those puppies are for sale, I want the one with the brown nose. <laughs> Ooh, I love that gag. As do we all. Ah, the butler. Can I call you the butt? <laughs> Another classic. I'd hate to choose between them. I am Hans. May I help you, gentlemen? You betcha, Heinz. We're from A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A one plumbing. You're from A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A one plumbing. Yes, we're from A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A one plumbing. Ah. Are these the men from A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A one plumbing? Yes, they say they're from A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A but you must be discreet. Hans, show these men to the toilet. Hey, look! The perfect place to hide body parts you've had in your underwear drawer since that lawn mowing accident in 92. If uh, you had to worry about that sort of thing. You are to stay away from this case. It contains a priceless diamond recently obtained from the South African mines at Charon. The Sharon Stone? Oh, I'd love to get my hands on that. Well, you won't. You won't go near it, get it? Don't dent the down, Hansela. Isn't there some kind of legend about the Sharon? Legend? I don't think so. Oh, I suppose you could find some peasant who would say the diamond is cursed, that its very presence can unleash the ghastly spirits of its former owners, all of whom died in unspeakable terror and agony, vowing to return to Earth to torment any who dare to possess it. Now we got a plot. The diamond will be unveiled at exactly 9 p.m. But for you, gentlemen, I have a different unveiling in mind. Do you? Are you certain you're experts in the sanitary arts? Yeah, sure. Now run along and bottle something. Everything's under control. What the hell do we do now? Luckily, when I was dating Ivana Trump last spring, she paid for me to take a course in home repair. I did her wainscoting at Mar-a-Lago. Would you get your mind out of the gutter? We got a job to do. Say, uh, what's this doohickey? It's the lever you use for flushing. Flushing? Ah! Somebody call a plumber! The water's going in a circle! You better go to the basement, find the control marked water, and turn it off. No! Oh! Oh! Lama coming through. Move aside. Big stinking plumbing emergency. Move aside there. Out of my way. Emergency plumber. Stand aside. <laughs> Serves you right for being there. That's why they give you people special parking spaces. Now, where would I find... Hello. How's about we sneak a peek at the family jewel? Move aside. Plumber doing something he was specifically told not to do. Out of my way. Oh, gone.
vanished. Kaput! Disappearmente! Absenta la Mucci! Zipparo! This is terrible. We have to tell Mrs. Worthington Ford before anybody else finds out. Overside! Ironically genuine this time emergency! Watch where you're going! We're looking for Mrs. Worthington Ford. I am Rodney Ford Taurus. What do you wish with my aunt? I'm sorry, it's confidential. Something plunger related? Something the Sharon Stone has been stolen related? No! Oh, Egad! No one must learn about this, do you hear me? No one! But what about Mrs. Worthington? Yeah. Ford. My aunt is in the frailest of health. The shock could kill her. We can't call the police either. We must investigate on our own. Actually, we're not only plumbers, we're detectives. And we're not even plumbers. Oh! Excellent. If you find the priceless diamond, I'll give you a reward of $25. Oh, yeah, right. Like, you've got $25. We'll take the assignment. So, how do we start? Carefully. If the thief finds out, we know our lives could be in danger. <gasps> what? I thought I saw a ghost. Maybe the curse is working. It seemed like the eyes in that painting looked at me. The danger's real enough. Let's not imagine it where it doesn't exist. Come on. Thieves could be anywhere. Must stay alert. All my senses heightened. Alive. Ninja-like. Uh, Doug, man. Except the soles of the feet. Every ninja's weakness. So, did you check outside? No footprints in the soft earth under the windows, and no tire tracks in the gravel driveway. Whoever stole the Sharon Stone is still here. We have to check out the guests. Okay, when's checkout time? Will you cut it out? Remember, everyone is a suspect, so be careful. If we blow our cover, the crooks might come after us. Big deal. They might get tough with us. Let them. They might kill us. See ya. Say, are you a man or a mouse? I'm more of a flea. Flea? If you say so. <laughs> Just yanking you. Okay, let's go. Not in these coveralls. We have to get evening clothes. But where? You, Society Plumus! I am Count Andre von Steiner und this is Baron Fritz von Brauer. No butler matters as it all. This is an outrage. Look, Jews! Huh? huh? <laughs> now you wear cartoony boxer shorts, you're begging to have your clothes stolen. Shall we? The thief may still have the diamond. Check everyone, but no cavity searches. We've got to get the Sharon Stone back in that case before Mrs. Worthington Ford unveils it. Now spread out. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Charmed. How's it hanging? <laughs> my goodness, what an appetite. Oh, yes, well... Uh... Hold over from my days in the military. Eh, what? Infantry? No, we were adults. Whatever are you doing in my purse? Please to be forgiving, madam, but was for your own safety. Was merely checking bag for, uh, wolves. Wolf? I mean, wolves? Ridiculous. Maybe it's ridiculous in U of S, but in my country is eat or be eaten. Wolves is number one pest. Must always look all over for wolves, for is always many wolves. Wolves to right, wolves to left, wolves in the mid... Yes, yes, all right. A lot of wolves. Not just a lot! You're not listening! It's thousands of wolves everywhere! At the drop of a hat, you will find wolf in hat! We are lousy with them! We're talking major wolves here! Yes, all, all right, unhand me! Phew. So I grabbed the savage, and I'll tell you, Count, I gave him a good caning, I did. <laughs> well, listen, I'd love to hear more about that war you were in. Boar? You certainly are. So, gotta go. 
So I sneak with gun, looking for wolves. I check every corner of forest for hidden wolves. I check every hiding place, check twice, and I check again, and again! And then I went home. Kinda petered out at the end, huh? Yeah. Excuse me for a moment, my little Peter Packet. Keep the motor running till I get back. We've got a problem. Look, if we don't do something, she's gonna make with the unveiling. Remember last year's Duckman Detective Agency employee talent competition? Sure do. We should have won, but that damn Uranus just becomes Liza. Attention! It is finally time to meet tonight's real guest of honor. One of the most exquisite treasures. <gasps> what the? <laughs> I wouldn't say exquisite, but who am I to argue? Thank you, folks. Thank you for coming tonight to honor a lovely lady, Mrs. Worthington Ford. <laughs> Before she unveils the diamond, I'd like to do a love song just for her. You screwed up, huh? Me? Exactly what are you doing? I'm playing the drums. Boy, the way you do it, that ain't play, that's work. Oh, yeah? I know how to play Tiffany. You mean timpani. You play what you want, I'll play, play what, what I, I want. want. Hey, get over here. Ah, oh, you ha <laughs> hop -a We're trying to do a love song and you're banging away. What's all that banging got to do with love? Never mind. <laughs> Maybe we should just sing. I thought you'd never ask. Hit it! Like rifles and skeet, cement and concrete, like trick and treat, buck and wheat, Dun and Bradstreet, that's us. Buddy, that's us. Like apples and jacks, like caddies and shacks, like hay and stacks and hunching backs and turtles and wax, that's us. Buddy, that's us. We always go together, it's just how we belong. No matter what the weather, right or wrong, we get along just singing our song. Like fiddle and sticks, like mocha and mix, like ice and picks and lip and sticks and contra and dicks, that's us. Buddy, that's us. Like Gaza and Strip, potato and chip, like Roach and Clip, Q and Tip, Skinny and Dip, that's us. Buddy, that's us, it really is. Like Witch and Hazel, Post and Nasal, Back and Sliding, Cock and Fighting, High and Mighty, Gal and Friday, Egg and Timer, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer? Yeah. That's, that's us. us. That's right, baby, that's, that's us, it really is. That's us. Buddy, that's us! Do <laughs> you? <gasps> Look, it's those society plumbers. They've stolen the Sharon Stone. Now, we're detectives working for Rodney. Tell them, Rodney. I've never seen these men in my life. They must have stolen the diamond. That's a lie! I wouldn't steal that diamond! I wouldn't even touch it, because I'd be too afraid of the, uh, uh... Oh, what do you call it? The curse of the stone. Yes, thank you very... Well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! Go send the debutant back in! Trapped inside the mansion because of some so-called curse? This is preposterous! Worthington Ford Manor harbors many a mystery, one of which is why you lied about hiring Duckman and me. Oh, that was simply a lark, a prank, a spree. He's such a scamp. Come, Hunts, let's see if there's some other way out. 
Good luck. Don't let the ghost tell his bite. <sighs> Corny, I'm scared. These old mansions are full of secret passageways. Maybe if we look around. You can play detective all you want, Cornbone. Me? I'm digging a tunnel the size of Rosie O'Donnell's lower intestine. <laughs> Say, I haven't felt a metal mama since I had to strap one on during my honeymoon. I... Corny? Corny? Yes? Cornfed! <laughs> I thought you morphed into some sort of futuristic flesh-craving metal man. Duckman, have you been sticking the caulking gun up your nose again? No, I'm serious! I just turned around like this, and when I turned back, you were... <gasps> Corny? You in there? May I help you? Listen to that little fellow scream. For the last time, there are no such things as curses. There are, however, such things as emergency exits. Perhaps if we split up. I don't know about you, but this place gives me a first-class case of the creeps with a side order of heebie-jeebies. I'm telling you, Corn Aptitude, this place is evil, vile. It's worse than Pernice's dirty clothes hamper itself. <laughs> Shh! I'm scared. Hold my hand. Your hand's so soft. Have you been moisturizing? Say, you're not Rodney. You're not Cornfed. I'm over here. I'm over here. And I'm right here. <laughs> from the timber of its whale, I'd say it's a phantasm from the netherworld. What do you think, Duckman? I think I made it in my pants. But you're not wearing any. Ew. Return the Sharon Stone to its rightful place, or all will die. What? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Sure he does. He does, you know. Boy, does he ever. I do not! In any case, the curse does not exist. Ghosts do not exist. <laughs> <gasps> Rodney, how could you? How couldn't I? When those society plumbers showed up, I knew they'd make the perfect patsies for a crime we'd already committed. But now I've put it back so everything can return to normal, and I'll simply throw in a fresh ascot and prepare for a rousing weekend of lawn croquet. I guess there's no more need for this. Thanks for the confession. You mean to tell me that you were behind everything? I knew when you put Duckman in charge of the diamond's disappearance that you were either stupid, insane, or criminal. So while I pretended to go outside to search the property, I snuck back in and rigged up my equipment. But Connectomy, where'd you come up with all those weird Ray Harry Hamlin type gizmos? To be honest, I didn't think our new, uh, vocation would be the most lucrative career path. So I planned to supplement my income by designing fun houses for amusement parks. Everything you saw tonight will be on display starting in June at Six Flags Over Laughlin. And the reason you didn't let me in on the secret was that you needed my hysterical weeping and screaming and soiling myself to make the haunting seem more authentic, right? Uh, yeah. Don't roll the credits yet. Excellent work, Hunts. Shut up. Hands up. If Moira and all of you is the only way to get the Sharon Stone, then that's the price I'll have to pay. I've worked and slaved in this house for too long to watch it all go down the drain. Down the drain? Uh... I just remembered. What? That you left the water running? Yes. Oh. My. God. Thank you, gentlemen. While you may be dreadful detectives, you are extraordinary plumbers. For the return of my diamond, it is only right that you receive a reward. What would you say to a delicious box of donuts? Donuts? donuts.
At least there's one thing we can be grateful for. There's no such thing as ghosts. <laughs> it's a perfect crime. What the hell are you staring at? Okay, Homer, it's just, what the hell are you staring at, okay? Take 38. What the hell are you looking at? I mean, staring. Don't! Okay, good. Good, but could we try one where you say, what the hell are you staring at? Take... Uh, 39. 39. What the hell are you looking at? Don't! Staring. At. Close. Very close. Okay, show 4457, take 40. What the hell are you looking at? Don't! Staring. Terrific! <laughs> I want to thank you all for this touching farewell dinner. Although tomorrow I begin my first vacation in 11 years, I won't be squandering it on mindless hedonism. Instead, I'll explore those spiritual, mystical places of which I've always dreamt. The Pyramids of Cheops, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Outlet Mall on Route 5. It's 40% off all suede jackets. I just wish that, well, Duckman were here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, Duckman. I'll call you every day and send postcards and snow globes. Will you get the hell out of here already? I'm crying because they closed my favorite strip club, the Happy Fire Bowl. I knew that. My weekend, my month, my millennium ruined. Where else am I supposed to scope out scantily clad slinky sex pots? Fashion magazines. This is great! It's nothing but porno for women, for men! And look, no sores, no bruises, no lumps. These model babes are totally different than the dregs I'm used to. I gotta find a way to break into this fashion scam, preferably through its well-appointed cleavage. Sandflex salinated sea nymphs. Good evening. I am Victor Deman. Not exactly what I had in mind, but he does have a nice touch. And this is my summer collection. First off, Janini. Hey! Howdy doody, Ice Princess! <gasps> I know it's just Monopoly money, but trust me, you can always pawn them off on some ignorant third world cabin. Oh. Yeah, groundbreaking choreography. Whoa! Next we have Katrina. Ooh. What do you say, Beanpole? Looks like you could use some grocery money. And now for my latest, greatest discovery. It is my pleasure to introduce Miss Ebony Sabre. Yes!
Uh, excuse me, miss. I, I'm not usually like this. Uh, polite uh, women, I mean, but I must confess, you are one charming negress. Back off, Jeff. You idiot. Now, Janini. <gasps> not on my watch, sister girl. <laughs> How's about I whisk you off to this little romantic restaurant I know? <laughs> it's all you can eat, not worse, mate. Not now, chump. <gasps> Nothing to worry about. It's just a flesh wound. Now it's your turn to die. Honey child, don't count your chitlins until they're boiled. <gasps> Nothing to worry about. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> it's because I'm black, ain't it? Uh, actually, it's because there are two dead people and you're holding a gun. Names Ebony Sable, private investigator. Victor DeMann was my client and hired me to protect him. I ain't never lost a client before. Yeah, the first dozen or so are always the hardest. But this is your lucky day. I, too, am one of those private investigators. Uh, uh, whatever. I can help. You? How's a sorry little bag of baby bones like you gonna help me? Uh, braid your hair? Hand rinse your hot pants? Describe the guy who ordered Victor DeMann's murder? Say what? Come on, sucker. We heading to the cop shop. So I can hand rinse your hot pants? And his eyes were more deep set. Yes, yes, like that. His nose a little more crooked. Wait, yes, that's it. That's him. That's exactly his disgusting, pus-filled, pug-ugly mug. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You want to know something? You are one jive turkey. Actually, uh, turkeys have that little waddle thing. Ow! Don't you go giving me lip. Punk, you ain't nothing except some worthless cracker, and I don't never want to see your butt ugly butt again. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Man, you get into situations. <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh man, the Shevitz! That was the pink Cadillac of butt whippings! To think of the years I've wasted with corn fed searching for glues and crust bags and evidence when I could have been out on the street kicking some serious booty! Let me study under you, a great badass detective one. Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Just know the only reason I'm keeping you around here is to hang your scrawny little butt flapping in the breeze. You're gonna be the bait that leads me to Victor's killer just by playing the fool. And Ebony, baby, I play for keeps. I guess the endless prosperity of the Reagan Bush era missed the spot. Yeah, it never got to be morning in this America. Now stay close. I gotta protect your little bony behind till we put Victor's killer on ice. You think I'm still in danger? Yep. You shouldn't stick your nose in where it don't belong, baby. Now you're gonna die. I'm not gonna die. If I was gonna die, my life be flashing before my eyes. Duckman. Duckman. <gasps> you missed all the fun. Flawless victory. Finish him! No. I need you alive to give your boss a message. Tell him I'm gonna find him, and when I do, it's gonna rain pain and hail hurt. Rain, pain, hail, hurt. But we still don't know who his boss is. Why didn't you ask him? That fool's just a fool, fool. If you want to find out what's really real, there's one man you got to see. Yo, get your air horn here. Step right up, folks. 
damn air horn barkers. Let just one in, and there goes the neighborhood. Eh, uh, <laughs> color me quirky, but I, I get the feeling I'm not welcome. Man, we need what this guy's got. Name's Tonzi, and he is one crazy dude. If there's any word on the street, Tonzi knows. You'll be okay, long as you make like a pink packet. Stay sweet and low. Well, look who's here. How you doing, Ebony, my strong, beautiful black sister? I ain't seen you in... What the f***? Yeah. How'd this vanilla sneak into my Sunday? It's okay, Tanzi. He's with me. Oh, Ebony, girl. That's yeah. weak. Why are you playing in the snow when you know it's the cold that's gonna keep you warm? Mm-hmm. I'll bet there's a lot of women warming themselves on that cold. What's all this about? The revolution. The time for talk is past. For our people to survive, we must kill every white mother <coughs> in the world. That's right, you heard me, mother <coughs> But you can relax for now, because no matter what you think, I ain't no mother <coughs> savage. That's why I'm sending each and every white mother <coughs> a letter giving him or her 30 days to commit suicide. Let them settle their affairs and <coughs> before they die, you know, like who gets their mother <coughs> Volvos and their Celine Dion records and shit. <coughs> Last thing I need is a lot of mother dying in test state, you know, leaving me to hassles and sh <laughs> Hello. Thanks for calling 30 days, mother <laughs> This is Tonzi. What's so mother <laughs> hard to understand, mother <laughs> Did you get the letter? Well, did you read the letter? Well, like it says, you got 30 days to kill yourself. What don't you get? And then what? Then I come down there myself and put your honky ass in the mother <laughs> dead letter office. You get me now? Yo, Pillsbury, <laughs> you got something to say, you funny-looking mother No, 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 I, I sure d don't, Fonzie. Fonzie, do you see me hitting any mother <laughs> jukeboxes? Do you see mother <laughs> Chachi or Potsy or Ralph mother <laughs> mouth anywhere? My name is Tonzi, bitch, and don't you forget it. So shut the <laughs> up, mother <laughs> My shit for the mother <laughs> who mother <laughs> know the who the <laughs> mother <laughs> and You want to watch your language? These horns are driving me crazy. Sorry. Damn honkies. Enough shop talk. What do you need? Information. One of my clients was murdered. Victor Demand. I should have known you was working for Demand. Word is the hit came from Wilhelm Vanderklerk. Some of Vanderklerk's hired muscle hangs out at the Blues Club on Belmont. The Black Note. Damn! Can't white people read? You get that. We'll go. Stay strong, baby. Hello? No, a doctor's note will not help. The black note doesn't open for a couple of hours. We'll just wait here. That was pretty brave of you back there, going for that big dude. Ah, oh, that was pure adrenaline. Sometime tomorrow, I'll realize what I did and start crying like a little girl. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh. You know what I like about you? The way you say whatever you think, no matter how stupid it is. You're definitely your own man. Thanks. You know what I like about you? Yeah, my legs. <laughs> now that's not true. I also like that you have really big breasts. And I like that I can see almost all of them every time you lean forward. And I like your tight round butt. And I don't know if it's that lipstick or what, but your mouth is making me really hot. And your legs are, too. Well... Then I know the reward I'm going to give you for saving my life. Stop! Or at least wait 30 seconds. 15 if she helps. Oh. 
Oh, no. They grabbed Ebony. I've got to save her life. I've got to protect my partner. I've got to see if she can put both ankles behind her head. Don't worry, Ebony. Your super bad lover man is on his way. to me. Yo, bro! How you fro? Dino my! What's happening, my proud black brother? I hope you's down, my man, because I am up for being down. It's cool. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. Check your booty at the door, you dig? What? To your mammy. Oi. Wow, what a fantastic place. It resonates with the mingled tears and laughter of a hundred generations. I'd hang out here myself if they had naked dwarf races. Okay, Tanzi said Vanderklerk's goons hung out here. One of them must have grabbed her. You some kind of funked up thrill seeker? Or are you just stupid? My friend, I've spent a lifetime trying to answer that question. Wait a minute. What would Ebony do in a situation like this? She'd get what she needed through sheer force of will. All right, listen, Leroy Brown. Listen up, all of you! I am your worst nightmare! A duck with an attitude! I know you hate me, though I can't figure out why. If we hadn't freed you people back in World War II, you'd all be speaking Japanese now! All I know is there's a girl missing. Some hip cat named Vanderklerk's behind it, and you better give me the 5551212, or you'll be waiting to exhale while I dry out your raisins in the sun. Aye. <laughs> I.E. It's for you. I told you people a thousand times. I'm not switching long-distance carriers. Hello, Mr. Duckman. My name is Wilhelm van der Klerk, and you're right. I have your girlfriend. Oh, please. Please, don't punch her! Ebony Sable. Oh, no, I, I like her, too. I've kidnapped your family and Sable and your family. You fiend! You better not lay a hand on Ebony or Bev or the boys. Do what you want with the loudmouth lotus. Drop me here is just an expression! Mm -hmm. Day players. No need to struggle. No need to worry. After all, that man is coming to rescue you. If you, you'll excuse me, I must visit another guest. By the way, in case you hadn't guessed, your employer, Victor Daman, and I were allies until he became frightened by the breathtaking audacity of my incredible plan. What plan? No time for that now. All right, just kill me. Kill you? No, Ebony, to kill a woman like you would be such a waste. Much better to humiliate you, take you out of action. Oh, my lord, my sweet lord, not... Jerry Curl! Oh. <laughs> Duck Man! How'd you get in here? Secret tunnel. Previous owner. <laughs> Ow! Damn you, Sable. You have more lives than a cat. A black cat. And I'm crossing your path. That's the guy at the fashion show. Thanks, baby. That's two I owe you. But you better step aside. Ebony's hungry. Blood's on the menu, and you're a vegetarian. Nuh-uh, my proud black queen. From here on out, or in, I've never been quite sure which, I'm gonna be your white shadow. Duck, you the man. Ebony, she's super bad. I'm a diversion! I'm a diversion! Ooh. I'm going for Vanderklerk. Melt away, snowflakes. This ain't gonna be pretty. You seem to forget we're suburban white girls. That means we know how to clean house. <laughs> we took Tai Chi at the learning annex. Okay, sisters, let's mess with the misters.
Thunderclock! Thunderclock! And now I will return to my native land. A place where white people exploit blacks. A land ruled by intolerance and brutality and fear. My God, what kind of sick and twisted country do you come from? America. America. Oh, seems a bit harsh. And now, to eliminate the fitness. Ah! Table. It's just you and me now, boy. Well, there's me, too, but if this is some kind of a fight to the death thing, I can wait downstairs. Sable, you're worth 20 of my men. You're only in it for the money. Why not come with me? You just don't get it, do you, Van der Klerk? I ain't coming with you, because you be bad. Bad? In the sense of cool? No, in the sense of scum-sucking slug. Damn, I hate slang. Um, he's that way? Oh. How the hell do you rock this thing? It's over, Duckman. I don't say this to a lot of guys, but thanks. You did me solid, Jack. Yeah. Listen, Ebony, uh, no offense, but what is it with all the 70s stuff? I mean... The hair, the clothes, the language. How come you do all that? White writers. Well, D-Man, I guess this is it. Wait, Ebony, don't go. You gotta stay here. I want to hear more about the black experience. I want to learn how we can live together in peace and harmony. And most important of all, I want another chance to unfasten your bra. Sorry, Duckman. I've got to move on. I'll miss you. But in your heart, you know we're different. I'm a lone wolf. You're a cowardly, sexist moron. We almost had something, didn't we, babe? Yeah, almost. Goodbye, duck man. Stay cool. I got no other way to be. Funny looking mother. Please, Mr. Desmond, my baseball team's the only thing that's ever meant anything to me. I'll find some way to pay back your loan. All I need is time. As your evil banker, it delights me to inform you that you have no time. Your medical records, I took them off the internet. <gasps> I've only got eight minutes to live? Oh, sorry, my laser printer's been acting up again. That should be a three. <gasps> Since you'll be dead and therefore unable to pay off your loan in 30 short days, I, Simon Desmond, will foreclose on your team, knock down your stadium, and thus begin construction of Desmond Acres, a lovely gated community for senior citizens loosely based on Andersonville. Three minutes to leave my AAA ball club to someone who truly cares about the sport. But who? <laughs> Ah, baseball. The single greatest sport of all time. Next to bullfighting and rollerball, that is. Or at least it used to be. 
Now it's ruined, bastardized, son of a bitcherized. And you know who's to blame? The fat cat owners. It's not about the game anymore. It's all about the money and the merchandising. Baseball is really about the sun on your back and the feel of the ball hitting your glove and the smell of the grass and the laughter and cheering of children. <laughs> You're a real baseball fan, just the kind of guy I'm looking for. <laughs> Quick, give me a pen. Shell tip or roller point? Doesn't matter. Blue or black ink? Dying. Hmm. I, Gene Vuck, hereby will to you my lifetime subscription of Groin Pull Monthly, a hat made out of cheese, and my AAA baseball team, the Dixie Cups. I don't believe it. It's too good to be true. I've inherited the one thing that every red-blooded American male dreams about. Oh, and a baseball team, too. Room for one more. Excuse me. All right. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, excuse me. Congratulations on your bequest, sir. My card. Pity the team isn't a more lucrative venture. In fact, you're losing money faster than a Tom Arnold kissing booth. This is baseball, Flauntleroy. Who gives a rat's rump about money? Gosh, I only wish more people could use rodent anatomy metaphors to such witty effect. But since there are no posteriors in the seats, I'd postulate these contests will only be enjoyed posthumously by posterity. <laughs> Perhaps if we instituted a series of promotional nights, attendance would increase... <clears throat> promotional nights? I don't think that's a very good idea. Well, sure it is. We could give away snakes and M80s and nail guns to the kids. Wait, did you say promotional nights? That's a marvelous idea. You'd best get started right away. Careful, Dugman. Given your history of wildly inappropriate schemes and type A personality traits, you could be heading for disaster. Spare me the setup, Cornopolis. This is one team owner with nothing but good, solid, sensible ideas. A very pleasant good evening, sports fans. Chick Hearn here, inexplicably, announcing AAA baseball, for heaven's sakes. But before we begin tonight's matchup, let's chat with the Dixie Cup's flamboyant new owner, and of course I'm speaking about Duckman. How you doing, Vin? Ah, uh, great. Thanks for asking. Duckman, one of the ways you've tried to increase Dixie Cup's attendance has been with a series of promotional nights. First there was Weasels on the Field Night. <laughs> and then there was Free Cinder Blocks Night. Dixie Cups rule. Dixie Cups rock. Please don't crush my head with your free cinder block. By the way, where'd you get all those cinder blocks? Uh. Rosalind, someone stole our cinder blocks. Mm, nowhere. And who will ever forget Louisiana Mud Bog Hell Night? <laughs> Yeah, that was one of my faves too, Scooter. But I've saved the best for last. For in addition to Glass Shard Visor Night, tonight's also Blow Up the Field Night! Five, four, three, two, Thanks for coming. Come see us again. Tell all your friends. Bad news, Duckman. Due to the brutality of your promotions, the entire team just walked off the job. Sissies! Pee Wee Reese could have been blown up a hundred times a season and he'd still come back for more. Don't worry, Corner. I'll have us a new improved team faster than you can say something really short. Damn Honduran androids. Next time I buy American. Duckman, I've just crunched the numbers. After factoring in the cost of your promotion, salaries, emergency exploratory surgery for the players, and animal cruelty fines, we've lost an average of $14,000 a week. At this rate, we'll be out of business in... Two hours?! What is it with these fans? I've given them everything they want! Except for baseball. Duckman, you seem to be getting further away from the simple purity and heartfelt innocence of the game. No use talking anymore, because I've already stopped listening. I have a brilliant idea! Give me that! 
All I have to do is give baseball fans actual baseball players who can actually play something that resembles actual baseball. Simplify, simplify, simplify. The row? And hit and catch and run, too. Corny, this is the new Dixie Cups roster. Oh. My. God. Ah, splendid! You must be the world-famous supermodels. Veronizia, Scylla, Dina, Cloche, Tang, Tantalea, Simonia, Fabiolera, and... Is it Susan? It's Susan. Whatever. Ladies, welcome to Dixie Cups Park. Bless you all for coming. I'm the illustrious Duckman, owner-operator of the Dixie Cups. Hi. Now, where's the child? Child? Oh. Uh, we got a call from the guy at the Grant to Wish Foundation. He said that there was a terminally ill child whose last wish was to see us play baseball. There's nothing we wouldn't do for sick children. Well, <laughs> funny story. That was a lie. Oh, oh man. Loser. You. Ah, the old fake dying kid line. I knew it. First James Caan, now this guy. Oh, well. No, wait! Remember, there's two things that every kid loves. Baseball and high fashion. And kids are always getting one terminal disease or another, so it's practically a sure thing that some kid someday is going to have a dying wish to see nine gorgeous supermodels play a little baseball. And when that time comes, what if you're busy or stuck in traffic? The little tight could croak before you get there. But if you play now, I'll videotape you, and that way you don't have to schlep back here. You see? See how completely reasonable and logical it is. I don't know about this guy. Me neither. But playing baseball would give us the perfect opportunity to reinvent ourselves. People always dismiss supermodels as just savvy businesswomen. They forget that we have bodies, too. This could be our chance to prove it. Mr. Duckman, let's play ball. Hi, everybody. Chick Hearn here, and this is the first game for the Cup's new lineup. Nine world-famous supermodels, none of whom have ever played ball before. What could Duckman have been thinking? Okay, I know what he was thinking. Yeah, uh, playmates. Uh, yeah, playboys. Play. Yeah, go do whatever you want, you savage cuties. Hi. Good luck. Strike four, strike five. Face it, guy, you'll never hit it. You're out. I don't know where Duckman could be, ladies. I apologize. Hello? Duckman, where are you? Up in the owner's box. Why? Practice was scheduled for 9 o'clock. It's almost 10.30. Cornucopia, you're losing sight of the big picture. Tickets are selling like hotcakes in stacks. Now I have to license merchandise, arrange cross promotions, meet with the people doing the CD-ROM, and most important, audition call girls for the new Dixie Cups VIP club. I'm trying to run a baseball team. Don't bother me with baseball problems. You're Joe Jock. You lead the practice. <laughs> He, uh, is very busy. Doesn't Duckman care if we improve our baseball skills? You're not supposed to win games just because you're attractive or sexy or curvaceous or Brobdignagian. You're supposed to win because you're good. We'll never be good. Come on, it's back to the runway for us. Hey, wait. Don't talk like that. Remember, you're not just models. You're supermodels. That means you can do anything you put your minds to. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Here, I'll show you. Let's start with the fundamentals.
For tonight's big game, I took the liberty of hiring a third base coach, Duckman Meat Baseball connoisseur and conservative pundit George Will. Go ahead, George, show him your stuff. I got some Japanese investors up in the box. I'm trying to set up a tour for the girls. Have them play some of the local kimonos. Your showbiz, of course, but mucho yen. Don't you want to say a few words to the players before the game? Ah, whatever. Ah, uh, gals, if you could just uh, bring it in here for a second, form a semicircle or a pentagram or whatever it is you people do. And I want you to know that it really doesn't matter if you win or lose. Uh, oh, wait, of course it matters. If you win, I stand to make a fortune. And that's what this game's all about. So go out and win, you spunky little firebrands. Make daddy rich. Hello, ladies. Hi. Who are you? You might say I'm a fortune teller. And my prediction for tonight's game is that you will lose. You're crazy, mister. We're the Dixie Cups. We're winners. Oh, that would be a shame. It could be hazardous to the health of these. Oh, kitties. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I, would I? Ha! <laughs> I simply can't afford to let you win. Throw the game or the pussycats get it. fans, I'm Chick Hearn, and this has got to be a day Winesburg fans thought they would never see. The Cups are just one game away from the pennant, and that game is today against the Victorville Tomahawks. Hey, look who's here, the man himself. So, DM, got any predictions? Well, Bob, you can never predict how a game will go, and we've worked too hard for too long to get cocky, but I gotta say, my girls are ready to focus on fundamentals, do what it takes, and give 100%, and we have to, because the Tomahawks came to play, but we are as ready as we'll ever be. Well said. What do you have planned for the off-season? There is no off-season. That's right, folks. Even during the winter, when there are no games here, you will still be able to pay admission, come in, buy some Dixie Dogs for the wife or some tall, frosty beer for the kids, maybe even make it a Dixie Cups Christmas. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got just enough time before the game to, uh, tie my cob, if you know what I mean. Actually, I don't, but that's okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your Dixie Cups. Look how excited they are! You actually think they look excited? Of course! Every woman I've ever made love to looked just like that beforehand. Get a load of Dina. She is really turned on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise as Ajax sings our national anthem? <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming <gasps> or the land of the free and the Thank you. Bravo! And that's the half. Folks, there's just one word for the way the Cups are playing today, and I can't say it on radio. As Duckman takes his team into the locker room, wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall? You know, it's possible that I took too much for granted, so I never explained to you the idea behind today's little exercise. We're supposed to win! We're supposed to spend the next three months in a hotel suite signing 500 baseballs a day! We're supposed to be spitting up limited edition numbered Dixie Cups used jaw! We're supposed to be making Brob Ding Nagy and some of money! You girls are playing like a bunch of, well, girls! Let me tell you a story about a fella I went to school with. 
A boy named George Gibb. George couldn't run very fast, or throw very far, or hit, or catch. He was too small and weak. So, we beat the crap out of him. Sometimes three, four times a day. He enlisted to go to Grenada, determined to show he was man enough. Instead, he lost both his legs in a car accident on the way home from the recruiter's office. And if you don't win today, I swear to you, I will go to George Gibbs's home and beat that legless little bastard to a pulp. So go out there and win just one for the Gibber. Whoa, whoa, ho, ho, ho! Hey! Hi! Ah! What is it? What's got you so horny? It's not that, it's... it's... Some guy threatened to butcher a box full of kittens if we didn't throw the game. Adorable kittens! Ah, so you're saying if we kill the kittens, you won't have anything on us. Um, I'm sure what Duckman meant to say is that there is an alternative plan that's a tad less monstrous. Ice cream! Got you Tootsie Frutzy ice cream! How about you? You want a nice Tootsie Frutzy ice cream? I don't want Tootsie. I, I mean, no! I got lots of flavors. I got raspberry, I got strawberry, I got... What's it, the other berry? Poison? No, it's a safe to eat. Hey, that's a good, eh? Huh? I make a joke. Just go away. Leave me alone. If you say so. Hey, Desmond! What's the matter? Tongue got your cats? Wow! Curse you, supermodels! Curse you! <laughs> Come on, girls! We've got a game to win! Mr. Desmond, I have something for you. The entire mortgage paid in full from tonight's receipts. This is one ballpark you're not getting. But I deliberately didn't tell you about the mortgage, so you default. How did you find out? Where else? The internet. I regularly browse alt-villains' greedy schemes. Ooh, my prophet could have been Brobding Nagian. Oh, for heaven's sake. Brobding Nagian. Adjective of immense or enormous size or quantity. Boy, Desmond, I feel sorry for you. All you see is money. Baseball is really about the sun on your back, and the feel of the ball hitting your glove, and the smell of the grass, and the laughter and cheering of children. Who cares about money? I said the same thing. Seems like a million years ago. I became no better than the people I despise. I forgot that this is supposed to be a game. It's supposed to be simple and pure. It's supposed to be fun. Thank goodness for supermodels. They remind us of what's really important. And so, I officially give the Dixie Cups to you, the people of Winesburg, because you, the fans, are this team. Just promise you'll always protect it from people like me. Perhaps today, we plant a deceit for a new beginning. The next day, the citizens of Winesburg sold the Dixie Cups to Simon Desmond and the Amalcon Media and Munitions Corporation for $120 million. Damn Honduran androids. sake. So horny. So, 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 so horny. I didn't get to peel off my head.
Yo, slop maestress, you call this untreated sewage breakfast? No, you bloated sack of partially defatted meat byproducts! I call it dinner! You were asleep all day! It just so happens I had to spend last night in a filthy airless crawl space at Quickie Bob's Motel poking a camera through a hole in case a certain nymphomaniac chose that night to violate her wedding vows. You think that's easy? I took my life in my hands, among other things. You mean you actually found a client stupid enough to pay you? It's always about money, isn't it? A guy's not allowed to have a hobby. Couldn't we have this idiotic conversation some other time, say, at your cremation? We have to get Grandma ready for her birthday photo. How old is the birthday girl this year? Maybe we should cut her in half and count the rings. <laughs> <laughs> Trigorin. Bernice, did Mama ever talk to you about her life? Her life? Well, you know, I didn't grow up with her, so I don't know anything about what she was like before we were born. Actually, neither do I. I know she was born in Russia, but she was never very clear about dates. She didn't talk much about it. I got the feeling it was too painful. Oh, I wish I could find out. I wonder all sorts of things. Was she beautiful? Was she rich? Was she happy? Where was her home? My home was in Russia, where I was the eldest daughter of the wealthiest landowner in all of Splensk. There were those who would say I was not unpleasant to look at. On the first day of each month, Father would send me to the village to collect rent from the serfs. My dear Sofia Longnamovich, the high incidence of superstition, illiteracy, and sarcasm in our village has caused sales to plummet at our humble Bukski Nukski. Therefore, dear Sofia, we cannot pay you that which we owe. Fear not, Maris and Sergei Maris Sergeyevich. I will tell my father that bandits stole your rent money from me on the way home. Bless you, Sofia! Flafovich, Uranuskaya! How are you this fine Russian morning? Not so good, Miss Sofia. We have no money for you today, as we have given it all to the Siberia Club, which is dedicated to saving the Arctic ice flows from exploitation by the International Ice Cube Cartel. As always a worthy cause, friends, Flafovich and Uranuskaya. I will tell my father that a giant silver egret flew off with your rent money. Bless you, Miss Sofia. Must always look over Petrov. For there's always many wolves, wolves to ride. Whenever I was within ten meters of Petrov, my face would grow hot and flushed, my throat became a desert, and my body parts would throb in a savage, pulsating Cossack rhythm. Sofia. How delightful to see you. I am tutoring the local peasants so that we may all speak fluent English in Act 2. Oh, friend Petrov, you are the kindest, noblest army officer in all of Russia. Why not finish the sentence? Petrov is the noblest in Russia, while I, Trigorin, am but a lowly stable boy living in a rat-infested hovel among the foul-tasting dung of the horses of noblemen. Petrov is handsome and brave, while I, Trigorin, take not my pleasure from leaving women, but am forced to satisfy my manful urges in the company of goats and chickens. Yes, have your fun, my friends. Laugh and make merry upon I, Trigorin, the lonely, impoverished, despised, smelly, and perverted stable boy. Problem with the rent again, Trigorin? Interesting fact. My money was stolen not five minutes ago by a bunch of bandits and a giant silver egret. I'd be happy to work out the trade. Oh, thank you, but I don't need any dung. We're at war. We're at war. War is a terrible thing, young Ejatsky. But when it comes, all good men must take up arms. I, Petro, vow to fight these unnamed bastards, whoever they may be, with every drop of blood that flows in my veins. And I, Trigorn, vow to stay here to protect your wives and daughters while you are being slaughtered like dogs on the frozen battlefields. Oh, I am forgetting. Is a letter for you, Trigorin. You're drafted. Ah! Ski. Hey, I'm about to have my head cut off by Huns. What does the army care of my prostates the size of a pierogi? They don't. That's just something I enjoy doing in a non-sexual sort of way. Now, to determine whether you are medically fit to serve, please answer the following questions. Have you ever had dry mouth? Yes. Dry cough? Yes. Dry heaves? Yes. Pyorrhea? Yes. Diarrhea? Yes. Irritated bowels? Yes. Vaginitis? Had or given? Had. Ah, yes. 
Congratulations. You're in the Imperial Army now. I'd like to ride that surf. I enjoy long walks and the tundra, icy bubble baths, and strong men who know how to treat a slightly overweight woman. Oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> Grace up the riding club, honey. It's your stable man. Trigorin, great to see you. Have you any news of Petrov? Basically, he's dead. They haven't made a positive ID. They're still going through dental records and hangnails, body parts, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, there, 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 there. Hmm. Uh, Sophia, would you mind crying just a little harder and maybe a little to the left? Oh, yes. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh yes. Cry for me, baby. Cry for me. <laughs> He's the dead one. I am Trigorin, the one with a pulse. Petrov, dead. Trigorin, alive. Why do you have so much trouble grasping this simple concept? And then, one night, something happened. Something so strange and terrible that it could have come out of a melodramatic Russian novel. Fire! Fire! Wake up! Wake up! Cossacks have set fire to the house, but I have saved your family, including, as of now, you. And may I point out that it is I, Trigorn, not the dead Petrov, who is saving you, because it is... Can we go? Yeah, I was pretty much done. <laughs> okay, so, everyone safe and accounted for? Beautiful. Now, just so we're all on the same page, let's recap what happened tonight. Your home is now totally... what? Destroyed. Good. And your family's money is... Gone. Excellent. Meaning that from this day forward, you will have no choice but to come with Trigorin to... America? Because I... Trigorin. Not the dead. Petrov. Saved your family's... Lives. I accept your spontaneous expression of gratitude with humility and smugness. Russia? Was that all Mama said? There were some other things, but it was so long ago. She didn't talk much about Dad. I think he saved her life somehow, and that's when they emigrated. He saved her life? But did she say anything about falling in love with him? No, but she married him. She came to America with him. She must have loved him. So greatly did I miss my dear Petrov that I thought my very soul would shatter. But I had pledged myself to Trigorin, and I vowed to make myself love him. Hey, Mama! Dig those full ripe childbearing hips. We finally arrived in New York City, but it was far different than I had imagined. And the air, I had never inhaled such a foul mixture of horse droppings and human filth. Wow, smells just like home. After walking the streets for hours, Trigorin finally found us a place to live. Magnificent! What a palace! And it's practically dung free! Okay, I'm Bush. Let's hit the floor. We'll have to do this in shifts. Who wants the fire escape? So, uh, wifey, what say we uh, celebrate coming to America? Why, I am more or less willing to discharge my matrimonial duties. Perhaps now is not the perfect moment. What, are you kidding? What better time? Uh, perhaps when my brothers and sisters and mother and father are not asleep on either side of us? Honey, we have been here 18 hours. It's time you drop your old world morals into the Euro trash can. Just snuggle up close. Good. Now, what is that? 
Oh, no, it's your dad's leg. <laughs> Excuse me, Fyodor. Hello? No, no, it's not morning yet. Would you mind rolling over just a pinch? Your daughter and I are going to play hide the blinks. Thanks, you're a dear. Trigorin! Trigorin! I am grateful for the kindness you have shown my family, saving our lives, bringing us to this new land. Yet as I lay on the floor last night with each of my limbs touching either another person or a wall, I found my optimism about America growing dimmer. <gasps> so, Phil, I am shocked. USA is number one, my girl! And until they get enough evidence to deport me, I'm gonna believe that right here in America. Even the most ridiculous dream of the most ridiculous loser is absolutely guaranteed to come true. Void where prohibited, your mileage may vary. Past performance, no guarantee of future return. Not affiliated with the America School of Broadcasting member FDIC. Oh, Trigorin, you're such a cockeyed idealist! So what is your American dream? I bet you have one somewhere inside your secret place. You found my secret place? Your heart! Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, ever since I was a young, stable toddler, I dreamt of one day opening my own business. <laughs> But as these Americans say, it takes money to make money, and I still can't find those damn money trees. As an alternative, perhaps we could work. Work? Perhaps since we hope for our lives here to be sweet, we could open a candy store. Candy store? You mean a place where two consenting adults, one of whom wears very little clothing, performs for a nominal handling charge any sex act except a kiss full on the lips? No, I mean a store that sells candy. Oh, okay. That could work too. I can't believe it! We really did it! Um, yes, we did it in the sense of me spending the last five years cleaning fish while you entertained yourself with shadow puppets. Look, a dog! Arf! <laughs> oh, got to go. What? Yeah, wish I could stick around, but I've got lots of important uh, stuff to do. Don't worry, I'll be back at six. Seven tops. Nine, the very latest, but definitely no later than ten ish. Moscow time. Trigorin, wait! I need you! If only you did, Sophia. Who is it? Who goes there? <laughs> Trigorin, you've been in the rumbles again! <coughs> Come, let's go to bed. Bet you'd rather be saying that to your beloved Petrov? Oh, is that the cause of your erratic behavior? It is true, Petrov once meant something to me, but I am your wife now, and it is to you to whom I am devoted to. It is you who I honor and respect, and if you look at it a certain way, love. Love? From that day forward, Trigorin was a changed man. Soon we went from selling penny candies to serving $2 steaks and $3 martinis. Is this country great or what? We got money, friends, money, success, money, money, and money. I told you everything was gonna work out in the new world. And money! Mm -hmm. I tell yourself, looking back at my humble beginnings as a lonely, impoverished, despised, smelly, and perverted stable boy, I would never have believed this moment could come. A moment when I am completely fulfilled, utterly happy, when I feel like nothing could possibly ever, ever, ever go wrong. <laughs> Why do I give them these setups? My manners. Petrov, old friend, let me look at you. Hmm, something different about you. Well, I... No, nope, don't tell me, I can guess. Let's see. Put on a little weight? Wearing contacts? Trimmed your nasal hairs? Had your skin bleached? I lost a leg in the war. Uh, you shaved your beard! Petrov, we, we thought you were... Taller? Dead. Oh, natural mistake. Oh, Petrov, how I've missed... <clears throat> That is, uh, <clears throat> I suspect that certain individuals who are concerned about your well-being during your prolonged absence. 
Certain individuals, having traveled aimlessly around the world for many lost years, may take comfort in those cryptic sentiments. So, Petra, Bobby, thanks for dropping by. Really, give us a call when you land on your feet. Or should I say foot? Bye-bye. Petrov, wait. Trigorin, we have plenty of room. Couldn't Petrov stay with us? With us? You'll know how I like to parade around the house in my underwear. That is, if I wore any. Kind Sophia, I will not accept charity. If I stay here, I must earn my keep. Thanks, but we already have a doorstep. He could bust tables, wash dirty dishes, couldn't you, Petrov? With one foot tied behind my back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, old friend. If it's the meaning work you want, the meaning work you shall have. You can start by licking these ashtrays clean. Many tense weeks passed. Perhaps it was foolish to hope that a man as insecure as Torgorin would allow Petrov back into my life. But sometimes hope is all a woman has. You and Trigorin, you must be happy. Yes, we must. Petrov, please, understand. When I saw you again after so many years, I harbored thoughts unworthy of a married woman. You will always be important to me. But it is to my husband to whom I must be forever true to. Why don't you just lick his nipples already? Trigorin! I can't take it anymore, and I won't! Tell me, Petrov, when you lie with my wife, do you laugh at me? Did you tell her what a cowardly, sniveling Nancy boy I am? How I spent the war hidden in a foxhole reading girly magazines? How I set fire to her father's house and staged her rescue just so she'd be forever indebted to me? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no. Feeling a lot of tension right now. How could you? How could you do such a thing? Because I loved you. Because I wanted you. And... and... I don't know. Fire kind of turns me on. Wait! Wait! I remember something! Yes, it's all coming back to me. I was there the night of the fire. I had come home to find my beloved Sophia. Don't worry, Sophia. I'll save you, and your family, and your possessions. Unless, of course, this fire is for insurance purposes. <laughs> Must free self to save Sophia. <laughs> is someone there? Please help me! The fire! The accident! I must have blocked it all out because I believed you loved Trigorin! You! You have ruined my life! You have cost me my leg! And my favorite one, too! Uh, yeah, but come on, think of the money you saved on shoelaces! Most unforgivably, you have betrayed the woman I love. I, Petrov, challenge you to a duel to the death! Well? Since you're a leg short, I accept. Pick the place. It must be somewhere isolated, devoid of human society. Lakehurst, New Jersey. Jersey? Great! How am I supposed to get to Jersey? West Side Highway to George Washington. Oh, you'd like me to get caught in that traffic, wouldn't you? I'm taking the Pulaski Skyway! You could grab the ferry to Staten Island, take the outer bridge crossing, and be there in an hour. You're right! And I'd save on tolls! Petrov, you are the finest marksman in all of Splinsk. This is not a duel, it is murder. No, my love. It is honor. Whatever he has done, he has done for me. Please, please don't kill him. He has made his own fate. One, two, two three, three, four, four five. five. Well, Mrs. Tregoran, you appear to be what we board-certified obstetricians refer to as pregnant. Tregoran's baby. Babies. Three, to be exact. What we medical professionals often refer to as triplets. 
Trigorin and Petra were gone. And yet, from that senseless tragedy came such beauty. My babies. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Mama. Mama! I just wish... I wish I could have known her. And you. We have time, Beverly. You're home now. Yeah. We're all home. My home was in Russia, where I was the eldest daughter of the wealthiest landowner in all of Splensk. There were those who would say I was not unpleasant to look at. You just lick his nipples already! But you gotta turn this town upside down to find a good Hungarian amateur bondage video. <laughs> Let's party! Say, bud, where's the blushing groom to be? <laughs> where's good old, uh, uh, Stevie? I'm Stevie. Stevie boy! Steve Arino, the Steve Meister. Long time no see. Still can't believe you're gonna go through with it, man. <laughs> I mean, why subsidize NASA when you can get the tang for free, eh? Huh? Huh? But since you're about to be bald and chained till death do you part, promise me you won't hold back anything tonight. I know I won't. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Ah, quit your Josh and Steve Adore. It's us, Greg and Skeeter. What's up? Oh, tell me you forgot that time we were partying with, uh, uh, you know, that guy. Frank? The Frankster, yeah. You know, at that, uh, you know, place. The shore? The shore. Partying with Frankie at the shore. Man, was we faced. But not his face as we're gonna get tonight. Right, Chief? <laughs> we're in luck. He threw up on me. In frat boy language, that means we're in. Duckman, sanitation issues aside, don't you feel guilty trying to pass yourself off as that young man's friend just so we can crash his bachelor party? Yeah, I'm so ashamed I think I'll go crying my free beer! Duck man. Duck man. This is serious. I have to get you to a doctor immediately. Or I could just let you lie there and leer at co-eds. <sighs> Mr. Duckman, if the body is a temple, then you've committed countless acts of desecration. I'll need a urine sample. With pleasure. Always glad to show off my sharpshooting skills. No problem. How ironic that urination, once such a source of pleasure for you, has now become a cavalcade of pain. Surely it isn't that difficult. Surely it is, Sawbones. I just passed a stone bigger than Bill Wyman. Ouch. Hmm. I've never cut my finger on a urine sample before. Mr. Duckman, it is my expert medical opinion that you need a new kidney. Oh, is that all? Whew. As long as it's an internal organ. Luckily, my dearest friend, Cornfed, will be only too happy to donate his. I'm sorry, but in order for the transplant to work, the organ must come from a blood relative. I knew there was a reason I had children. Ooh. 
Okay, Doc. Name your poison. Ajax, Charles, Mono. Unfortunately, it appears that Charles and Mambo share one kidney between them, while Ajax was born without any, though, intriguingly, he does have three livers and an ovary. What are you trying to tell me, Doc? That you must find another relative who can donate a kidney. Okay, I'll get it from Dad. But your father's been dead and buried for years. Well, you're half right. Dad got caught up in the cryogenics craze of the 70s, so after he cacked, I had him frozen. Here? It was all I could afford after squandering his life savings on 8-tracks. Ah, Leo Sayer. You still make me feel like dancing. Terry Duke Tetzloff! At your service. And if you're dying, Mr. Duckman, this is your lucky day. We have a special on frozen heads, a mere $29.95. Plus, we'll throw in a pint of our marble fudge swirl as a way of saying, we know you have your choice in head freezing establishments, and we want to thank you for choosing us. Spare me the snake oil, Lugosi. I'm here to claim my dad. I hope you remembered. No ticky, no body. One dad sickle coming right up. Dad, there you are, looking just like after you read my report cards. I see you now, and I remember the times we had, the moments we shared, tender words, a hug, the touch of your hand on mine. And I know those moments aren't really gone. They'll live forever in my mind and in my heart. So, can I get the stiff to go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh? That's medical ease for SOL. What gives? There's a problem with the kidney. Uh, what is it, Doc? Cancer? Cirrhosis? Freezer burn? Judging from the test results, it did not come from your biological father. You mean the man who raised me wasn't my real father? Well, then who was? I have no idea, but if you can't get his kidney, you will die. But that's impossible! How will I find him? He may not even be alive! Don't I have any other options? Just one. Freeze your head. Get your head frozen right here. So you see, boys, there's always a chance your father could find his father and persuade him to donate his kidney. But if not, at least you can take comfort in the fact that he'll be going to a better, happier place. Well, soon my body will be ripped open, my chest hollowed out, my eyelids sewn shut. I'll get buried in dirt, and worms will devour my flesh. <laughs> What's with him? Okay, stop your blubbering. Here's the good news. Behold your inheritance. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I could keep stuff in it. Very touching, Ajax, but it's what's inside the box. Yeah. Actually, you're all a bit young to see, touch, and or be infected by anything in here. But when you grow up and get grown-up fetishes of your own, maybe this stuff will make you smile. And think of your old man. Because even if I'm not here, I'll always be with you. Wherever a guy breaks into Jillian Anderson's trailer to steal her dress shields, I'll be there. Wherever there's a cop beating up a guy because he climbed Carol Alt's trellis, I'll be there. Wherever a guy gets so horny that even the thought of Al Gore's daughters lights up his Yule log, I'll be there. But I worry about you, boys, because I know what it's like to have your dad die. Twice. Now, you don't know that yet. Your father may be alive. Ah, Beverly. Sad, sweet, naive, apparently not wearing a bra, Beverly. My father has to be dead, or he would have tried to contact me. I know it's painful to consider, Duckman, but you have to have hope. If only there were a way to locate him. There is, on the Microsoft Network. Of course! The Microsoft Network, harnessing the power of the Internet to enrich our lives. How come you know so much about the Microsoft Network? Bill Gates just moved in next door. Oh, look at me. I've got a riding mower. I'm Mr. High Tech. Wee, 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 wee. We've got something. We just logged on to www.findlostdad.com and voila! He writes! This is the hand-punched extra hole in the Bible Belt! Looks like this is the place. Whoa! See, I told you. 
That's the kind of joint a guy with my superior genetic makeup ends up in. Ah, uh, Darkman, that's not it. That is. Great. We're in dog patch. It's not without a certain unpretentious rustic charm. Probably made the cover of better homes and hovels. It's funny, Corny. I've been thinking about this moment since I first found out my dad might be alive. I was pretty angry about what he did. Still, now that I'm here, I, I mean, well, maybe he had his reasons. I bet if we'd met earlier, we, we would have been friends. But now, I'm sure I won't have anything in common with him. What the hell are you staring at? R r r Red Crocker? Oh, you'd like me to tell you, wouldn't you? Well, that'd just make it all so easy for you, wouldn't it? Get inside before I splatter your innards all over my compost heap. <laughs> Got to check you for microphones. Why are you using a dead otter? Just never you mind. Yep, you're clean. Sit down. Now talk. Who sent you? No, 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 nobody. You see, Mr. Crocker? Red? Dad? Hmm? It's me, Eric Duckman, your long lost son. Son? <laughs> you Freemasons must believe I'm soft in the head. What do you think I am, some gullible namby pamby John Bircher? Well, I ain't. What I am is smart. I'm the onlyest one who's caught onto the satanic conspiracy of Jew slash Christian slash Hindu slash Muslim bankers who wants to take away our assault weapons, fluoridate our toothpaste, deprive us of our unalienable rights, and put us to work as slave labor on them trendy gazpacho farms. Hmm. Come on! All your stock raving, drooling, idiot madman would believe that that <laughs> wasn't the pure gospel truth! Ah, they're all in on it. The UN, the CIA, Kinkos. That's why I form my own government. The Crocker Republic. Population one. Dad, uh, sorry to interrupt your paranoid babbling, but I have a problem I kind of need your help with. Now get this straight, kid. I don't believe for one blue-eyed, razor-cut minute that I'm related to a moldy mouth flea bag like you. Okay, but let's say, just for the sake of argument, that I was your son and I, I was gonna die. Do you think maybe you would mind, maybe, letting me have your kid? Kid me on an operating table so you can drill one of them trilateral commission chips into my brain? Ha! Anyway, just so happens I lost my spare in the Great Postal Service War in 1993. Now, I'm giving you ten seconds to get. Ten! You almost finished? You bet you can't ask me. I'm just shaking the dew off the... Lily. I'm sorry this didn't work out, Duckman. I suggest we hurry home and get you on the organ waiting list. You might have a chance if there are no detoxing celebrities or sports stars ahead of you. I'm not going anywhere. Am I crazy or did you just say you were staying, meaning you're crazy? I want to spend my last days trying to get to know my father. Duckman, please don't take this the wrong way, but your father is a bona fide, over-the-top, paranoid, schizophrenic lunatic with delusions of grandeur. The truth is, Cooney, I, I see myself in him. We both have strong convictions. We both speak our minds. We're both willing to forego hygiene in pursuit of higher ideals. What choice do I have, old friend? I must be with him. I just wish there was something I could do to find a way into his heart. <coughs> Dad, I got you a present. <laughs> but the owner of the all-night handgun and assault weapon shop made me promise you'd only use it in self-defense. Like, uh, against a really mean rabbit or something. Sonny boy. <clears throat> More squirrels, son? No thanks, Dad. I'm stuffed. 
So is a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. So, to get back to your lesson, the Sierra Club, also known as the Bolshevik Party USA, talks about saving owls. But what they really mean is... Confiscating assault rifles? Planned Parenthood talks about giving away condoms. But what they really mean is... Manipulating the weather to control corn futures? Hold on there. You're picking up on the subtleties of the Crockerland geopolitics a tad too fast. You sure you ain't just a parrot and things back at me to win my trust? Dad, while I may not agree with every detail of your philosophy, for instance, I'm still a bit hazy on why the Dutch are poisoning our pools with chlorine, I certainly share your healthy contempt for a society that prizes rational discussion about common problems over incoherent ranting about imaginary evils. You're a good boy, boy. Dad, why did you leave Mom? Well, it ain't easy for me to talk about. I guess it all started the day I realized our government was a sham. And the more I looked into things, the more I realized this country had gotten too corrupt to save. And I better start one of my own. Even if I had to ignore all my responsibilities as a citizen and a husband and a father to do it. Wow. You're an old-fashioned salt-of-the-earth idealist, just like I used to be. Dad, we've missed so much time together, and I, I don't have a lot left. Do you think I could stay? You really want to. Oh, you've got to be willing to give up the trappings of so-called civilization. Memorize the sacred covenant. Kill, skin, farm animals. I'd do all that. I've done some of it. Of course, some of them were more pets than farm animals. Listen, Duck Man, I don't need a lot to live on. A few hundred gallons of lentil soup, a, a missile launcher, some pamphlets with pictures of third world types in a bullseye. But there's one thing I've been missing, someone to pass it on to. So that when I die, this little island of hatred and ignorance won't disappear forever. And if you wasn't going to die first, I'd give it to you. Dad, now that we're together, I know that nothing could possibly, possibly ever go wrong. This is Lieutenant Colonel Cornfed Pig of the National Guard. That's what I get for letting them have weekends off. Throw down your weapons and come out with your hands up. Or, alternatively, come out and then throw down your weapons. Conversely, you might throw them down as you're coming out. As an interesting variation, you could... All right! <laughs> now, one of these sieges last so long. Red Crocker, you are under arrest for illegal possession of firearms, holding Duckman hostage and burning your own flesh without a license. I'm not being held hostage. I'm staying here with my dad. That's my boy. This is Congresswoman Bernice, newly appointed member of the Select Subcommittee for giving pushy freshmen something to do that gets them out of Washington, here to remind you that the Constitution dictates we treat these heavily armed pathological criminals with dignity and respect. Duckman's in there. Open fire! Dad, we're outnumbered, outgunned, though just barely. I'm gonna die, but there's no reason for you to. Don't worry, son. There's no problem a little mortar fire can't cure. We're so alike. I have that on a sampler. But in this case, I think we should give ourselves up. Bernice! Beverly! Duckman's in there with his father. Perhaps he'd come out if he was asked to by his loved ones. Unfortunately, there's no one here but his family. Dad! Please come out! Tell him you love him. Dad, uh, our active distaste for you 
and sometimes mitigated by pity. May I say something? Certainly, Ajax. Doth, where did you leave the toilet paper? In the roller thing next to the toilet! Thanks, Doth. Duckman, if you won't listen to your family, perhaps you'll listen to the godfather of Soul, the hardest working man in show business. Soul brother number one. Please, please jump on the good foot himself, James Brown. Good God, Duckman! Uh, give yourself up! Duckman! Uh, give yourself up! Oh, man! Duckman! Uh, give yourself up! Duckman! Uh, give yourself up! Hey! Makes a strong case, but I don't know. Dad, what are you doing? Look, kid, I like you, but after careful assessment of our situation, I've rethought our position. Our eggs is fried. You're running out on me, aren't you? Just like you did before I was born. Duck man, do I look like somebody who could have a family? I met your mother, she got pregnant, I couldn't handle it. End of story. No! Not end of story! I may not have long to live, but I'm not letting you desert me twice! You think you're so brave, standing up to dangers that don't exist, but anything comes along you gotta make a real sacrifice for, like a family, and you're out of there! Okay, maybe we're alike in some ways, maybe we're both angry, maybe we're both misfits, but you're a wacko! I wanted to get to know you, to understand you, to figure out where I came from, but now that I do know you, I wish I'd never met you! You're not an idealist, you're just a coward! We're going in! Wait. I think it's Duckman. He's got a hanky! Fire! Duckman, where's your father? He left. Again. Package for Mr. Duckman. Dear son, here's a present to make up for the birthdays I missed. May you have many, many more. <gasps> a kidney! Turns out I had a spare all along. Took it out with my Swiss Army knife. Had to do it myself because all them doctors is Maoists. <laughs> He's got a point. Oh, I'm too old to change, son. But I'm glad I got to know you a little. Maybe we'll see each other again someday. Maybe, Dad. Maybe. You're a good boy, boy.
hide. I haven't felt tension like that since I got stuck in an elevator with Pat Buchanan and RuPaul. What's wrong? Ah, the whole clan's gone Ku Klux Cuckoo. Bev keeps pressuring us to be more like a happy family, completely upsetting the delicately balanced dysfunctions it took us years to perfect. All this togetherness is killing us. Oh, great. Corny, reach back and get me the pedestrian remains kit. Okay, got your bone saw, got your lie, gloves, shovel, top, couple of wet naps. Yep, all here. Duckman, this is a human being we're talking about. Oh, fine, mister. Every time I hit someone, I report it. Be that way. Whoa, -ho -ho. these are remains to be seen. Angelic face, flaxen hair, muscular thighs, pouty lips, and a pair of leaf and lawn sized synth sacks. What a corpus delectable! Just imagining a chalk outline makes my gantry gush, makes my beef jerky, makes my pita boil, makes my Roger mud, makes. Ah, uh, Duck Man, I hate to break it to you, but she's oh. not dead. Can't the denial, Corny, especially if it interferes with my wordplay. Remember that she and her tawny buttocks have gone to a better place. So now let's get her to an even better place, my basement. I want to get started while she's still poseable. Oh. See? She is alive. Well, makes it more difficult. But what worth doing isn't. My ankle. I think it's starting to swell. There's a lot of that going around. Coming through. Heads up. Injured nymphette incoming. Ice pack and Polaroid. Stat. Wow. She's so cute. Can we keep her, please? I'll train her and teach her to do tricks and to fetch and go for walks, and I'll take good care of her. I really will. I promise. Oh, you poor thing. Are you hurt? What happened? It was my fault, really. I skated into the car. Please don't make a fuss. You're all so sweet. I'm Tammy. Tammy Margulies. Is your family new to the neighborhood? I lost my family three years ago, in our cabin in Vermont. Vermont, Kansas, or Vermont, Missouri? It's not my fault I go to a public school. Vermont, New England. We decided to have a real old-fashioned Christmas, doing all the traditional things. Then on Christmas Eve, my dad surprised us by renting a sleigh. We took it out caroling, we laughed and sang. Oh, it was perfect. Until something scared the horses. One reared, another tried to buck his rigging, and then the sled turned over. I was thrown clear, but I looked up and I saw my parents and brothers screaming, trampled to death. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells. Sorry, this. Just something about a sleigh. After the accident, I bounced from one foster home to another. And when I was 18, I packed everything I owned and came here to go to the college downtown. Is that what those big buildings are? I was wondering why all those Asian kids were hanging around. Well, speaking of kids, yours are great. So handsome and polite. Thank you, but they're my sister's kids. She's gone, too. So you moved in to take care of them? Wow. You guys all seem so close. It, it makes me wish I weren't so alone. Well, I have to go. I'm living at a transient hotel with no locks on the door, so I can't leave my stuff unattended too long. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Take off your top! Uh, I meant stay here with us. Do you mean it? I don't want to be in the way. Oh, no, you won't be in the way. We'd love to have you stay. Mmm, this latte is fabulous. I'm glad you like it. Bev, this feels like home already. You're all doing so much for me. What with the boys pampering me and you being such a good friend and Duckman always making sure I have plenty of Nivea on my thighs. Why, this afternoon he's offered to make sure my breasts are properly aligned and lubed so I won't hurt myself when I jump up and down for him. Why? Well, uh, oh, excuse me. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like someone needs another latte pick-me-up. Let me pour you some more. Thanks, Jerry. Good morning, Bev. Mm, morning? I'm afraid you've been sleeping since yesterday. Oh, but don't worry. I made you a special eye-opener. 
A double latte. There you go. Drinky, drinky. Oh, I must, must get up. Things to do is clean the g garage. Don't you worry. Duckman and the boys are doing it. It was their oh. idea. Still so sleepy. Well, here's my handsome crew. How's the garage coming? Almost done. Wow, I am so proud of you. And I know Bev would be too, if she weren't asleep. She sure is sleeping a lot. She's just under the weather. Yeah, and the forecast is partly sloshed. Now, now, be nice. Back to work, you scamps. Scoot! What's happening? I haven't felt this way since Winona Judd concert. Go! No, I, it, it can't be! Thrush your feathers down! Thrush your pelvis high! Thrush your pelvis high! <laughs> Fresh squeeze lemonade, anyone? Loves them. Oh, uh, hi, Bev. It's impossible. Everybody's having fun. They're getting along, respecting one another. Duckman's even put pants on. Yes, I am wearing pants, and lips that touch wine will never touch them. My God, Beverly, look how low you've sunk. Even I am superior to you. Now, now, we must try to understand what Beverly is going through. A surrogate mother, plagued by inadequacies, feels threatened by another female in the house, and takes solace in substance abuse. It's a classic story. I'll say. Add Linda Gray and some gratuitous violence, and it's every movie USA ever made. But Tammy knows I haven't been drinking. She's been with me, giving me latte. I don't understand. Hey, I'm missing a button. <gasps> Oh. Old Grandpa's old sour bush? That rut gut sterilized half a little rock. I don't... I don't know what's happening. Uh... Charles, Mambo, get some washcloths from the linen closet and make cold compresses for your aunt. Ajax, take poor Aunt Beverly to bed and give her these special vitamins. Duckman, sweetheart, I... Did you hear that? I called you sweetheart, like we were married or something. <laughs> <laughs> Color me kooky, but something very odd is going on around here. Bush, why? No, Duckman. Cornfed is right. I don't know how to tell you this, but I found Beverly in bed with a bloody spade. Ah, uh, Tammy, they prefer to be called Negroes. No, one of these! <laughs> Tammy implied that Bev had injured someone, or worse, but things didn't quite add up. If Bev had the bloody spade in bed with her, why was there no blood on her nightgown, her bed, or on the dashboard of her Bronco? And what about Tammy's family? She said they died in a freak slaying accident in Vermont. Little did she know that as a freak slaying accident buff, I knew there hadn't been any in Vermont since the Montpelier stompings of Aught Six. There was only one place to get the information I needed, but it was closed, so I went to the library. Jumping Jehoshaphat. According to the Vermont Penny Saver, Tammy's family died in a freak slaying accident, but it was slaying, as in butcher knives, not sleds. I have to warn my friends before it's too late. Shh. Sorry. I haven't heard from Bev in days. I've got to figure out what's going on back there. Hi, you've reached Tammy and the Duckman family. Tammy! 
Hey! Nobody can take your call right now, especially Beverly, who's blind, stinking drunk. So please leave a message and I, the new surrogate mother, will get back to you as soon as I finish taking her place, which is really soon. Wait for the moan. Oh. <gasps> Either this Tammy is one of Duckman's schizo personalities or there's some chick trying to muscle in on my family. I'm gonna fly right home and open up a fresh star of miracle whoop. I got a bad feeling about this. Now, you said yourself that this looks like the spade of Dr. Stein's gentle yet dim-witted gardener. We've got to give it back. What say we just chuck the friggin' thing and I tell it out of here ASA, please? Whoa, 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 whoa. Here. A crop duster leaving from gate three? I'll take it! Like this. Well, when you think about it, what kind of person just suddenly shows up one day and moves right into your house? But you suddenly showed up and... <laughs> Kids say the darndest things. What I meant was, maybe your aunt couldn't handle the strain of raising you, so she just snapped. Luckily, you have me now, and I'll never, ever let you go. Amen. But for now, let's keep Bev's possible involvement on the QT and off the police blotter. I know you kids may be scared, having a possible murderer in the house. But if she's sick, we'll be the ones who help her. We found this house code button clenched in the victim's fingers. She did it! Bev's the killer, right there! Please don't hurt her aunt! Boys, don't worry. We'll handle this situation with delicacy and restraint. After all, we're the LAPD. Take her down. <laughs> Okay, boys. Break's over. They're bringing her out. I don't believe it. Aunt Beverly a murderer? It can't be. Oh, let's forget about her and enjoy our family time together. She knew nothing about being part of a family, so we'll just leave her right out of our family plans, right? And if we all, as a family, pretend she's not in the family, then that becomes, in and of itself, a family thing for a family to do. Right, family? Did you ever hear a word so many times that after a while it seemed to lose all meaning? Oh, sure. Uh, no. Stop. Get out. Uh, how dare you? Excuse me, I'm Catholic. I'm a man. Our perfect family is going to have a perfect family evening, even if it kills us. And when the drugs she gave me wore off, I realized it was Tammy all along. Then the drugs you gave me kicked in and I forgot again, but I remember now. She's out to get my family. We've got to stop her! Beverly, the state doesn't pay me according to how much I care or according to how many patients I let out. I'm paid by the hour, so let's delve into your childhood, huh? Okay. Private investigator, I need to commandeer this vehicle. Okay. Right foot, Red. I'm worried about poor Aunt Beverly. I'm not sure turning her in was the right thing to do. 
The evidence against her is flimsy at best. You know, the least you could do is try to enjoy the perfect family activity I've arranged for us, but all you want to do is talk about Beverly. Beverly, who slept all day and neglected you and got into a drunken stupor and split a nosy gardener's head open. Look, Tammy, I, I gotta level with you. Please don't take this the wrong way, but you're really creeping everyone out with this family stuff. Why? Whatever do you mean? Well, you know. No, I don't. But you can tell me anything. We're family. That's just it, Tammy. We're not family. Well, I mean, we are, but you're not. I don't know why it took me so long to realize it, but Bev is our family. At first, I went along with this because I wanted to make some hot monkey love with you. Then I did it to please the boys. Then I got back to the hot monkey love thing, and then I started doing it because it felt good to be part of a family. And there was still the monkey love component. But now it's just too weird. I think it's time for you to move on. Uh, <laughs> problem? Everything was perfect, but you didn't seem to appreciate it. And Bev this and Aunt Bev that. <laughs> Some kind of fine we could pay? <laughs> I find the perfect family they always does by me. Of course they do. Because there's no such thing as a perfect family. It's the imperfections that make families interesting that make them human. No! Liar! You're a liar! <laughs> Good thing that prison psychiatrist left his pen on the desk. Let me guess. You used the pen to pick the locks. No, I used it to fill out a requisition form for an extra set of keys. You're the most radical, Aunt Bev. We're sorry we ever doubted you. It looks like I left our little family unit in good hands. Well, I do my best. And now it's time to soak my aching bod in a hot tub. Hey, Bev, I'm glad you're not a drunk psycho killer. Really. Rub a dub dub, duck vines in the tub. <laughs> Did you miss me? Hi, Tammy. I mean, Good thing we knew that psychotic killers always return after their apparent deaths. Well played. And Bernice, I'll never forget how you came through for me. Oh, and I'll never forget how you brought a psycho axe killer bimbo into my house! Why point fingers of blame? Or in your case, talents. We learned a valuable lesson here. The best part about being a family is finding people you want to kill, then working together to kill them. Come on, kids. It's IHOP time! Thrust your pelvis up. Thrust your pelvis up. Thrust your pelvis up.
Okay. It looks like I'll never remarry. Sure, I had a few close calls, but I've given up now. Beatrice was the only woman who'll ever love me. So until they figure out a way to bring her worm-ridden, decomposed corpse back from the dead, or Pamela Lee's daughter reaches the age of semi-consent, whichever comes first, I'm afraid I'm destined to be a Siegfried without a Roy, a Roy without a Dale, a Dale without a chip. I scream, you scream! We all scream for mail-order brides! Hey, aren't you Terry Duke Tetzloff? The con man who almost killed me off with a defective home security system, buried my mother-in-law when she wasn't dead, and, uh, did that other bad thing? The answer is yes, but the best is yet to come. Mr. Duckman, are you currently experiencing a gut-wrenching solitude that has turned your every waking moment into a living hell? Kinda. And you've no doubt tried countless fruitless activities to fill the void. Phone sex? Yes. Sex with phones? Yes. Cream corn wrestling? Yes. Colonic irrigation. What a new garden hose this morning. Well, congratulations. You qualify for our pre-suicide discount. In this truck lies the fulfillment of all your needs. A heavily sedated Cindy Crawford? Ah, oh, the grail. No, no, Mr. Duckman. My operation caters to a clientele willing to forego the superficial charms that normally make bridal purchase beyond the reach of a pathetic loser such as yourself. By using a rigorous screening process which eliminates all but the most desperate women, we're able to bring direct to you, the consumer, these virtually uninfected marriage partners at popular prices. Mr. Duckman, behold, woman. Here they are, a second to some collection of factory serviced models at prices so low you won't believe they're not rubber. Listen, Mr. Tetzloff, I'm not normally a stickler for, uh, what do you call them? Federal immigration laws? Whatever. But is this nookie mobile of yours strictly legal? Let's leave the brain teasers like that to the judges and juries, shall we? All you have to know is that just by listening this long, you qualified for $50 in matrimony. Good on any item purchased within the next 10 minutes. I don't know. I'm kind of low on scratch through the end of the millennium. I hear you, brother. Listen, back at the warehouse, I've got a demonstration model I've been saving for my personal use in the event my own dear wife cacks. I'll even throw in a lace teddy for your first night of passion. Well? I am desperately lonely. Tetzloff, you got a deal. By the way, I'm a size 8 petite. Buddy, that's us. Kittles, what's the one thing that's missing from your lives? An adult male role model? Dental checkups. A better understanding of orthomolecular compounds and their effects on human physiology? Or a new dolly. How's about a new mother? Yes, our long national nightmare is over. Please join me outside as we officially welcome to the family Mrs. Duckman II. Whoa, I don't understand. How could you find someone to marry so fast? Tetzloff waved the credit check. Come on! She likes an entrance. But worry not, I've been assured she's a real people person. May God have mercy on your souls. Is she full of energy or what? 
She's a killing machine! Is Mommy the Antichrist? Duckman, your bride is frightening the children. Hey, 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 now. She must be cold and hungry and scared. If we give her a little kindness and attention, she probably won't kill anyone else. Hey, Jax, go see if you can calm her down. A-okay, Dodd. No, Duckman, I don't know what's going on, but none of us are getting anywhere near that thing. Fine. I don't care how she looks or how she acts. This is my chance for happiness. Someone who's mine and mine alone. So if you guys are so scared of a poor, frightened, enormously powerful young girl, I'll just talk to her myself. That didn't make you want to prove me wrong, huh? Honey lamb. Boopsie boo. <laughs> What a woman! So let me see if I understand the premise. Duckman's gotten himself a mail-order bride who's feral? Look, my girl isn't a little jittery meeting her fiancé's family for the first time. We just gotta break the ice. Yeah, before she breaks our spines. Hmm, what is that odor wafting through the air? Could it be the scent of big, fat, stinking jealousy? Fine, we'll let the kids meet her next. Sure thing, Beastmaster. But give us a few minutes to get ready. I have to smear myself with steak sauce. Well, you guys are pretty quick to judge. But you ever stop to think that inside that scary, rage-filled creature may be a caring, sensitive human being? Okay, a caring, sensitive human canine hybrid. What's important is that she's legally obligated to stay with me for the rest of my life, however long she lets me live. That's right. And I happen to think there's a tender, beautiful woman in this house just waiting to be discovered. What a nice thing to say about it. I was talking about me. <laughs> Duckman, the problem is that in her current state, your fiancé appears to be completely inaccessible. Only somewhat completely, Corn Popper. You see, after our initial little misunderstanding... You mean when she crushed your rib cage? I arranged to get a closer look at my angel while she's distracted by eating. What will she eat? Hello, Mr. Duckman. We were in the middle of our walkathon to save endangered walkathons, so we hope this won't take long. Shouldn't take long at all. Fluffy, Uranus, meet my new wife. Hello, Mrs. Duckman. <laughs> So, let's give it. <laughs> Look at her, Corny. She's so... what's the word? Horrifying, bloodthirsty, savage, barbaric. I mean, lovely. She's obviously come straight from the wild. Note the curvature of the spine, the predatory eyes, the complete lack of language skills. I think I'll call her Kathy Lee. I'm afraid there's not much we can expect in the way of interaction. I doubt she has any experience with the subtleties of human communication. She said hello! Somehow we have to gain Kathy Lee's trust. The first step is to get closer. Hold this meat in your hand and stand a few feet away. She's hungry. She'll take it, and she'll begin to think of you as a friend. Hmm. Remaining sane is mainly quite a pain. That's no use, Corny. I'm afraid she'll never know the joy of finding just the right words to things with but having says she do. Um, 
Yes. I mean, no. She will, but it will take kindness and patience. Oh, Kathy Lee, Kathy Lee, will you ever speak to me? What the... Did she say something? Well, I, I was working on some other things earlier. What the hell are you staring at? She's got it! My George, she's got it! Pickering, just listen to her! What the hell are you staring at? Now once again, what is a pain? Staying sane! Staying sane! And what is staying sane? A pain! A pain! <clears throat> Excuse me. Tonight, we are to be joined at table by my wife-to-be. Now, I know we all got off to a rough start, but I hope you'll be considerate and understanding and not call animal control until it's absolutely necessary. Beverly, Ajax, Charles, Whammo. Please say hello to Kathy Lee. It's incredible. She's wonderful. She's the most beautiful Antichrist I've ever seen. Look, she put a napkin in her lap. Yeah, she still drools a bit. Well, that aside, she looks like a million dollars. And I only paid one fifty. How do you do? I'm very glad to meet you all. She talks! And to think a few days ago, I was happy because she could write a name on the wall with her own feces. But when I write my name on the wall with my own feces, I'm being naughty. Isn't she great? I can't wait to show her off around town. Oh, she's made tremendous progress, but do you really think she's ready for society? Are you kidding? Look how she carries herself. And the kids. When I grow up, I want to buy a woman just like Mom. Duckman, have you been intimate with her? No, but when I do, I think she'll find I'm quite the animal myself. The ladies say I'm like a cheetah on the prowl. Very fast, and then in an instant, it's over. <clears throat> I am very pleased to be here tonight, and I am honored that you have allowed me to be in your basement and a part of your family. Oh, Kathy Lee. We want to commemorate this with a picture. Come on, smile, Dad. Smile, Kathy Lee. <laughs> Something's wrong. She's gonna blow. You broke Mommy. <laughs> Man, see what you've done? Kathy Lee's not ready to be with other people. She probably won't ever be. You know what, Beverly? You're right. Kathy Lee may never be civilized, but it doesn't matter. I don't care what she does or how she acts. I love her, and I'm gonna stick by her. I'm sorry, Duck Man. I was wrong to say that. I'm glad you did. It made me realize that it's time to take the next step. I'm gonna propose. But I want to do it in a special way. You mean the way you did with Beatrice? No, I don't want any amyl nitrate screwing with my vision this time. I want it to be a beautiful moment that we'll be able to replay over and over for the rest of our lives. And I know just how to do it. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Got a great one for you today. It's surprise marriage proposal. So come on back for today's Lisa. <laughs> Welcome back. You know, according to surveys, when men are asked what scares them the most, what do you think the number one answer is? Anything. Commitment. Commitment. Children. Babies. You're all kind of right. The number one fear is proposing. Proposing marriage is their biggest fear. Well, we've got some brave souls in the studio today who are going to propose to their true loves. They will do it right here on the show. And the women have no idea. I know, I love this. All right, let's talk to our first brave soul right now, Duckman. Lisa Lena, being here is so very magical for me. Finally meeting the daytime hostess with the all time hostess. And speaking of hostess, might I add, you have two of the best little snack cakes in all of talk TV. <laughs> but hey, I don't want to get your hopes up, LG. After all, I'm a soon to be married man. Let's talk about your, your rather unusual situation. Your intended is a mail order bride? Oh, sure. Go ahead and judge. But who among us has never paid for love? Let him throw the first stone! 
Okay, Duckman, let, 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 maybe what we should do then is just go ahead and bring out your true love, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Lee. <laughs> now, Kathy Lee, you have no idea why you're here. Well, Duckman said something about getting back at those girls in high school who dumped pig's blood on him at the prom. Is it any wonder I love her so? Duckman, is there something that you would like to ask Kathy Lee? As a matter of fact, Lisa Reno, there is. Kathy Lee, before you came into my life, I was a sad, lonely, laughable excuse of a man. You helped me reach deep down inside myself, touch that place I thought was long dead. I'm talking, of course, about my prostate, and man, that was a party. Kathy Lee, I've only said what I'm about to say to one other person. Two of you count that incredibly convincing guy on Santa Monica Boulevard. But Kathy Lee, will you marry me? Yes, Duckman, and I will try to make you as happy as you've made me. Oh, this is just so special. And we thought that we would make it a moment that you can always remember. No! And here we have stage 26, where Lisa is taped. <laughs> the Paramount Commissary, where Eddie Mecca enjoyed mouth-watering sandwiches and reasonably priced soft drinks. Kathy Lee! Kathy Lee! No! And there, about 100 feet below me, is Suite 411, once the dressing room of TV's Walter Koenig. Don't shoot! Kathy Lee! Yeah. And over there is Parking Lot D, where such international superstars as Tina Yothers and Gallagher have used our super efficient and low price valets to pawn! And now I'm being rushed to the Paramount Infirmary, where Mary Lou Henner was once taken after Tony Danza mistakenly brought. Kathy Lee, listen! Maybe it was a mistake taking a feral beast, putting her on national TV, and proposing marriage. But who could foresee such a thing? Okay, maybe you don't fit in with this world, but neither do I. That's why I need you. But it also means that for once in my life, I can finally say to someone, you need me! She needs me more, laddie. All right, look, Pops, they're filming the public service announcement on Alzheimer's over on stage eight, so why don't you just... I am Sir Declan McManus, world-renowned adventurer and the inventor of beach volleyball. That child on the water tower is the daughter I lost in the jungle more than 15 years ago. Uh, can we slap it depends on Pappy McLush before he soils himself and get him out of our lives already? I mean, really. I happened to be touring Hollywood when I was offered a seat at Miss Gibbon's delightful vaudeville. Imagine my surprise when I saw my own wee darling daughter, 15 years older but looking not a whit different than when I held her on my knee and sang her favorite lullaby. Eka beka boo, my dear. Eka beka boo. Lara leeka meeka munch. Eka darmi boo. Hey, I know that song. So do I. Eka beka boo, my dear. Eka beka boo. Beach for us and heaven touch. How come everybody knows this song except me? Eagle lang a lang, my dear. Eagle lang a rule. Eagle rumble limbo lang, stick a ramalu. Eagle bimbo rang, my dear. Eagle bang a rule. Your whole family awaits you in Scotland. You live in a castle and have horses and cattle and all the possessions your heart desires. 
I'm saving up for a clapper. Duckman? Yes, my love. I'm going to Scotland. I knew you'd... Don't you see, Duckman? We could never really be happy. This world of yours is too complex, too frightening for one who has lived as simply as I. Look what I've done. I almost killed a woman. You have so much to learn. She was only a tour guide. That's what I mean. It is so difficult to remember all you've taught. How clients expect to be cheated. How sniffing other people's underwear is a right protected by the Constitution. She's, uh, she's just babbling now. Duckman, I need to be sheltered. I need to be in a land apart. A place that lies between the jungle of the wild and the jungle of civilization. I need to be in Scotland. Are there any flashbulbs there? Lassie, we haven't even invented the toilet seat! Goodbye, Duckman, and thank you. I'll send for my cage. And so it ends with Duckman, as ever, alone. Once again, in my search for love, I find only emptiness. My once dead hopes, now dead again. If Cornfed were here, I know he would ask what, if anything, I will take away from this experience. To which I would answer... A red Porsche! <laughs> Bloodthirsty, savage, barbaric. Washington? Yes! Hey, is that a new suit? Why, yes. Yes, it was. Don't you look in a mirror before you go out. Kill slub. Hey, uh, Bev, the grub's okay, but FYI, try not to mix cutting food with slurping food. All this utensil shifting is slowing me down. What chef doesn't love to hear that? Corny, would you like some crayfish etouffee? That would be splendid, thanks. <laughs> That would be splendid. Why not just hang a sign around your neck saying, I want to boink you? You can use mine. It's uh, around here somewhere. Hmm, this is fabulous. Bev, are you sure you're not Cajun? <laughs> Excuse me? How come he gets to use language like that? That word offends not just me, sir, but all womankind. How dare you refer to that most prized, intimate body part? The toy surprise in the Cracker Jack box of love in such a crude and tasteless manner. Cajun is the style of cooking you just ate 11 pounds of. Oh. Then what's Thai again? Bev, if you like Cajun cuisine, you should meet my Aunt Jane. She lives on a catfish ranch in Louisiana. <laughs> Who cares about Louisiana? Wow, I'd love to go to Louisiana. Ah, Louisiana. City of Lights on Asia's Emerald Isle. Bev, I was planning to visit Aunt Jane in the other Louisiana this weekend. Why don't you come along? Wow, I'd love to! Hmm. What's with Cornfed and Bev? He thinks my old partner is trolling for trout right here under my sniffer. This is very bad form indeed. If anyone's gonna pound the pacale with Bev, it should be me! Until Cornpone came around trying to get his dud milked, Bev was getting to know the real me. The me I am inside. The me I've never been to. Me that's not half bad, or if you're a pessimist, not half good. Given enough time and medication, Bev would definitely fall in love with me. And given enough typing monkeys, she could write the works of Shakespeare. 
<laughs> Typing monkeys. <laughs> what the? Wait, I'd love to go with you. Louisville, Indonesia, here we come. Well, as I live and breathe, Gillibald. Aunt Jane, these are my friends. No, don't tell me. I ought to know from what you've been writing about them in your letters. You must be Beverly, even prettier than Willibald described you. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. And you must be Duckman. Why, from Willibald's letters, I'd have thought you literally had a penis for a head. Charmed. How are things going, Aunt Jane? Not too good. I can barely make my loan payments. My hands are fixing to drive my herd to Texas. I'm afraid it's my last chance to save this ranch where my pappy and his pappy before him lived and died. Yeah, yeah, great story. Which way to the spa? Oh, Lord, we ain't got nothing fancy here. Beverly here can have my spare room. I hope you boys would rough it with ranch hands. If by rough it you mean a room without a mini bar and free hookers, then uh, we have a problem. Duckman, we really should bunk with the ranch hands. Huh? What are you, Amish? Mmm, corn-fed, listen to you. Bunk with the ranch hands. Muy, muy macho. Yeah, <sighs> bunking in the bunkhouse sounds like a right plum pudding idea there, Mitty. Now, if you'll excuse me, little pards, I gotta go rope me some steers, bust me some bronx, and cow me some pies. <laughs> nice shooting, Tex. The loogie hocking will cost you serious points in the better bed and breakfast guides. Who the hell are you? I guess they don't get cable. Well, Clem, I just so happen to be a personal guest of a certain lady by the name of Aunt something or other. So, you better start treating me right or she'll shania your twains for good. Hey, whoop, gotcha. <sighs> Now you stay out of this, Miss Jane. This don't concern you. Everything on this ranch concerns me. Fun's fun, but that there's a guest of mine. Now go on. Git! All of you, go on! You're fired! Duckman, are you all right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just a little winded. If he's here to hit me, I'm counting on you to kill me first. Easy, Cindy. I ain't gonna hit ya. <sighs> Yet. Name's McBastard. Big Jack McBastard. Now listen up, you stinking little puddle of girly vomit. Those men you just got fired were supposed to help me drive 2,000 head of catfish to Texas. Now how am I gonna move that catfish by myself, huh? I, uh, don't, uh... He's right. If those catfish don't get to Texas, Aunt Jane will lose everything. See? All's well that ends well. No, Duckman, that's bad. There's only one thing to do. We have to help drive those catfish. Oh, what a wonderful idea. You're nuts! I'm not gonna waste my vacation on a bunch of catfish! Duckman, come back. <sighs>
Hey, wait. Corny and Bev, sleeping under the stars? With him looking like a big hero? Wait for me! It's gonna be a long ride. There she is. Hell's Toilet. The days are so hot they can boil your brain. And the nights, they're colder than David Caruso's film career. <laughs> well, good night. Make sure you get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow, we've got a date with the Rio Grillo. Ornriest river you'll ever cross. The Rio Grillo took my pappy. My pappy's pappy. My pappy's pappy's pappy. And your pappy's 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 pappy? Bought himself a condo at Laughlin. Maintenance fees are steep, but the social life keeps him young. Catfish are jumpy tonight. Be careful. One loud noise and we'll have us a stampede. And we don't want that. Bev, I'm glad we're alone. Yo-ho! I was just securing the perimeter. Hey, you brought the old licorice stick, eh? Bev, did you know that I'm often called the Joe Satriani of guitar players? Yeah, let me show you how it's done. No, Duckman! The catfish! Hit it up! Nice riding. Thank you. I was doing this Princess Margaret sort of thing. Don't worry, BJ. I'll save you. Come on, little doggies. Kitties, whatever the hell you are. Whoa, whoa, wait. Back up. No, whoa, stop. No, no, go forward. No, no, forward. Yike. That's less than ideal. He's dead. Dead? Are you sure? I am now. No! I won't let the Reaper win! Not this time! Live, Big Jack! Live! You're a fighter! And this is the biggest fight of your... Oh. Well, at least he died with his boots on. He sure did. He... Say, so yeah, those are size nine. I don't believe it. Big Jack, dead. What could be worse? Thank you, Queen Setup. Where are you going? I want to die as I live, like a sniveling little coward. Wait, I've got an idea. Keep holding on. Must be strong. Lips are chapped. That settles it. I'm taking over. Say what? Look, someone's got to come out and say it. This trip is not going well. No, no, it's true. First Big Jack dies, then the stampede, and now Corny's whole human bridge fiasco. Man, that was whack. Yep, from now on, I'll be in charge of this catfish drive in the manly, loved by women like Bev way that only I can. And nothing's gonna stop me. Uh -huh.
Compadres, I gotta tell you. The news of my ascension has not received the kudos I thought it would. Now, if you have issues, it's best to get them out now. Anyone? Duckman, the reason things have been going so badly, well, it's your fault. <laughs> I see. Oh, that's very interesting. And how exactly is any of this my fault? You got the ranch hands fired. And caused the stampede. And killed Big Jack. And washed away half the herd. <laughs> Whoa! If we all talk at once, we'll never get anywhere. Let's just chalk up the trip so far to Cornfed's jealousy of me and never talk about it again, okay? Now, here's my plan. Bev, you ride in front so the pheromones released by your monthly cycles can waft back and hypnotically draw the herd forward. Cornfed, you'll bring up the rear, checking the trail for loose change and deposit bottles. And where will you be during this voyage of the damned? I'll ride in front of Bev, but facing backwards so I can watch her breast jiggle. It's not often you see one horse's ass sitting on another. You see? That's the right attitude. So, Cornfed, if you'll take your far-from-Bev position, we can get started. Where's my canteen? I confiscated all the water. You'll get water when I'm satisfied that you've earned it. Easy, pud. There's only room for one raisin in this trail mix. You're gonna do what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it, the way I tell you to do it, and if I can't tell you've done it, you'll tell me when you're done doing it. You're worthless and weak, and this drive is gonna toughen your hides. Or kill you. But above all, just have fun with it. Deathwish Trail. Sounds manly, huh, Bev? Mama, yeah! Duckman, your craven insanity is apparently now sunstroke enriched, so please focus on what I'm saying. Just a few miles that way is a town where we can sell the catfish, eat, drink, rest, and bring all our troubles to an end. This is one of your gal poaching tricks, ain't it? You've got your whole gang ready to bushwhack me. Get me out of the way so you can have Bev all to yourself. I know what Bev wants, mister. I do! She wants me to go... Right, fine. Fine! Be that way! You're nothing but no good vomits, backstabbing dogs, scurvy mutinous curs, double dealing, herd stealing, unappealing, matzo mealing, rod and reeling, hooked on a feeling, sexual healing, Fritz feeling, Ezekiel soda wheeling, rats! So go! Get out of here! I want nothing to do with either of you. Duck man, it's not safe for you to stay here. Well, I'm sure not safe with you two lust crazy schemers. Go on! You'll be sorry! I'm meaner and tougher than either of you will. Ah! Happy! Happy! Ah! Don't worry. When we get to town, we'll send someone back for him. Oh, it's awful. He's so demented. He, he thinks we're having a torrid affair. Yeah, imagine. Betrayed. Abandoned. Discarded like last week's TV guide. And not the special full preview issue, either. With that crappy kid show issue with that dink Jonathan Taylor what's-his-name on the cover. That two-faced, two-timing, tutti-frutti, tour-allure partner of mine is gonna sell the catfish, hog all the credit, and then run off to Barbados or Acapulco or Encino with my Bev. I'll stop him! I'll stop him if it's the last thing I... Can't... Go on. We'll... Die... Here. You can't just give up! Ye gods! It's TV legend and star of Welcome Back, Carter, Ron Horshag Palillo! And I'm here to tell you that you just can't quit. You've got to get right up and keep going. Keep trying. That's the only way you'll be corn-fed and get that nice girl, Beverly. I will keep trying, Mr. Palillo. I will. But before I do, a request? Very well. Ow! 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 I've seen it a million times, and yet it never grows old. I did a love boat, too, you know. Goodbye! <laughs> Are you a mirage, by any chance? Ow! Nope, you're real. Hi, guys. I sure hope you're not miffed at me for getting you fired. You know, it's actually kind of a funny story when you think... <laughs> of course, losing a job in this economy is no joke. Guys, wait! You didn't come all this way just to lynch me! We sure as hell did. Wait, I can make you all rich! Why should we believe you? Hey, I'm tight with Ron Palillo, and I was just on my way to shoot my backstabbing partner and rustle his catfish. If you boys come work for me, I'll cut you in for, say, uh, an industry standard 8%. Quiet! I don't trust you, you pipsqueak. But out of respect for TV's horse shack, 
We'll give you a chance. Fair enough. Now let's ride! I think it was wonderful what you did for your Aunt Jane, Cornfed. You know, a girl could get used to a dependable guy like you. But then there's Duckman. Yeah, I know what you mean. A man's got two things in this world, his good name and his loyalty to his friends. Duckman may be crazy, but he's the best friend I've ever had. I respect that. But we can still fool around in secret, right? Oh, definitely. Cornfed pig! That's right, you catfish rustling, partner swindling, blowfish hooting, Connie Chung and coward. I'm calling you out. Oh, please don't go. He's crazy. A man's got to do what a man's judgment tells him circumstances require. <laughs> I always knew this happened someday. I wish you'd told me. I would have practiced. Duckman, we can call this off. Nah. I'm in a killing mood. <laughs> we draw at high noon. And just so as you know, my boys have got orders to shoot you dead, no matter what happens. After you kill me, kill him. You got it. Hey, my watch says 2.30. The clock must have stopped. Shoddy American workmanship. Draw on three? Sure. One, two, three! Now it's fair. You girls still want to draw? No way! A guy could get hurt. Oh, I thought I'd lose you both. Thank goodness for Big Jack McBastard. Say, uh, Jack, how the hell did you survive being trampled? Not to mention being eaten by vultures and buried alive. <sighs> Long story. Happy trails, folks. Funny, I've already forgotten who he is. Hey, uh, I owe you two a big apology. I had no right to behave the way I did. I want you to know that if you two were to start seeing each other, it'd be okay with me. In fact... I think it'd be great. Come on, let's go home. Happy trails, folks.
Stop, I can't hear you. Stop, Stop yelling! Thank you. Now, where was I? Waxing euphoric about the bucolic pleasures of camping. Which apparently consists of consuming ten times your body weight in venison jerky. Projectile vomiting across a three-mile lake. And waking up next to a dead moose in a Philadelphia flophouse with no memory of the past five months. Well, there'll be none of that on this trip. As I explained to you before, and will repeat now, not as clunky exposition, but just because it feels so damn good, we're taking this taxpayer finance dream vacation at the request of the House Subcommittee for Investigating Dream Vacations. Which means no one in this family better break any rules, duck man! And let me tell you, these woods are lousy with rules. No random body cavity searches while impersonating a park ranger. No videotaping lesbian campers and outdoor showers, then selling the tapes to lesbian camper monthly. Which, by the way, just raised their subscription rate again. Welcome to Monsanto Presents Philip Morris Yellowstone National Park Incorporated. Brought to you in part by FedEx. We deliver the world's most important packages, yours, and Jif peanut butter. Choosy mothers choose Jif. You may insert a credit card. Nice try, Robocrap, but my bank account's been attached by Monty Hall Enterprises since 1983. Yeah! <laughs> oh! Ah, smell that fresh. Okay, I'm bored. And where do you think you're going, little man? We're in a park. We thought we'd hike. I think Beverly would rather spend her time with a real outdoorsman. This is rough territory, Connectitude. There are huge sections of this park that are still unpaved, with grotesque tree-like things bunched so close together you can barely see the gift shops. Actually, Duckman, Corny and I would... Beverly! Can you help me with the tent? Good. And Cornfed, you come with me and do some more of that great listless nodding at whatever idiotic thing I say thing you do so well. I can't believe you wanted to go for a hike when we can just walk around and look at things. You're right, I was insane. Look, there's a tufted titmouse. Really? A big titmouse? A really big titmouse. Man, just look at the size of that titmouse. That is one humongous titmouse. You think I could grab the titmouse? Sure, it's fun to grab the titmouse. When's the V-chip coming? Not for another six months. Oh, that horrible sound! Please, mommy, make it stop! I'll be a good girl! John Jacob Jingleheimer! <laughs> Mr. Duckman! What a seemingly horrifying, though hopefully delightful surprise! Well, well, well. I don't recall you little fruit baskets putting in for a vacation request. That's not true, Mr. Duckman! According to the employee regulations, which we've never actually seen, but take your word that they exist, we submitted the paperwork six months in advance. And I assume you also included an affidavit of death? Death? It's in the regulations. No vacations till you're certifiably dead. Tell you what, kids, I'll give you a choice. Be my personal campout slaves, or watch me plump my wieners over your stuffing. Which way to camp? Oh, the wood must be wet. Grandma, can you give us a hand? Okay, let's see if those fey little dunaways were able to put together my campsite design. some complaints about the noise. Yeah? From who? Every living creature within 50 miles. I told you, stocking stuffers, turn off that noise. Now, if you can just get those damn birds to stop bleeding night and day. I'm sorry, sir, but I must ask you to move. Okay, we're breaking camp. Not us, 
duckhead you! We'll meet you back here in three days. Fine. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. A lot of homeless people around here. Makes you think. Makes you want to do something. Get a job! Get a haircut! Stop being homeless! How about here? Too hilly. Or here? Too flat. Here? Too Republican. Here? Too... corny. Think of a word. Salty. Salty. Unbelievable. He has one line and... Fine. We're gonna go with too salty. Moving on. But, Mr. Duckman, we appear to be entering a dangerous section of the park. Pish tush. This is the forest primeval, untouched and virginal, waiting with moist expectation as we poke and probe for the perfect spot to stick our equipment. Wear them if you got them, boys. We're going in deep. And if there is danger out there, that danger is going to be in big, big trouble. Too dirty. Too quiet. Too Ansel Adamsy. Too moldy. Not moldy enough. Duckman, perhaps we should. All right, you got in your damn salty. Give it a rest. Mr. Duckman, we've been searching all night. Quit your belly aching, or you two fuzzy wuzzies will have no skin. I got a feeling the perfect campsite lies right around that bend. Too, uh. Perfect. Go! Oh! Hey! Sorry! Slipped. Well, I'll be seeing you in court. You bruised my coccyx, and not in the way I like, either. Now follow me, we'll set up through these bushes. And by we, of course, I mean you. Not to cast aspersions on your judgment, Mr. Duckman, but this area is swarming with insects. Duh. How else am I going to capture the true outdoor experience? And by I, of course, I mean you. Now then. Fluffy, Uranus, prepare my bedtime buffalo wings bonanza. Cornfed, construct a sort of Swiss Family Robinson-like living quarters. You can start with the observatory. Here's some wood. Wait, Duckman, that log could be filled with... What? What? Covered with what? Why is it no one ever finishes a sentence when I'm around? Don't worry. I'll be all right. Just so long as nobody panders. A thousand times, dwa! Never fear, old friend. I will snatch you from death's door. Paw and I dish, you busy little bastards. Ooh. Ouch. Cornhouse, you look terrible. You gotta stop partying with the rangerettes. <laughs> I get them, but I love them. Uh, I don't want to scare you, Corny, but now you got one of those bloodthirsty ladybugs crawling on you. This may hurt a bit. That man! Their footprints go in that direction. We have to rescue them. Wait, wait! Who knows what danger lies or lays, I always forget which, in the forest. You boys stay here. Beverly and I will investigate. But we can't leave the kids alone. Perhaps I can help. It's world-famous entertainer and master illusionist, Jim Bailey. Mr. Bailey, if you don't mind my saying so, you're not someone usually associated with camping. Ah, but the root word of camping is camp. Oh, sure. When most people think of national parks, they think of the animals, the wilderness, the solitude. What they always seem to forget is the glamour. You girls run along now. Everything will be fine. Bless you, Mr. Bailey. Don't you worry about a thing! Did anyone ever tell you you look like Liza? Duckman, listen carefully. I've only got a few seconds before my body swells up and I'm unable to speak or move. Luckily, you can fabricate the antidote using that moss over the... Save your strength, dear one. Don't spoil my last memory of you by spewing some delirious stream of consciousness gobbledygook. Oh, Cordy, please! For once, have a little dignity. You owe me that much. Hey, nice face, Corn. For Mardi Gras! <laughs> what, old pal? What are you trying to say? 
Thank you for being my friend. If I wasn't blind, paralyzed, and almost dead, I'd be wearing your sphincter as a shoe. Mr. Duckman, I think we've been bitten too. I hope it doesn't cause an allergic reaction. Well, keep in mind that employer regulations call for a $200 fine for every medical emergency. Don't worry, old chum. You can pay at the end of the month. Hey, do you have to pull so herky-jerky? From now on, I'd appreciate more of a fluid arcing motion. Well, we'd appreciate it if you'd stop acting so unkindly. Hmm, that was an unkind thing to say. Maybe that bite is causing some kind of reaction. Mr. Cornfred's still in bad shape. He needs food. Good point. The sooner we get grub, the sooner I can evacuate my innards under a canopy of stars. So, I suggest you slackers go out and whip up a nice wildebeest pate or a puma melt, or maybe just a light fawn sandwich. A mountain lion? How'd you get a mountain lion? Never mind. We just did. Mush! I say mush! Must get food inches away. Hand not quite paralyzed. Say, uh, Corny, you gonna finish that? <sighs> oh, no sense letting it go to waste. I mean, think of all those children in India who go to bed without any mountain lion. <clears throat> Too salty. <sighs> Excuse me. Maybe I'm suffering from some jungle-induced form of memory loss, but I don't remember hearing the word stop. We're stopping because your senseless sense of direction has led us in one giant circle. Look! There happen to be many other Duckmans, you know. Very common name in Iraq. Mr. Duckman, during this entire expedition, you've consistently led us astray. Plus, you've been insulting and abusive and demeaning, and not in the way we like, either. Maybe it's just the allergic reaction talking, but we want to re-examine our relationship. I couldn't agree more. You're fired! What? That's right. F-I-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-E-R-D-
I've gone through, Duckman better be dead when we find him. Poor Cornfed. I bet you'd have some helpful suggestion. If only there was some way for me to hear what you were thinking. Kill Duckman. Kill Duckman. Kill Duckman. We're doomed! Doomed! Thank God I always keep a spare token from Peep World. Yes! Who the man? As the man! There's a disturbance in the forest. The hunt is up, and may God have mercy on the hunted. Must make it across. Must. Hey, a mento. <laughs> now, relax, guys, gals, whatever. Say, those endangered spotted whales are sure making a comeback, huh? Hey, note to myself, separate clear and colored liquor bottles for recycling. I'm just thankful that you two came through this little incident unharmed. Because it gives me the opportunity to do this. Don, can we keep Mr. Bailey? He's brought laughter, music, and black fishnet pantyhose into our lives. Sorry, boys, but I'm not ready to settle down. All over this great land of ours, there are other glamour-deprived boys and girls that need my help. As we say in the theater, Ciao! Well, other than Fluffy and Uranus mutating into giant killer monsters, this was a pretty nice trip. We came to learn about nature and ended up learning about each other. And I saw a really big titmouse! I think the bee venom is wearing off. I can't believe it. I'm going to be all right. I'm not going to die. Quiet, Cornicles. Ajax wants to say something. Dodd, could I go with Mr. Bailey? Of course you can, Ajax. In fact, let's all go. Come on, guys. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart strings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor.
too salty. Now that Pariacom has acquired and or merged with all of our competitors, we need a new property. A lovable and enchanting character. Now I know how successful Uncle Taffy Tom Tom has been since Pariacom was founded. <laughs> well, I think we all see the potential problem. We need a new character, and pronto. Our sophisticated audience research computer randomly generated a wisecracking detective with a pig partner and a wacky family, Duckman. One small problem from legal. Turns out there really is a guy named Duckman who more or less matches our character's profile. We've got to figure out how to get this guy to sign his life away. Excuse me, sir. Art DeSalvo, freelance PR consultant down here in the cheap seats. I just might be able to help you with that. <laughs> oh, dear. Cohen Willigan, you know that pile of cash you gave me to spend any way I saw fit? You mean the money to pay the rent? Huh, <laughs> curious phrase. Well, it was burning a Brando-sized hole in my pocket, so I went and bought the first frivolous piece of electronic gadgetry I saw. Behold! My new high-definition DSS ready, Alyssa Milano compatible, PAL compliant, digitally adaptable, letterbox conformed, 1.1 inch TV in glorious mini color. Hmm. Huh. Yay. Piece of junk! Oh, hey, some dork threw away a TV that just needs batteries. So weak! Duckman, aren't you worried about all these long overdue bills? Of course I am. That's why I called a shopping channel and ordered this faux press board long overdue bill caddy. Okay, it's handy. But why did you order that tipsy hobo cowboy figurine from the Gene Barry Frontier collection? What? Look at it. I mean... He's a cowboy hobo, and he's tipsy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Duckman, you have no money at all. Your creditors are growing impatient. Your phony spinal meningitis excuse won't keep the repo men away forever. Ah, keep your hackles calm, corn syrup. If I need money, I'll just sell something like, uh, my immortal soul. Eh, I'll pass. Damn. Worked for Sybil Shepard. Duckman, you've got to stop this senseless spending. Work harder to generate business. Write out a budget you can stick to. Uh, have you seen the show before? All I need is some easy fix that'll tide me over with some quick and greasy moolah. You rang. I love this thing! Art the salvo! Ask for it by name! Duckman, friend, neighbor, I was in the building to see my podiatrist, my spring corn scrape and all, and with my ear pressed against your door, I couldn't help overhearing about your financial problems. It makes me violently, gut-churningly ill to see you hassled by creditors, those stinking low-life bill collectors are scum, harassing, decent people! Who don't pay their bills. <sighs> Excellent question, Duckman. Thank you. Eh? The answer is simple. With the right promotion, your name and persona could be worth a fortune. Tell me, have you ever considered selling yourself? You mean like as part of some kind of sex ring? Duckman, I think what Mr. DeSalvo is referring to is the licensing of your image as part of an all-out cross-platform marketing campaign. Hey, let's not give up on this sex ring thing just yet. Maybe with you and me, Corny, kind of a Siegfried and Roy, Spangled Tights kind of deal. Maybe a swing? Just sign here and you'll never have to worry about money again because you will receive one thousand dollars! Oh yeah! I can't wait! Hey, uh, why does it say two hundred thousand dollars here? 
Oh, uh, that's Latin. Two hundred is uh, Latin for one. Careful, Duckman. You know art has always been a fast-talking, deeply cynical, and completely amoral manipula- Infidel! How dare you confuse Duckman with your blasphemy! Don't listen to him. Go for it! Oops, sorry, Connie. You made a good argument, but he said go for it. That's what people in the movie say when they're about to do something really successful. I did it. I did it! My God, I did it! I finally made it. My dream has come true. I finally made it. The rest of you losers, goodbye to the loo. Just bear in mind that the contract you signed has a teeny little catch that I guess you failed to catch. I knew it. Knew you'd do it. You'd fake and you'd take. You're a snake, for God's sake. You're to blame. What's your game? I'm sorry you came. It's always the same. We're going to bring a lawsuit. Wait, you old coat. The question is moot. Who the hell gives a hoot? I got a lifetime of loot. Yes, a lifetime of loot. <laughs> I finally made it. My dream has come true. I finally made it. It's the ultimate lazy man's coup. Oh, what a glorious morn. Oh, I could spend it with porno, cause it's just what I'm aching to do. Or I could just go get blotto. That would sure hit the spot. Oh, my dream of all dreams has come true. intellectual property of Variacom, and you are enjoined from ever using it. Reference to yourself. Also, all properties bearing the name Duckman now belong to Variacom, including but not limited to the Duckman Detective Agency. Take her away! I did it again, didn't I? Stupid welfare office. Apparently, they only help people with names. Now look at me. My identity stolen, my agency destroyed. Well, they're not gonna get away with this. The proud name of Duckman has been in my family for generations. I got it from my father, and he got it from his father, and he got it from the Justice Department. I don't care what Variacom says, they're not the boss of me. My name is Duckman, and there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> And again, a contract is a contract. Oh. I'm sorry, Doug... Eric. But look at the bright side. At least you got some money out of the deal. Please, tell me you didn't do anything stupid with the money. Beverly, please. You insult me. If you must know, Muriel, my psychic pal, told me to send the money to her so she could exercise any bad demons that might live within. Thank goodness I still have TV. Mm. I'll stick my finger in here. Careful, Duckman. That wall socket's chock full of electricity. <laughs> Thanks, Oinky. That would have been shocking. You're no dim bulb. Hee <laughs> hee. You know, gang, electricity is great, especially when it comes from the parent company of this network, Variacom. VT, we bring great stuff to you. What the heck are you staring at? <laughs> Kids, you love me? Sure you do. If I die, that'd be sad. <laughs> the only way to keep me alive is to order lots of official Variacom licensed Duckman merchandise. All backed by our exclusive virtual guarantee. And manufactured by boys and girls just like you. 
That is, if you have a distended belly and flies on your lips and work 16 hours a day for some white rice and expired tagamit. <laughs> Remember, kids, tell your parents or legal guardians, if you don't get me duck, man, I won't love you anymore. And then have them call 1-800-1-800-801. Remember, the extra one stands for love. I've never seen anything so thoroughly reprehensible, so utterly without any... Oh, please, Duckman, don't die. Eric, hang up the phone. Oh, wow. Those Variacom Sharpies are good, all right. But maybe the Duckman thing will be a big flopola, and then they'll give me my name back. Don't tell me. Duckmania is sweeping the country. Like Roseanne in a long grass skirt. Don't worry, the artist formerly known as Duckman. It's just a passing fad. One that will pass in approximately 10 years. Of course, then it'll be stamped retro kitsch by the next generation, thus renewing its appeal indefinitely. But how'd they do this so quickly? They only bought my name last week. Variacom made the Duckman phenomenon the cover story on the hundreds of magazines they own. So the hundreds of magazines Variacom doesn't own ran Is Duckman Just Media Hype covers, which really cranked up the media hype. The only non-Duckman cover was Reader's Digest, which went with How to Talk Straight to Your Teenager About Dungarees. Hello? Hi, is Duckman there? Yes, uh, well, uh, I mean, no, no, he, I mean, I mean... <laughs> what the? Bernice, is that you? I don't know. It depends on if I was a complete idiot and sold my name. <laughs> What am I gonna do? They shut down our agency, stole our very livelihood, we're broke! Well, uh, actually, if you recall, I used to play keyboards for a flock of seagulls. Since the 80s are hot again, I rang up Splice, Flebo, Trevor, and the other lads. <laughs> We've got a 28-city tour with men at work without hats. See you in September, Eric. Are you okay? No. No, Bev, I'm great. I'm gonna do what Oinky did. I'll just find a new occupation. Anything is possible. After all, this is America, where anyone can make their dreams come true as long as they're not black. I've begged. I've stolen. God forgive me, I even became an actor. It's no use. I'll have to rely on the Eric Knee Duckman clan learning to live frugally. Oh, this is awkward. Sorry, Dad. Yeah, what can we say? When it comes to rampant consumerism, we're not made of stone. Hey, it doesn't change how we feel about you. Yeah, Dom. I love you. That's love with a capital one. First my name, then my business, now my very home. What am I going to do? Have no fear, Eric! The salvo to the rescue! I like what you've done with the place. The interplay between the empty space and pockets of nothingness is very southwestern. Get to the point. You're right. Well, as your friend, I can't stand to see you suffering like this, and as your neighbor, it makes it a little hard to enjoy my Count Chocula, you know? Get to the point! I got you a job. Really? I had to beat the bushes, pull a few strings, call in some markers, collect on a couple of favors, put my ear to the ground, get rough with my snitches. Well, okay, actually, I just had my assistant make a phone call, but it's the result that counts. Do you have what it takes to turn yourself around? To make your family swell with pride while delighting the world around you? To enter the noblest, most delightful profession of all time? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And tell me, what is your name? Uh, Eric? Wrong! From this day forward, your name is... Duckman! I can't believe Variacom pays all these people to dress up like the former me, and that they run this corporate training center college-type thingy to teach us how to do it. Ah, what the hell? 
If I can't be the real real me, maybe I'll make some dough impersonating an imitation of the imitation real real me. Whatsoever things are known of Duckman, whatsoever things are believed of Duckman, look on these things, so that ye shall know them, and so that ye shall achieve always. can't hear you! Duckman! People have come up to me after my lectures and asked, Dr. Bob, how can I become a Duckman achiever? Please don't go on me, please don't go on me, please don't go on me. Look around you! Come on, everyone! Look at the person to your right! Look to your left! Of the three of you, only two will succeed at Duckman College. The third will excel. Yes, yes I can. Where's the rest of me? Leading with my chin. Woo! But all of you are absolutely vital to the success of this great adventure. From the assistant apprentice janitor's assistant, all the way up to senior vice president in charge of dumping unsafe Duckman products in third world nations. From the busboys at our Duckman Dwa eat till you spew lunch counters, to the man or woman who runs the hydraulic fat extruders at the Duckman bakeries, to the Duckman personal area cleansing technicians at our Duckman home for vegetative senior citizens, to the boy who tastes my food before I eat it. Every single menial mindless job is important because each one of us is Duckman, and Duckman is each one of us, so to speak. What's your name? I'm Duckman! What's your name? Duckman! What's your name? Duck... I mean, um, Eric. Your name is Duckman! I can't, I mean... Uh... Ah! Ah! Oh, stop! Oh. What's your name? Duckman! Yes! Yes, Lord! I am Duckman! I finally made it, my dream has come true, I finally made it, hey, how are you? Nice to see you, I've gotta succeed, I'm gonna suck. <laughs> the company's downsizing, we're all fired. <sighs> Say, wait a minute. We can't give up. Remember what Dr. Bob said? Okay, Dr. Bob said a lot of things, and they're kind of tough to remember. But one thing I know, we're not quitters. We're Duckman. And we don't let little things like being fired get in our way. We never let our little things get in our way. Let them take my job, my home, my family, my partner, my name. They'll never take my... Wait, what's left? Uh, my me! Yes, I've still got me, the original magnificent bastard. I'm back, baby! And that puny little world out there better look out! Cause I'm going to Variacom to get my name back! I'm gonna succeed! He's right! I'm gonna go tell my wife I wanna have sex twice a month! Yeah! And I'm gonna go to NBC and demand new episodes of Cheers! And I'm gonna go home, cover my windows with Bible pages, shave my head, buy some guns, and go kill everyone who ever treated me bad. Yeah! Somewhere in that Rococo phallus of a building is the head cheese of this outfit, and I'm gonna march right in and get my name back. What the? Who are you? What are you doing here? 
Excellent question, Colonel Baltic Von Pennybags. I'm Duckman. Oh, you're one of those Duckman mascots. Boy, we've got to rework those costumes. That's not right at all. This isn't a costume. I am Duckman. Your lackey DeSalvo tricked me into selling me to your company. I was treated like a commodity, like stainless steel adjustable scrotum clamps, or triple X black market German nudist videos, or, uh, that stuff they put in cars to make them go. The point is, for a while there, I lost my identity, my sense of who I am and, and what I stand for. People are not human resources, or workforce units, or intangible assets. They're people, and they want to take pride in what they do. So when they retire, they can say, I did something that mattered, and the people I work for noticed and appreciated it. That was beautiful. Your eloquent speech, filled with homespun common sense and concisely presented, has moved me. Really? Mm. I hereby give you your name back. From now on, you, and only you, are Duckman. But what about the cartoon and the merchandise and everything? We'll just go to the next audience-tested name on our list, Bernice. We should talk. Give me a call later. I'm in the book. And a Duckman! That's right, Duckman! I got my identity back! I got my name back! I finally made it! My dream has come true! I'm Duckman! I'm Duckman! Hey, right. some guy named George S. Aronovitz dropped a wallet full of money! That's me! Right here! I'm George S. Aronovitz! That's my wallet! Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> That's me! Right here. Yippee! I can yay. Great by name. Come on, Charles, don't be chicken. No, we'll not submit to peer pressure. Ah, stop your struggling, Jazz. Just lay back and enjoy a nice, refreshing cigarette. <laughs> Damn you, Mumbo! You've been sneaking cigarettes for weeks now. Frankly, I'm growing tired of this second head smoke. <laughs> Don't get uptight, man. Everybody knows cigarettes make us look mature, sophisticated, and cool. And the best thing about them is they're so relaxing. <laughs> Aunt Bernice, don't you think we're a little old for a timeout? I'd say it's time somebody got a good spanking. No! I was talking about me! This is no time for jokes! This is serious! Bernice, don't you think you're getting a bit carried away? I mean, what red-blooded American boy hasn't snuck a few ciggies, cut a couple of classes, given the home ec teacher an after-class tongue bath? You've led a really interesting life, haven't you? What a long, strange trip it's been. When children pick up bad habits, it's time to take a good hard look at ourselves and place the blame where it obviously belongs, on the cigarette companies. And it's about time somebody taught them a lesson. And now we join the congressional anti-smoking hearings already in progress. I also propose that instead of using cute, cuddly mascots to promote their products, the tobacco companies only employ unappealing spokespeople. For example, instead of, say, Joe Camel, we'll have Sammy Stroke Face. Randy, the respirator, and Carcinomi, the cancer-ridden clown!
<laughs> We're also all familiar with the glamorization of smoking, particularly in old movies and TV shows. Well, I think I've come up with something that finally nips that in the bud. Lights! Here we see Mr. Humphrey Bogart perpetrating the myth that smoking is cool. Play it again, Sam. Now watch what happens when we employ a process called revisionization. His cigarette becomes a nutritious, delicious carrot. Play it again, Sam. Revisionization comes to us from Germany, where the government uses it to block out all evidence of their Nazi past. These measures, along with my plan to banish all smokers to an underground penal colony, are reasonable and rational prop... Some people <gasps> say that smoking is evil. Well, we'd like to ask those people, are parks evil too? The tax revenue collected from tobacco products goes directly into our nation's parks and recreational facilities. So next time you ask someone to snuff out that cigarette, remember, you're snuffing out a child's happiness. Forgive me for splicing my moving picture to the end of yours, ma'am, but as president of one of them so-called evil tobacco companies, I merely wanted to present the other side of the story. Rip out his trachea! String him up by his lungs! <laughs> Has anyone ever told you how pretty you are while in the throes of bloodlust? My name's Walt Evergreen, and I'd like to extend an invitation for you to visit one of my tobacco facilities. I think you'll find that, like it or not, cigarettes are as American as a pie-eating jamboree. <laughs> okay, I'll visit your garden of deadly delights, but I'm bringing my family with me. Because this is who pays the price for your toxic tobacco, Mr. Evergreen. The average normal American family. Hey, it's your loss, baby! What the hell are you staring at? <sighs> Kathy Ireland. Miss Bernice and her kinfolk, welcome to Tobacco Land. It's beautiful! And they're even more beautiful. Your own private assistant, who will happily satisfy each and every one of your personal needs. And you're mine? Wow! Check out the size of the bull weevils on you! Now, I'd be happy to answer any and all questions regarding our little cottage industry, but before we get to the serious stuff, I'd like to give y'all a heap and helping of southern fried hospitality. <laughs> so I turned and said, don't be afraid, Mr. President. With gums that bad, I doubt she'd even have teeth. <laughs> oh, Walt, you're such a brilliant conversationalist. And what a gracious host. I mean, the generosity you've shown us, the food, the gifts, the extremely entertaining holograms of Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Miss Bernice, it's reward enough that you now realize we tobacco industry folks aren't so bad after all. Well, unfortunately, tobacco is. Come again? While I'm certainly grateful for your incredible hospitality, nothing could ever change my mind about the evils of your cursed crop. I hope you understand, Walt. I understand completely. Man, this vacation keeps getting better and better. Ye old bind and boink. Oh, oh, now a little slap and tickle. Now multiple skull fractures with cerebral... Uh, You couldn't keep quiet about the tobacco thing, could you? I was only doing my job. How was I supposed to know Waltz? A little bit country, a little bit Herman Gehring. <laughs> you tobacco thugs may take away our freedom, but remember that nobody, nobody can take away our dignity. 
Listen to the chains sing their happy chain song. Do dee do 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 dee dee dum dum be bop ba da squida. <laughs> Is there someone else we can be shackled to? Quit complaining. Out of all the people and farm animals I can be shackled to, why in the name of all that's nude and oiled and slides up and down a brass pole do I have to be shackled to Grandmama? <laughs> While we're certainly enjoying your little Batan death march, I wish you'd say where you're taking us. Fess up, Walt. What are you gonna do? Beat us? Torture us? Murder us? And miss out on all the irony? No, my sweet lady. I've devised the most insidious plan you could even imagine. You see, I want y'all to pick tobacco. Hey. Ah. Wow, I haven't felt this level of Mason Dixon sexual tension since Bonnie Fife was in the kitchen with Aunt B. Shut, Shut up! up! You all do what I say and everything will go just as smooth as a lung full of mentholated nicotine. Break the rules, and so help me God I'll be all over you like Louie Anderson at a bake sale. And now for the recitation of the rules. Now wait just a... Anyone interrupting the recitation of the rules will spend a day in the box. <gasps> now, as I was saying... Just a ruby redneck minute here. I've got some complaints. First off, where are the topless tantric massage therapists? The bursitis in my soon-to-be tobacco picking right arm hasn't been this inflamed since I bought the Shannon Tweed laser disc box set. Secondly, this tar heel humidity is absolutely disgustifying. How about building an air-conditioned dome with naked, cosmetically augmented trapeze artists overhead, so one could not only pick tobacco without chafing, but also could be delightfully entertained? Thirdly... Congratulations, young fella. You just earned yourself a week in the box. <gasps> Ah, not the box! I'm afraid of tight places! That is to say, certain tight places. <laughs> no! Sweet mother of mercy, not the box! Don't put me in the box! Don't let me in the box! No! Please! Hey. Yeah. When did I get a tattoo there? I'm hot and sweaty! I'm thirsty and nauseous. And I miss Teddy. Oh, we'll be home soon, and you can hug your little teddy bear. Not my teddy, Aunt Bernice. Teddy Kennedy. He invited me to a kegger at the compound. Will we ever get out of here? Of course we will. And you want to know why? Because our neighbors must have noticed we haven't been home for a while, and they're going to do something about it! <laughs> Why, I bet the police are out looking for us right now. <laughs> hey, and let's not forget Corn Fed. He's probably waiting right by the front door till we get back. We're gonna get out of here! I promise! I promise. Oh, if I weren't trying to be coal smoking cigarettes, none of this would have happened. Nobody's blaming you, Mambo. I am! These conditions are inhuman! Ooh. This place is gonna kill us, I tell ya! It's gonna kill us all! Man, this country living is fine tested. Who'd have thought being shoved in a box with your ankles behind your ears could be such a rush? Anywho, I got a few minutes before being shoved back in the box. Got it booked for the high holy days, you know, and... Uh... No offense, team, but I've seen Peppy a looking roadkill. Might I suggest a multivitamin? <laughs> You see, Duckman, this place is killing us. On your feet, Miss Bernice. Break time's over. What? We picked every single leaf of tobacco on this plantation. True, but we still need some guinea pigs to test the addictiveness of our new king-size lights. Walt, please, we're not gonna make it. Guess you should have thought of that before you rode your liberal high horse into town. You and your kinfolk gonna be slaves to the tobacco industry for the rest of your natural lives. <laughs> That's it! I've had it! <gasps> Lousy, stinking screw. Nobody treats me like that and gets away with it. Grandmama. Guess again. Rosie O'Donnell? No! I'll give you a hint. Remember a 
few months back <laughs> when I busted out a death row. And then I pulled a switcheroo with your grandmama, who just so happens to look just like me. <laughs> sure, you caught on and called the cops. But right before they cuffed me, I pulled yet another switcheroo. <laughs> These past few months, I've been pretending to be your grandmama, but it's really been little old me all along. Agnes Del Rooney? Miss me, baby? If you're Agnes, then the real grandmama is riding away in some lice-infested prison cell. Uh-oh, better get going while the going's still good. Move it, Petunia. Yeah! Oh, for God's sake, please get help. to keep up, Butch. Button your lip, Mary. You fake being catatonic for six long months. Then see how easy it is running for your life. Okay, people, listen up. I want a hard target search of every outhouse, beach, house, warehouse, boat, house, smoke, house, club, house, ice, house, hot house, white house, crack house, bath house, dog house, cat house, reptile house, halfway house, slaughter house, haunted house, gingerbread house, and Joe Esther house in the tri swamp area. And people, I want them brought back alive. Oh, who am I kidding? This is the Deep South. Let's bring them back dead. Hey, uh, Dingleheimer, I want to thank you for waiting on me hand and foot these last few months. When I think of all the times I had to shave your shoulders, a trowel boil salve on your hideous white butt, a scrape for Munda cheese off your toenails. I remember a certain little thing you seem to enjoy. Well, sure, live guppy animals are always entertaining. My point, Agnes, is that you stink, both literally and, uh, uh, the other, Tivly. Save your fancy words, college boy. The only way you're gonna impress me is getting us out of East Jerkwaterville. Hmm, I got an idea. Are you sure this is the only way across that stream? It is without getting wet, Fruit Cup. Now quit your yapping and pull your weight. Speaking of weight, things would be a lot easier for me if Planet Agnes didn't have its own massive gravitational pull. Why, I ought to... Have I told you lately that I hate you? Oh, I'm deeply hurt. Please like me, Poindexter. I want so much for you to like me. I'd rather drive cross-country with the road company of rent than spend another second with the likes of you. Them's fighting words, limp wrist. Maybe you'd like to take a swing at me. Come on, mighty Joe Lewis. You want a piece of me? Let's go, milk dud. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away! Yeah. Did somebody punch me, or was that a gentle summer's breeze? Good news, Captain. We gave the bloodhounds one of the old lady's undergarments, and after they stopped convulsing, it looks like they picked up their trail. Well, what do you know? I guess our little rumba broke our charm bracelet. And not a memento too soon. Last thing I need is an attack dog mistaking my hiney for kibble and bits. Thanks for everything, Aggie. The beatings, the put-downs, the incessant loogie hacking. You shall be missed. Old Bagnus, stormtroopers right around the bend. Wouldn't this be the time to bust a move? I can't feel my legs. Como? 
My legs, you dumb Dora. I guess I fell funny back there. Well, you gotta do something. Roll, bounce, levitate. Put a fork in me, Skeezix. This bird's done. Still, I could think of worse ways to go. Wanna hear something funny? These past few months have been some of the best times of my life, being part of a family and all. Heck, if I had a family like yours, maybe I'd have gone on to become something respectable. You know, like a, a forger or an extortionist, instead of this old lost soul. But what are you waiting for? Go save your family. Go on, beat it. Uh, no offense, Ignatz, but I ain't in the mood for sex. Mm, what? Stop taking you with me, and I don't want to hear any more lip. Comprendo? Hard human targets in sight. Fire at will. <laughs> <laughs> you two might as well save your last breath. You see, we're the tobacco industry. We've taken on doctors, lawyers, presidents, and we're still making more money than ever. Ain't nobody gonna help you now. Tony Randall? Good day, madam. May I be of... Young man, this is a smoke-free zone. <laughs> Mr. Randall, I happen to be president of one of them so-called evil tobacco companies. And he's trying to kill us! Of course he is. The tobacco companies are vampires, preying on the lungs of our children and the circulatory system of our society. He means kill us now. I've been dreaming of this moment, Mr. Anti-Smoking New York City thespian. Well, I'll bet you're probably Jewish, too. Be that as it may. Ika bika boo, my dear. Ika bika boo. I don't believe it. Tony Randall turned them into bugs. Orthoptera locustidae, to be precise. Although you probably know them as tobacco eating locusts. Fly on, insatiable little ones. Be fruitful and multiply and devour every last tobacco plant on this planet. Holy tamale. How'd you do it, Tony? While people always think of me as Felix Unger or Jonathan in Pillow Talk, they always seem to forget I was also the star and technical consultant of... The Seven Faces of Dr. Lu. The Seven Wazes of Dr. Hooses? It's a renter. Available at your local Blockbuster. Make it a Blockbuster night. for busting the tobacco industry. All because you got busted for smoking a cigarette. Ironic, isn't it? Don't you ever shut up. You know, actors for a psycho thrill-killing convicted felon, now conveniently pardoned by the president, you ain't half bad. You ain't too shabby yourself, liver lips. How's about a toast to celebrate our return to civilization? Municipal Health Code 1914 expressly prohibits the consumption of alcoholic beverages without posting proper health warnings. Duckman, Agnes, I'm afraid you're under arrest. Vika? Boo!
Where should I begin? Perhaps you could tell me why you're here. Because of someone named Duckman. Duckman. Ah, yes. You know him? About half my practice is people who came into contact with Duckman. He's my partner. Oh, my God. I'll give you an extra hour. It all started last week. I remember everything as clearly as if it were going to be reenacted right before our eyes. <laughs> there it is. There's the ghost staring at me from inside the picture frame. It's nothing but pure evil, glaring with hate in its horrible, disgusting, twisted, ugly face. Duckman, that's my reflection in the mirror. Oh. By the way, Corny, on a completely different subject, you ever considered a snout job? Duckman, we've been sitting here for hours and no ghost has appeared. I tell you, someone's been haunting me all week! Actually, once when I was working late, I saw a spectral vision and... Sorry, I don't follow you. A spectral vision is... No, working late. It's not another masturbation reference, is it? The sense is getting pissed. My encounter with the undead was an experience so profound and moving that... Hold that thought! It's crapper time! Hold your horses, excretion boy. I got pimples to squeeze. Dark man. All right, all right. <laughs> Boo already. Uncle Mo! You were expecting Patrick Swayze? Mo Dorkin, the obnoxious uncle who I tried to kick out of the house when he was dying of heart cancer? Frankly, I'd forgotten most of the episode, though now you brought it back with that incredibly subtle piece of exposition. Now listen up. I have a message from your father. He said to say hi, how you doing? He just got killed. What? I can't believe it. Have I ever lied to you since dying? Plus he said to say some character named King Chicken did it. King Chicken murdered my father? Yes, murdered. And if you got any tamales at all, you'll bop them back. Okay, see ya. As always, it's been a pain. Ow! Stupid corporeal world. I can't believe it. Gone. Gone forever. Duckman, are you familiar with the term anal retentive? At that? My father! The ghost said King Chicken murdered him. How could King Chicken do that? I mean, aside from trying to wipe each other off the face of the earth, we've always gotten along fine. I even called a truce so we could slobber around Bernice the last few weeks. And now I gotta kill him! I know. I'll pretend to be insane. Your plan to avenge your father's murder is to act crazy, thus convincing the murderer to admit his guilt so you can murder him? Brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant doesn't begin to describe it. Nicely put. Now go home and don't come back till the plot needs explaining again. Yes, sir. Congresswoman Bernice, tell me again what it's like working under Dick Gebhardt. Oh, King Avery? <laughs> Are you sure you're not married anymore? Bernice, I thought I explained. My wife, honey, <laughs> died again. I thought I saw her come out of the house yesterday. Ah, well, you see, she died after being struck by a very rare kind of lightning bolt, which has the documented medical effect of causing the victim to occasionally seem as if she's come back to life. But not really. That's so sad. <laughs> Make it better, Bernie. <laughs> oh, I believe I found the bee spot. No, look, it's Duckman, and he's... Oh, God, it's horrible. I can't watch. He's reading a book. Yes, it turns out these are fascinating devices. Without a modem, you can instantly access information merely by turning these ultra-thin pages. What are you, nuts? As a matter of fact... Yes! I've got Looney Tunes, a registered trademark of the Warner Brothers Corporation. So Cluckface here can talk about anything evil he's done and not worry about me. Duckman, old bean, I have changed. Tyrannizing the world and being the embodiment of pure evil is for the young. That's why I've gotten into a new line, making toys for children whose parents don't have the time or energy to actually deal with them and are desperately hoping a new electronic gigaw will keep the little bastards off drugs for another month. What a marvelous idea. Bernicious, isn't that simply a marvelous idea? Yuck! That was a close one. I hate those, uh, invisible vampire telephone repairmen from Mars. Yeah. Duckman, perhaps this is a good time to tell you some wonderful news. Given that my wife is more or less, but definitely more than less, 
dead, your sister-in-law and I are contemplating something all couples dream of. Doing it in the clothes hamper? Marriage, you vomit-colored vermin! Just think, Duckman. That will make you my brother-in-law once removed. Well, that's marvelous news, Bernice, to me. Now you'll get to spend the rest of your lives watching while one of you gets so monstrously fat and the other so hideously thin that together you'll look like the number 10 before you start to sag and crack and fall apart and lose your hair, teeth, hearing, eyesight, and control of your bowels. Will you find a landing field? Oh. Huh. Hmm. Duckman is acting even stupider than usual. Yes, he'll never discover my dread secret. What secret is that, Kingy? Oh, for a moment I forgot you existed. Um, my secret fear that he's plotting against me. Oh, if only there were people who could find out. People even stupider than Duckman. Yes, your beloved chieftain has been acting in an eccentric fashion of late. In fact, I'd consider it a great personal favor if you would try to surreptitiously determine if he is genuinely demented or just stupid. Well, as long as it's for his own good. Oh, it is on my, oh, what's the word? Honor? I will be, as soon as you leave. Oh, but. <laughs> I could kill him now while he's got his hand in Bernice's. Ah! Hello, Mr. Duckman. Mr. Chicken asked us to ask you if you were really crazy or just faking. But he wants us to ask in a way so you don't know what we're doing or that he asked us to do it. Can we rephrase that? No need. After all, would a crazy man do this? <laughs> You're killing those little bears. Oh, no. It's Fluffy and Uranus. They love it. But there are people who are cruel. People who kill people's fathers, which I am against. And then have sex with their sister-in-law, which I'd kind of admire if it didn't involve Bernice. What a piece of crap is man. Just thinking about him makes you want to puke your guts out. You're crazy! That's right! Tell your friends! Everything's going according to plan. Wait a minute. What plan? What the hell am I doing? For once in my life, I'm slightly confused. Corny! Hello, dark man. Perhaps I can help. Think about it. A ghost says your father was killed by a king who's in love with a woman close to you, so you feign insanity to get him to admit his guilt. Does that remind you of anything? Yes, it seems awfully similar to what I've been doing for the last three hours! <sighs> hey, you really here? Yes, that's a little invention I'm working on, the personal digital bubble. It appears to have no practical application other than impressing chicks. Returning to my point, the story I recounted is from a play by William Shakespeare. Duckman, there is no explanation for what I'm about to say, but you appear to be trapped inside the plot of Hamlet. Listen, corn stuffing. This isn't some off-Broadway flopola by a limey loser who never sold a screenplay. This is real life! In an animated sort of way. I gotta think. Hand me those photos, would you? The ones from the Scandinavian porno palace? Yeah, the Prince of Denmark. So, what did this ham bone do next? He wrote a play to trick the king into admitting his guilt. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Wait, no, I, I think I'll do the same thing. Cornfed? Yes? Why did you stop? You were telling the story of how Duckman's life inadvertently mimicked Hamlet's, and you just stopped and said nothing for exactly two minutes. Why? Uh, no reason. So, two minutes later, I had gone home to rest for my next appearance when Duckman was surprised by yet another horrifying vision. I pray your only homicidal maniacs come to butcher me and my family and not my boys dressed up like clowns. Hi, Dad. No! We're rehearsing for a tribute to the school clown who recently passed away. Yelnik? Yelnik honked? I can't believe it. I had him booked between halves at the steak and slosh cream corn wrestle fest next week. Hey, what's that? Nothing. 
Certainly not the clown's skull dug up and laminated in a desperate attempt to avoid flunking art class. Cool. Look at that. Even the plaque is wacky. Poor Yelnik. I knew him well. What a moron. Where's your fake vomit now, funny man? One minute you're on top of the world making 15 bucks a pop at birthday parties, sticking rubber snakes down little girls' underwear. <laughs> the next, you're munching a worm sandwich while frat boys tip sleeping cows on your grave. What the hell am I talking about? Dodd, perhaps you'd like to be alone with your rapidly deteriorating mental condition. No. In fact, I just spent two minutes writing a play which you guys can help me perform for King Chicken. Any questions? Yes, when's the English translation come out? Oh, <laughs> it is to laugh. Now, a couple of tips on acting. First, the saliva question. Yes, it's in there, and yes, it's gonna come out. But try to spit away from the women. Got that from Pacino. Second, if you hit a rough spot, yank out your doodle and spin it around. Tends to distract the critics. The only part of me that feels uplifted is my stomach. <laughs> Dog man! Kids! I was just helping Kingy with some... grooming! Yes, this hair is a constant struggle. Well, if you're done getting plucked, I have something surprising to tell you. If it has to do with those missing cheerleaders, we're way ahead of you. I, Duckman, have written a play. Kill me, kill me now. Can I wait till after the show? And you might pay special attention to the plot, which may remind you of a real-life situation, one you're personally familiar with. A story very much like you yourselves may have lived. Something almost exactly the same as... Will you get on with it? Ladies and gentlemen, the Mercury Theater of the Living Room presents Ching Kitchen and the Big Fat Slut by Duckman. Ajax, where's your costume? Okay, remember, the key to this play is to be subtle. I am Ching Kitchen, and I am an evil killing machine, and I'll evilly kill anyone who says I'm not. Oh, Kingy! You are the handsomest evil killing machine I have ever met! Bernouse! I can't wait to throw my minimal charms at your groin and hope you don't kill any members of my family till I am done booting your hard drive. She takes off her top. Beverly was supposed to play that part. Halt! It is I, Drake Man. I take off my top in dismay. Just skip over the sex parts. Now, while I wipe off the cooking oil, for what have you come here for? To stop this evil demon from defiling the sanctity of whatever. It's a first draft. Stop now, or I shall use more big words at you. Forget it! I am so craven and cowardly and stupid and smelly. All I can do is shoot you in the back. Bang! Oh. <sighs> Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Duckman, were you doing a soliloquy? No, I'm against drugs, Corny. I was just talking to myself. You're still living Shakespeare's play with you as Hamlet, King Chicken as the King, Bernice as Gertrude, Fluffy... Hello? Not caring? But perhaps only by solving the mystery of the play can we hope to break you free. Fine. So what's it mean? It is perhaps the first psychological portrait of a fully modern man, in the sense that... I meant in two words. Revenge destroys. Well, duh. But it often destroys the revenger. That's why I believe that convincing society to scorn the transgressor is the best revenge. Yeah, but there's nothing like a good old-fashioned stoning. Duckman, do you know how Hamlet ends? Everyone hugs? Hamlet is a tragedy. If I'm right and you've become trapped inside Shakespeare's plot, unless we can find a way to break you out, you will die. Yes, so what happened next? <sighs> Two minutes, right? It was clear to me that Duckman was in great danger, and to save his life, we had to escape from King Chicken, leaving immediately, not allowing ourselves to be distracted by anything he says or does, no matter how clever. Duckman, got a minute? Sure. Is that a Game Boy? No. For legal reasons, this is not a Game Boy by Nintendo. This is something entirely different. The, um, Game Guy. Wow! And it's mine? One for each. Say, you know what would be good to clean, as far as you know, non-lethal fun? You two could have a contest! I am widely known as the world's foremost expert on pushing things with his fingers. The AAA battery hasn't been born that can count the ninjas I've left headless. Good. Look them over, feel them, touch them, make sure they come into contact with as much skin area as possible. Little did they know that I have coated the surface of these toys with laughing doom. A chemical I've invented which induces laughter so ceaseless and hearty that it stops only with death. There's something suspicious about King Chicken's sudden and unlikely generosity, not to mention the way he's talking to the camera. I wonder if these devices contain some hidden property which could be of danger to Duckman and or myself. Two hermaphrodites go into a bar. Wait a minute. If these game guys were the equivalent of the poison-tipped swords used by King Claudius in the duel between Hamlet and Laertes, why did you accept them? You want logic or you want to hear the end? Go on. As Duckman and I took our places in the living room, I began to feel that my concerns were justified. <laughs> Cornelingus, prepare for doom! Duckman, choose your intellectually vapid carpal tunnel-inducing weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Alien Terminator! <laughs> Am I missing something? I don't understand half the jokes I say. On your marks! Get set! Die! I mean... Go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm suffering a fatal heart attack! Oh. The destiny of all who do something King Chicken doesn't like. I mean, oh dear. Dad! Are you dead? I'm going first, boys! Just remember one thing! Don't let anyone ever dig up the backyard! <laughs> Corn fed! <laughs> Chickens fall down! <laughs> Kingy, are you responsible for this? Uh, who else? Duckman, do you remember having a toothache last week? My regular dentist was arrested for listening. There was a substitute. You? <laughs> Damn you, chicken! You charged me $80! I can't! Two bicuspids! Also, while you were under the gas, I planted a series of post-hypnotic suggestions, including this one. Dark man! Hi! Yeah, the rooster's right. I'm a figment of your pathetic imagination. Does this mean my father's still alive? If you call that living. So listen, I'm out of here. I got a date with the head of Jane Mansfield. Anywho, I knew I would succeed. And I have! Oh, yeah? Egad! Exactly! Suspecting Game Guy treachery, I used these transparent gloves to prevent us from touching the poison surface. That's right. Without these gloves, touching this would have brought certain... Hmm. Doom! <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, one last minute plot twist second. Am I to understand that your attentions were all just part of some stupid and consequential plan to kill Duckman? Quick, we have to find a way to dilute the chemical. I've got an idea! <laughs> <laughs> Duckman, we've escaped from the play. We've changed the ending. Instead of everyone dying, we've ostracized the wrongdoer through the sanctifying power of derisive laughter. <laughs> Wait till our English teacher hears about this. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less, which have solicited, the rest is silence. Okay, now you can't expect me to believe Duckman said that. In fact, I'm beginning to doubt this entire story. Well, maybe it didn't happen exactly like that, but the only way we could get this episode's sex and violence past the V-chip was to hide behind a cultural icon like Hamlet, which, if it were written today, would itself be censored. And it worked. Our show is done. The villains wept. The good guys won. We did our best. Pulled out the stops. Let's all rejoice. And take off our caps. In the criminal justice system, there are two separate but equally important groups, the police and prosecutors who apprehend and try the offenders, and the idiotic defendants who take up the court's time with their self-serving blather. These are their stories. Now, Judge Keaton gave us special permission to observe his court today, so best behavior, okay? So, she hit the switch and sent a million volts to the leprechaun's pot of gold. There was smoke and cool sparks, and the little creep's head went kapow! But, in Leprechaun 6, we find out that that was a leprechaun clone. And the real leprechaun... Mr. Duckman, you've now acted out five leprechaun movies, six puppet master movies, and nine maniac cop movies. Yeah, yeah, I know. There were ten maniac cop flicks. But, real M-Cop fans don't count number eight, which totally violated the integrity of the series. <laughs> What does that have to do with the land fraud charges against you? Bottom line, in a world of psycho zombies and pumpkin heads and killer puppets who drill your eyeballs with their little screw hats, am I really such a bad guy? Just because a few of my customers got buyer's remorse over the houses I sold them. I still believe in a place where overcrowding is never a problem. I still believe in a town called Chernobyl and in a planned community called Chernobyl Vista Heights. I find you guilt. Put that peeve on pause, my lud. I have proof that I'm innocent. <whistles> Letters! Thousands of them, all addressed to a guy who'd never commit fraud. Santa, delivered by the United States Postal Service to me, proving that I am Santa. Order! Even if this were relevant, which it isn't. These aren't addressed to Santa, you idiot. They're addressed to Satan. Stupid post office. Your eminence, please instruct the jury to disregard. For the 19th time, there is no jury. <laughs> wow, I knew I was drunk, but I must be drunk. Woohoo! Regrettably, my liege, a jury of decent, hardworking, system hating African Americans was essential to my defense strategy. So I must take a mulligan and officially change my story. I now claim I was rendered incompetent by a known medical condition, NHL fever. If this state's three strikes law hadn't cramped our prisons full of shoplifters, I'd still be able to send murderers and felons and you to jail. But I can't. Yes, I'm going to Disney World. Nina, 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 Nina. You put you down, down, and thrust your pelvis. Huh, thrust your pelvis. Huh, thrust your pelvis. Please, huh, you degenerate lout. Huh. Huh? 
You've shown galling contempt for this court, for me, but worst of all, for the law. In front of some mouthless high honor students that I invited. What must they think of the law now? What lesson did they... Uh, Judge, FYI, singled out starts in 20 minutes and I'm way across town. That's it! I'm making an example of you. I hereby sentence you to 5,000 hours of community service at Malthus High School starting today. We adjourn. Beth! If he's not gone in 15 seconds, kill him! <sighs> 5,000 hours? That's 45 minutes! Actually, it's about seven months. What? Damn metric system. Please, I hope you kids understand that what that man did... Ow! Someone call an ambulance! Wow, Malthus High. That school is located in a ghetto cesspool full of crime and poverty and despair. Oh, Malthus! That's half a block from my house. Yeah, the commute's a breeze. Sweet. Good thing I know how to handle street kids with their corduroys and lip gloss and pudding. Duckman, it's possible your perceptions of high school may be a little off. Wrong, coronary. I learned all about high school, from movies to Mr. Tibbs with Love and Lay Mines Dangerous and the Blackboard Diaries. Movies have taught me how to handle a classroom. From Jeff Belushi to Goose Gossett Jr. to Tom Berenstain, movie guys know the best way to deal with these punks is to beat the crap out of them. Then, when one of them molests the pretty lady teacher, that's the one you kill. Hmm. I forgot the name of the, the, the teacher that I'm subbing for. Uh, he, got, he got hit in the head at the courthouse. Uh, Salgado. Right, right, thanks. Goodbye. Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, no air here. Hello? I help. Hi. Name's Duck Man, checking in for my community service. Where do I go? Oh! Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes. Yes. Holland Pounder no rip. Yes. Hey. Where do I go? Community service? I'm Duckman. I used to have rough sex with your mother. Truck drivers would pay to watch. Hey. Oh, great. Unless Commander Mumbo from the planet Jumbo goes to Berlitz on his lunch break, I'm screwed. Stupid judge, sitting so high and mighty in his courtroom. Who's he to pass judgment? Oh! Got in the room! Yes! Salgado! Ow! Salgado! Ow! You substitute! Substitute! One for one! Hey! One for one! Yes, room one for one. Yes, thank you. <laughs> substitute. Belly the beast, huh, Judge? Probably thinks this sweltering cesspool of drugs, gang violence, and irresponsible sex will be more than I can handle. Sounds kind of appealing, actually. Well, since our substitute is late today, maybe we should review the list of positively charged radicals in the hydrogen cycle. <laughs> Whoa, are you all right? You got hit pretty hard. Back off of that, homie! If you want the pipe, maybe I'll give you the pipe! Anybody else want some? I just popped a freshness seal and a new can of butt kick. So all I need is an excuse. You fly. Duck man? Hey, you're that guy from court this morning. The one we told you about who played the judge like a vintage Steinway and talked his way out of some serious jail time. Man, are you all right? I don't like people talking about me. You're lucky I never hit a lady who makes my Noam Chomsky. Degrading sexist remark noted. Oh, yeah. Who's real now, huh, Dexter? This scene is real gone, baby. I am into it all, dig. Oh, very hep, very hep. Do you need a shot of insulin or something? I don't do that crap. I'm clean. What are you into, hmm? Shiners? Boom Booms? Rippos? Calistogan Canoe Wax? Sanuvian Swamp Weed? Ladder Batter? Bud Bugs? Spot Foxies? Or is Booker Sugar your lady? 
Look, we just want to study hard, get good grades, and go to college. Ooh, easy, kid. I don't know what all that is code for, but keep back, because I am am what it am not, dig. Because I am. <laughs> I got a feeling this guy ain't gonna be taking us through the hydrogen cycle. It's lost in action. Until action lost to Spurger. Duckman! For the last few days, I've been doing everything I can to try and get through to you kids. But you were too busy boosting your grade point averages, researching your end-of-term projects, and volunteering for school outreach programs. Now, with the final insult, I find this. You kids disgust me. Look at you, frittering away your formative years on good citizenship and improving your minds when you should be outstripping BMWs and learning the rudiments of credit card fraud. Ew, biology, calculus. Calculusers? I submit that you kids don't know the first thing about the real world. Are you serious? We're all at the top of the state percentiles. Oh, yeah? Let's say I got five apples here. Maria asks me for 20% of my apples. How many apples do I have left? Oh, that's easy. Four apples. Wrong! The answer is five! No one gets 20% of my apples unless I see some sort of kickback. You wash my back, I wash yours. Which, incidentally, is a lesson I plan to cover with the girls next Tuesday. Please do the reading. Mr. Duckman, that is not how we do things here. Yeah, we're laying the foundation for some fast-track careers and big-time opportunities. Why should we listen to you? <laughs> Careers. <laughs> Opportunities. Don't be ridiculous, girls. It's men who have all the real power in this world. You just sit there and look pretty. But, Mr. Duckman, women are valuable and equal members of our society. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. You're so whipped. You don't even realize that the other kids would be scared stiff if you'd only use your physical size to intimidate them. From now on, your new threatening bully name will be Skunk. He doesn't need some equivalency school dropout messing with his self-esteem. Ah, uh, Luis. You're the ringleader. If I can reach you, the others just might follow. What'll it take, mi hermano? Bootleg cigarettes? Fake ID? Eight tracks? Why are you even here? I'm here because I'm concerned about your welfare. All this fancy book learning is setting you kids up for a sucker punch. What happens when you finally hit the mean streets with your diplomas and find out the only jobs available involve dressing up in frightening plastic clown heads taking burger orders at the local drive-thru? So, you got a better idea? I just might. I want you kids to follow the simple principles that made this country great. Why did the Founding Fathers fight for their independence as soon as taxes got too high? Why did we force the Indians onto worthless tracts of land, only to kick them off onto even more worthless tracts of land as soon as the first drop of crude oil was discovered? And why did our own government trade arms for hostages, for narcotics for hostages, for arms, with the very same drug cartels they're supposed to be fighting? Anyone? Skunk! Because the American system may be bad, but it's the best we have? Quaint notion, but wrong! Because we're keeping the world safe for freely elected democracy. Blah, 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 whatever you said. Damn it, kids! Quit thinking rationally and open your eyes. I've got to make you kids understand! <sighs> Are you saying that the big guns go where the big money sends them, and that afterwards the dudes that win these wars get to write the cleaned-up history we read in these textbooks? Actually, I, I thought it had something to do with defective breast implants, but your ranch is good, too. People, take out your textbooks and turn to chapter one. And tear out those pages! Tear out the confusing squiggly marks that cover those pages! Free your minds! Your butts should follow! Kids, you've taken your first steps into a much smaller world. But there's still so much you need to know. Hence, I forged your parents' signatures on some permission slips so that a few of my most remedial students can hit the town for a little down-and-dirty real-life experience. You're in my classroom now. Thank you.
had a really great time today, Mr. Duckman. The rewards are all mine, kids. But we lost a lot of time today. We were supposed to be studying for the college boards next week. That's right. We'll have to make up for it with some serious cram time. Damn it! Haven't you kids learned anything? Studying is for suckers! How the hell are we supposed to pass the test if we don't study? The old-fashioned American way. Duckman, I found the answer sheet. Yes! We're going to Disney World! Let's get out of here. Get away! Mr. Duckman, throw the rope up! Sorry, son. That would cost me valuable seconds of escape time. Think of this as your final lesson. And remember, when you arrive in prison, attach yourself to the biggest, most dangerous con you can find. You don't want to end up as just anyone's bitch. Hasta luego! One, two, seven on the game. This school takes detention very seriously. Wow, you're corn fed! Peru's legendary forward! You powered that team to three World Cups! Four World Cups, but then the hamstring went. Now I mainly work as Duckman's partner. He sent me to get you out of here and to assure you that he will do anything, anything at all, to clear you. He'll admit the break in was all his idea? Some good news. I met with the vice principal, Dr. Akonian, and he agreed to release you until the hearing. Unless Duckman confesses, that's all I can do. Man, that duck is one big rat. No one dast blame this man. No one. He's complex. It's hard for him to separate his craven, cowardly side from his disloyal, selfish side. Hmm. If that's true, I may have a plan. Cornfed, come in. Quickly. Uh, did you? They're in a lot of trouble. Oh, that's bad, of course. That that kind of trouble is just the worst possible. But they, uh, they made their own bed. I had no idea they... But they say you knew. You knew because you planned it. Oh, that's... Uh, no, no, no. I never knew. I couldn't know. That would be wrong. Against school rules. It's just... We know you didn't know. But they're liable to say you did. To make accusations. And that's just it. You you know I did it, I know I did it, but that jerk Keaton doesn't know. No one knows. No one could. No. They could. They look at you and see what they want to watch. They look at me and know it's the wrong channel. Pray with me, Cornfed. What would Lucas Tanner do? Or the White Shadow? Gabe Kaplan? Or Karen Valentine? Or, uh, uh, Matt Waters? Martell. Who's there? Oh, you. You disagree with me, I suppose, about the way thing with the breaking. You mean the one you planned? The one you made us do? Well, yes, yes, I uh, planned it, yes. But they, they, you see, wouldn't understand. Hey, you know, I did it. But that jerk Keaton doesn't know. No one knows. I can't confess. I just don't want to get in trouble. Unless it's trouble with honor. Sorry. God bless you all! Then, <laughs> in the movie Living Dead 8, we uh, learned that the government is infecting people with the zombie virus and turning them into flesh-eating special forces units, which... Woo! Mr. Duckman, as president of the school board, I can't tell you how pleased I am to be presiding over the termination of your community service. Before I send you back to my courtroom and the criminal conviction you so richly, richly deserve, do you have any evidence that doesn't relate to some gory splatter flick? Only the example and guidance I've tried to provide for this great bunch of young people, Judge. Right, kids? 
You know I did it, I know I did it, but that jerk Keaton doesn't know, no one knows. Is it too late to take another mulligan? Duckman, what you did to these kids was beyond reprehensible. You're a danger to the moral health of this entire community, and as such, I... Wait! Your Honor, may I speak? I object. Your Honor, this boy is underage, and hence, any testimony he gives about me cracking open a parking meter to give him change for a condom machine is completely inadmissible. I'll allow the testimony. Your Honor, everyone knows that Duckman is the lowest brand of scum. Objection. Not everyone knows that. Please interrupt again, so I can have you bound and gagged. But, Your Honor, who has Duckman actually harmed? Not us. In fact, no one else has ever helped us quite like Duckman. This man taught us to make the most of every opportunity, to cover our butts at all costs, and finally, to tape an incriminating conversation and use it to betray those theorists to us. He showed us how the educational system does little more than prepare its graduates to work the deep fry station at a burger joint. But he did more than open our eyes to the uphill battle we have ahead of us. He taught us that no matter what horrors lie in store for us, we don't ever, ever want to be like him. Your Honor, Dogman taught us these things because he cared for us. And I say that if caring for kids is a crime, then pronounce Dogman guilty. But no matter what your decision, he'll always be a hero to us. <laughs> In light of the new evidence, I declare Duckman not guilty on all charges. <laughs> but to ensure that Duckman never sets foot near this school again, I'm terminating the remainder of his community service and ordering him to maintain a distance of at least four miles from all students. Your Honor, I leave here with more than the hundreds of dollars in school supplies I've stuffed into my briefcase. I leave here with the love and respect of a great bunch of kids. And I promise them that the lessons they taught me will remain in my heart forever. God bless you all! Mr. Duckman? Friggin' hoodlums. Kill the puppets who drill your eyeballs with their little screw hats.
Mr. Ajax, that was a little too close for comfort. Sorry, Captain. I had to divert the power from the main reactor to heat up this hungry man Romulan Salisbury steak dinner. I'd heard tales of Simulac 12's resemblance to 20th century Earth, but I had no idea what a god-awful suckfest it was. You think the Federation would mind if we turned it into an extra-large asteroid belt? <laughs> You're uh, unusually quiet, Mr. Confed. Don't you have any of your famous Vulvan observations to share with us? Just one. I suggest we stop buying our transporters at Kmart. Space. The final frontier. Duck Man! These are the voyages. Duck Man, I'm talking to you! Of the Starship Enterprise, it's five year mi- This is no time for your freak out beat poetry. We have an emergency! What's up, Lieutenant Bernhora? Bernhora! I'm picking up a distress signal from a colony on the far side of the quadrant. They're running out of supplies. They're, they're dying! Wish I could help, but I've got a crisis of my own. I just scarfed down a handful of Klingon Suvlaki, and I gotta run to the little commander's room to give new meaning to the term Captain's Lag, if you catch my drift. And if you come too close, you will. <laughs> Captain's Lag. <laughs> Out of my way, Ironside! Will someone please take Commander Pike Mama back to her quarters for her hourly intestinal decrusting? Ah, for crying out loud, enough with the buzzer! Message received! Mr. Charleskov, how long before we arrive at the crybaby colony? Yeah, at present speed, five hours and eleven minutes, Captain. I just hope we can reach them in time. They always exaggerate these distress calls. You get there and the horrible plague engulfing the planet turns out to be eight guys with herpes. Humana, humana, hawa! What I wouldn't give to neutralize her shields, divert power to my forward thrusters, lock my sensors on her coordinates, and fire the old photon torpedo. Who be she? That's the leader of the dying colony, you turd tufted Trigonian tapeworm! According to my scan of the planet, Captain, it's populated entirely by a couple thousand lonely, horny, triple X babes who are HOT hot. I see. Red alert! Red alert! Whoop factor 11! Mr. Ajax, give us everything you've got. There's no more power, Captain. <laughs> By all that's holy, I vow to do everything in my power to save those desperate young breasts. I mean inner thighs. I mean women. Ah, hell, breasts and thighs. To infinity and... Different franchise, sir. Damn your evolving logic. Captain's log. <laughs> Star date 90210. After a light breakfast, we beam down to the planet's surface. For my landing party, I chose First Officer Mr. Cornfed, Medical Officer Art Bones McSalvo, and Expendable Crewman Fluffy and Uranus. As purely extraneous cast members, Fluffy and Uranus's sole purpose is to be killed upon arrival, thus allowing the rest of us to get on with the damn story. Out of hell with it! That's odd. While the leader claimed to be running out of supplies, this planet is in reality a cornucopia of plant life and vegetation. Perhaps it was the only way to get you here. I am Aurora. Aurora Abramowitz. <gasps> Welcome to the pleasure planet. My people derive great pleasure performing acts which give you great pleasure. Simply ask for anything of a pleasurable nature, and it's our pleasure. Kids, you can stuff the Prime Directive where the solar system don't shine. We're talking orbital orgy! Careful, Captain. This may be a trap. Oh, of course. A trap! That's what's happening here. We're trapped! A planet of mouth-wateringly gorgeous, horny women want us to pleasure them in every bizarre, self-indulgent manner we can think of, and it's a trap! Why couldn't I see it? As you can see, Aurora, my crew can use a little R&R. &R. It's our pleasure. Mmm. Ooh. Con chicken. Duck man. Does this mean the sex is off? So. Captain Eric Tiberius Duckman, we meet again. Khan Chicken, you magnificent space bastard! You'll never get away with this! 
The unconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal height, and courage never to submit or shield. Milton. Oh, yeah? There was a young lady from Rojab. Silence! Don't you see? It had to come to this, Duckman. Chu and I represent the polarity of existence. Chu are light, and I am darkness. Chu are life, and I am death. Chu are hooty, I the blowfish. Not the band, but the poison ones you get in restaurants, you know? Anywho, this universe ain't big enough for both of us. So, I shall now annihilate you in the most brutal and melodramatic way possible. The Sexy Eel. It will bore into your cerebral cortex, inflicting an agony both cruel and exquisite. Feed, my pet. Hey, my sinuses feel great. Did I sell these at Petco? Next time I employ a parasite that lives off brains, I will use it on someone who has one. I'll be back. Different franchise, sir. I don't care. I'm evil. <laughs> He's not really a people person, is he? We gotta escape before El Pollo Loco gets back. It's time to haul out the famous Duckman charm. Oh, Goyles! <laughs> Can I score the space hubba jubba or what? And I'm free shackle. Most illogical. Uh, this time I gotta go with you. No, not the Valda nerve pinch! Oh. I know a variation of that, except it only works on the prostate. Damn it! Why hasn't the Enterprise sent a search party? Who the hell is in charge up there? <laughs> is it possible for us to pop a wheelie? Logic dictates that if we head to the surface, the ship's scanners can locate us. Screw logic! My very human intuition tells me we're sure to find daylight by going into this ominous pitch-black cavern. Uh, Houston, we got a problem. Different franchise. Shut up! Damn it, Eric! What is it? <laughs> Khan Khan chicken, chicken created, created a duplicate, duplicate duck, duck man. man. A fascinating dilemma. Which is the real duck man? What are you rubes waiting for? I'm 100% pure virgin duck man. As your commanding officer, and for purposes of Emmy consideration, lead actor in a primetime animated series. Thank you. I order you to blow Bozo the Clone here to Kingdom Crumbs. Then start blasting the hell out of everyone else you can. I want killing and lots of it. And if either one of you tries to wussy out, kill him too. No, I am the real duck man, but I insist you not shoot the imposter. He's still one of God's creatures, and we must treat him with respect, consideration. Good call. Gee, thanks. Your validation means oh so much to me. Is he dead? Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a rodeo clown! Well, I'm not a rodeo clown. Who's Jim? Fine! Have it your way! I'm a rodeo clown, and you're not Jim! That is most illogical. <laughs> okay, fun stuff, but uh, where were we? Oh yeah, running like hell. Set your butts on hustle, space cadets. I got me an appointment with a 40 of Romulan mold and a diaper full of triples. The only appointment you have, Captain Duckman, is with death. I considered many cool ways to destroy you. Weird plastic things that stick to your back, giant flesh-eating clouds, even a big molecular destruction chamber that I'm having custom-made at a place in Van Nuys. But then sometimes you want something simple and brutal. Death by phaser. Your phaser.
Goodbye forever, Duckman. That is most... uh... weirdo. We gotta get out of here! But how? Captain Duckman, paging Captain Duckman, white courtesy insignia. Three to beam up. Okay, any mail for me while I was out? Sir, we found an alien's job away. It has no money, but it can work off its passage as a tailor. Make it so. Captain's log. <laughs> Red alert! In the words of the Russian playwright Sean O'Casey, we've been hit. It's Khan's chicken of play. Fascinating. Apparently, Khan has developed some sort of cloaking device, which allowed him to follow us undetected. Mr. Sulo. Mambo. Whatever. It's showtime. Aye, aye, Captain. My lord, we've been hit! Duh. Marine, release the Khan bomb! Fed. Needs of the few outweigh the needs of the... Wait, no. Needs of the many can often be as important as, uh... Blah, blah, blah. Get me a soda. Yes, sir. And some of that great filet of soul you make, too! Of all the souls I've ever tasted, his had the most... cumin. The rest of you hypochondriacs, cauterize your wounds on your own time. Right now, I want fireworks! Wait, I've got an idea. Engage self-destruct mode. And? And I'll be in the shuttlecraft getting the hell out of here. I understand there's a Hooters on Rigel 12. Don't you have any plans that won't cost the lives of your entire crew? Unbelievable. Okay. Open hailing frequency with Khan. I'll pretend I'm surrendering. And as soon as his guard is down, we'll turn him into intergalactic roadkill. Yes, this is ingenious, brilliant, foolproof. You're on! Oh, oh you are too are powerful, too powerful, powerful for, me. for me. I surrender. Ah! We shall go on to the end. We shall never surrender. Churchill. Neener, 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 neener. I'm the stud and you're the wiener. Duckman. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Duckman is... Gone. Oh, so is Con Chicken. Yeah! What kind of federation chicanery is this? Yeah! What kind of federation chicken? Hey, wait, I'm with the federation. <laughs> I always get them confused with the Kiwanis. Stop! I am Kardashian. Dwah! Hey, get your own wacky scream. Greetings, your skunk-headedness. I am Duckman of the Big Federation of Planets. My mission is peaceful. So how's about you return us to our ship so we can continue our futuristic flybys? I think not. For decades, my people have observed you primitives battling each other across the vast expanse of the galaxy, and frankly, we're sick of it. Plus, I got Khan at 20 to 1, so I stand to make a mint. Are you saying you want us to engage in fisticuffs like common barroom barbarians? Correct. Okie dokie. Oh. Direct hit to the old dilithium crystals. <laughs> Okay. In this sort of situation, I usually opt for a thumb wrestle to the death. Or not. Oh. 
Very well, Khan. You forced me to resort to an ancient technique? The wedgie! Ah! Now, while you're busy pulling your underoos out of your colon, I'll be doing what I do best. Running like a woman! <laughs> Duckman Enterprise! Ollie Ollie Oxen Freddy! What's the frequency, Kenneth? Mayamo as Duckman! Surrender now, Captain, and I promise your death will be swift and painless. Really? No, I'll probably torture you for years, then skin you alive. <laughs> He's cruel, but honest. Ah! I am one dead duck man. <laughs> dead duck man. Even running for my life, I'm incredibly funny. There's no way I can beat King Khan without some sort of weapon. <laughs> sulfur. I can use sulfur to make an explosive. But what else? Must. Think back to high school chemistry class. God, hell, the only thing I remember is Marguerite Moretti's tube tops. Still, if I mix up a bunch of chemicals, something's bound to happen. Let's see. Some common quartz, powdered manganese, a little crushed basil, one whole egg, half a cup of baking soda, some KY jelly, and a quart of brake fluid. Shake, don't stir. So, Duckman. How sweet it will be to end this centuries-old conflict. Oh, Khan Chicken, say, ah. Ah? <laughs> I'm sorry, why did you want me to say, ah? It's no use, Khan. I give up. Put me out of my misery. Sweat that smell. Sulfur. <laughs> How did you know I had a rare, incredibly contrived allergy to sulfur? Now my angina's kicking in. Congratulations, Captain. Quickly now, kill your enemy. I won't kill him! Yes, he is evil and I am good, but goodness calls for something we primitive humans are quite familiar with. Compassion. The compassion to spare his life because it is the just thing, the good thing, the human thing to do. If you truly respected the sanctity of life, then you wouldn't watch us fight. You would get your rocks off at Danish donkey shows like we normal people do. Get up, Khan. I've emasculated you enough for one day. Let's show them we can stand side by side. There. You see, Kardashian? Compassion, forgiveness, generosity. These are the things that make humans unique throughout the universe. Also, cosmetic surgery. Enough! To our surprise, you have demonstrated the capacity to rise above your petty differences and unite against a common foe, proving that your race is the most dangerous in the galaxy. Therefore, Earth must be destroyed. Damn, I just weather stripped the patio. Duckman, the Earth is no more. All right, let's not get all weepy about this. The important thing is to make sure our stories agree when we get back to Federation space because they are gonna be pissed. But if you cover my butt, I'll cover yours. All right, Duckman, whatever you say. You know, Khan, if I learned anything from this little charade, it's that you may be evil and I'm merely sleazy, but we have a lot in common. We both really hate getting killed. More than that, Duckman, Chu and I both care. Yes, we do. We're passionate people. Yes, we are. I've always wanted you. I know. Mm. No! Oh. oh, man. That's the last time I have a head cheese hoagie before bedtime.
Yeah! Yeah! Ben, son of Ben, do you take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? I do. And Dana Catherine, daughter of unbelievably gorgeous Gentiles, do you take this man for your lawful wedded husband? I do. I'll hurry before she regains her sight. I now pronounce you husband and wife. I don't know where Duckman could be. The New York Pornography Expo ended three days ago. Why isn't he back yet? I'm sure Duckman's fine. Besides, it might be worse if he does show up. Bernice is gonna reveal her secret today, and, well, when Duckman finds out... It'll make Bosnia look like a foot rub from Perry Como. <laughs> Duckman's never seen Ben's bride. Can you imagine what he's going to say to Dana when he sees how beautiful she is? I once saw him do ten minutes of insultingly crude and leering come-ons to a heavily veiled Iraqi transsexual in a full body cast. When he meets this incredible woman... She's so wonderful, and he's so... Well... Unbelievably lucky? <laughs> yeah. But they sure are happy. Yeah. Weddings. You know. Yeah. Oh, I am the Dugman. Oh, Dugman, I gotta be. I am Dugman! Oh, I Dad! am... Dad! Hey, hey, hey! Dad, where have you been? You've even beaten your previous tardiness record, which you set at your grandmother's funeral. Yeah, I remember. No way I leave an REO Speedwagon concert before they play Roll with the Changes. Look, I'll explain everything when we get to our table. We're not at your table. We're stuck at the kiddie table with all the neighbor kids. Scott DeSalvo keeps touching me. It's creepy. Just come over to our table in a little bit, because I have some news. And bring Ajax. Where is he, anyway? Over there! Doctor and Mrs. Stein, thank you for inviting me to your wedding. I hope you are blessed with a child, and that it is a masculine child, and, um, damn. Doctor and Mrs. Stein, thank you for inviting me to your Once wedding. Once you can move him without waking him, come on over. Talk about your party animals. What time is your next blink? Where have Duck you man. been? Are, are you all right? I'm tip-top from top to tip. I'm sorry if you were worried, but I'll explain everything. Where's Bernice? Um, she and her date must be running late. Bernice has a date? I thought the escort services banned her for biting. They did. This isn't an escort. She's seeing someone. In fact, it's someone you know. Well, that rules out my son's teachers, my elected officials, and everyone on UPN. So... Who's Lizzie Boredom been whacking? Is every buck, 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 buddy happy? King Chicken! You and him? Him and you! Before you get your roids ruffled, listen up. We're in love! That's right, I, your arch enemy, and he, your arch nemesis, are an item! We're sick of sneaking around behind your back. We're here, we sneer, we jeer, get used to it. You two are going out together? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he seems to be taking it well. Yeah, that's what Stanford White said when Harry Thaw showed up at the garden. They're called books, kids. Try reading one. I've never seen Dad look like this before. He looks... happy. Duck, man, what's going on? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, really. This is just too perfect. Duck, man. Glad you could come. Baron von Dockenstein. Rocky Congraziano to you and the blusher. While I haven't a clue what you're saying, I'll take your air of bonhomie at face value. What you said. Jump, where is the old trouble and strife, eh? Let's see what made this miss a uh, hit. Hi. Why is everyone sneaking up behind me today? Everyone, this is my lovely bride, Dana Renard. Dana, this is Charles and Mambo and Ajax and their Aunt Bev, her boyfriend Cornfed, his partner Duckman, his sister-in-law Bernice, her boyfriend King Chicken, and his cousin, international film star Kevin Bacon. Benno, Bocuse, they muzzle tubs. And Dana, congratulations on being able to see what a kind and caring person Stein's got stashed inside. Oh, thank you, Duckman. I'm glad you'll be our neighbor.
He's really nice. She, what a great couple. All right, who are you and what have you done with Duckman? <laughs> uh, Bernice, I don't blame you for being confused. The truth is, I have something to tell all of you. I'm in love, and you'll never believe who with. She must still be out looking for a parking... Whoa! Here I am, my little lover man. Honey chicken! Hi, y'all. So can you believe it? Me and Duck Man and Adam? Honey and Duck Man? Hey, what are you doing here? He's with me, and we're in love! Really? Well... Then what's the big deal to Kingy if we see each other? Yeah, what's it to you, King? Yeah, what's it to you, King? Why? Oh, nothing, of course. <gasps> Duckman, how did this happen? It's a really romantic story. You tell him, honey. Oh, I'm no good with stories. Well, okay. A few months ago, I realized that I couldn't control my drinking. Because I was always drunk. I'd hit bottom. So I divorced Kingy. I set out to somehow change my life. It was tough. But I managed to get sober. And so far, stay sober. So, to celebrate, I decided to take a trip to New York. Here's the meatball, here's the meatball. That's right, Daddy Bunny. Who was I seated next to on the flight to New York but Duck Man? But then, the plane developed, uh, engine trouble. <laughs> There's a monster on the wing! There's a monster on the wing! We thought we were gonna die! Ah! Hmm. Fortunately, the captain was able to make an emergency landing. We were bruised and shaken, mostly bruised, but we were alive, and we realized we were also in love. By the time we got to New York, all we wanted to do was be with each other, right, cutie butt? You better believe it, my little chitlin' goo. I knew Honey was beautiful and sexy and sweet and kind, but I also saw how strong she is and how brave, and how much she believes in me. And I want to see it every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> Duck man, you magnificently sentimental bastard. Are you asking Honey to marry you? Oh, uh, well, uh... Don't I, answer uh... that, Duck man. I have something to say. <laughs> Bernice. And what the idiot said touched me deep inside, where my desire meets my longing and causes love to bubble over the side of the glass that is my heart. You should tilt your heart when you pour longing into it. <laughs> Bernice, this seems incredibly coincidental, but will you marry me? But, uh, should we? Do you think it would work? I mean, what do we really have in common other than an unquenchable lust for each other and a hatred of Duckman? There's only one way to find out. In the movie Clue, which was your favorite ending? A, B, or C? Why choose when the video cassette has all three? Oh, baby! Will you marry me? Yes! Boy, real life really is stranger than fiction. Duckman, were you really asking me to marry you? Well, uh, as a matter of... Duckman, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but strange as it may seem, I'm going for the hat trick. Bev, no relationship I've ever been in feels this right, and I've dated Joan London. Will you do me the honor of giving me your hand in marriage? Of course I will, Corny. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Look, sweetie, I know that you were put on the spot. Duckman, you don't have to marry me if you don't want. I'll still love you just the same, and I'll still be your cuddle bug no matter what, okay? Break out the fresca! We're getting married! <laughs> Hey, am I the...
the first one. Yeah, King's not here yet, and the girls are fitting bridesmaids' dresses, or fluffing monogram napkin rings, or registering toilet seat cozy patterns, or something. They'll be here any minute. In all the excitement, we haven't had a chance to sit as friends and reflect on the enormous changes we're about to go through. We should take some time to share. That's enough of that. Thank God! To be honest, I was worried how the boys would react to my marrying my arch-nemesis' ex-wife. But they're really taking it well. So it's decided. When this hideous marriage screws up our heads, Charles and I will stick up convenience stores. And Ajax, you'll become a street hustler. I'm way ahead of you. I'm afraid the whole thing will get called off if the ladies don't stop squabbling over the wedding plans. Whose bonehead idea was it to do a triple wedding in the first place? I believe it was yours. Oh, yeah, it was me. Forget it. Anyway, our problem is King You-Know-Who. Talk about pushy. You're right. If that overgrown squab wags his finger at me one more time, I'm gonna break it off. Don't you mean buck, buck, break it off? <laughs> 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 That raucous laughter can only mean one thing. A new dirty joke. Come on, let me hear it. Yeah, it was, uh, it yeah, was nothing. nothing. Oh, no, no, no. I might think the laughter was at my expense. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, then maybe I'll just leave. Kingy, are you throwing another one of your famous hissy fits? This really oh, makes me oh, 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 Okay, everyone sit down! Let's try to spend one friggin' evening planning this miserable wedding without fighting. Oh, Boy, was that not the right thing to say! Well, sometimes I think you dread this wedding more than anything else on Earth. Now, now, butter buckles, you know that's not true. The thing I dread most is E's gossip show. There you go. Now let's all try to get along, okay? Duckman's right. Now we're here to plan a wedding. This is supposed to be a happy occasion, remember? Uh, so, just gonna... Okay, okay, listen. Now let's just try to get to the real problems without finger-pointing, without blame, without accusations, okay? Great. Now, King, why don't you go first, since you're the one ruining this for everyone? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. King, really, I was just kidding. No, no. I'm well aware that you all resent me for taking over the wedding plans. It's just that ever since I was a little boy, I've always dreamed of the perfect wedding. The decorations and the bridesmaids' gowns and the flowers. Well, what little boy hasn't daydreamed about all that? I know none of you think the wedding coordinator matters, but I'm telling you, it does! A successful affair has got to have a concept, an overriding theme that ties the decor, the food, the clothes, the entire experience into a cohesive whole. A taffeta-tacular in Candyland? Don't you just love it! Yes, I love it. It's... Yummy. Yes, yummy. Good. Then that's settled. Well, on a less flesh-crawling note, I have a problem with the seating arrangement. My relatives are sitting by the band, and it'll be too loud. What do you mean? Our relatives are all the way in the back. By the kitchen. I'm talking about my relatives. Since when do you have relatives I don't? You're an orphan. I know I'm an orphan, Bernice. I consider the people I grew up with at the orphanage to be my relatives. Oh. After all, I've known them a lot longer than I've known you. Bev. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. Because you've known me a hell of a lot longer than you've known Hambone over there! Again with the pig jokes? Then why don't we talk about the way you two rut with each other like godless hogs? Yeah, we never do that. Oh, well, well, wait, wait, what was that? For the first time tonight, I heard something interesting. Bev, what are you saying? That he's never foamed your runway? He's never jacked your Valenti? Woolied your mammoth? Shanad, your na? Silenced your lamb? Johned your 316? Pardoned your Nixon? We're waiting for the honeymoon. Sue me, I'm old fashioned. Sure, she's old fashioned, but she wanted a screwdriver. Oh, yeah, look who's talking. What's that supposed to mean? You are just like corn fed, you big hypocrite. Refusing to have sex until after we're married. What? You'll be lucky if you get it after you're married. I never did. What? Honey, 
Are you telling me that in the nine years you were married to King, you never once had sex? That's a lie. Honey, we had sex constantly. And Bernice, you and I are always having sex. I don't believe it. What? Uh, King, the things we did, that's, um, that's not sex. Get out! Then... What? King! Give me a... <laughs> this is not funny! Police, come on. That's funny. So, we all okay? Full steam away? I'd like to bring up this horrible napkin color. I mean, who likes twill, for God's sake? Twill was John John's napkin color. Hey, Kingy. Penis. <laughs> Bernie's got two questions for you. Who are you? And who the hell do you think you are? Oh, 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 That's it! I've had it! It's like you're trying to tear this wedding apart. I've been looking for this kind of love ever since Beatrice died. This is my chance to be happy, and you're not gonna take that away. So here's the way it's gonna work. I'm taking over the wedding, I'm planning it, and it will not be perfect. There will be a lot of things you'll hate, and it's okay, because you'll honestly be able to tell everyone, hey, it's not my fault, Duckman screwed up. All right? Are we agreed? Good. Meeting over! It's like a fairy tale, isn't it? <laughs> Friends of Bride A in Quadrant A1 to G6, Groom A in Quadrant H6 to M6, Groom B in Quadrant... Good afternoon. My name is Coco Lavailable, and I am a professional lounge singer, as well as Mr. Duckman's dental hygienist. Not for deep scaling and calculus and stuff, just for cleaning. And he has permitted me to offer my gift of song to you and yours today to celebrate he and his wedded bliss. For always. <clears throat> oh, and since Mr. Duckman's organ is not functioning, I will be singing these a cappella selections with no accompaniment. It's wedding day. It's wedding day. It's wedding day. It's wedding day. She was ordained in Puerto Guano. I figured she'd be like Switzerland. Neutral? Oh, I thought she'd give us some chocolate, but you're right. She's neutral, too. Shut up. You're making me sicker. Wow, Kevin Bacon. My teacher's sister works with your uncle's brother-in-law. Sit down! Here come the brides! Here come the brides! Here Ow. come mm. the brides! Oh. Here, here, here come the brides! Here, here Dearly beloved, Yes, sweetie pie? Oh, right. Sorry. The couples have chosen to exchange their own vows. Duckman. Right here! I'm gonna do the vows for everyone. And I don't think there's anything I could say that would express the love we all share better than this quote from a great American. As I stood in that Chicago hotel room and heard that Nicole was dead, I remembered how completely not at the scene I was when it happened. And all I could do was run into the bathroom, break a glass, and then head back to L.A. to get my passport and my fake beard. And re remember I love. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, do you, Eric Tiberius Duckman, Willibald Fivel Cornfed, and George Herbert Walker Chicken, take these women to be your lawful wedded wives? We do. Do you, Honey Ursula Bacon, Bernice Florence Huffnagel, and Beverly Glenn Huffnagel, take these men to be your lawful wedded husbands? We do. Then may I have... Will you shut up? Thank you. The rings?
Oi, skip the rings. If anyone knows why these couples shouldn't be wed, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Doesn't count. Then I pronounce you husbands and wives. Kiss them if you got them. So, Sally, too late. You should... <gasps> Beatrice. Beatrice? Beatrice? Beatrice. Who's Beatrice? My wife. Uh, my, uh, my first wife. I, I mean, you're alive. Well, yeah, sure I am. Didn't Cornfed ever tell you? <gasps> uh, Duckman, I can explain. Does that do it? That is it. I think that's it. Okay.